welcome everyone to Night's Last Call. Uh, coming to you live from the studio Ooh. for the last time. Oh. Yes. Um, well, as an official show, at least. as an official show, yeah, we we will probably have this, an, this stuff. Yeah, all this stuff is pretty be nice. taken down. And um, for those of you who don't know, of course, um, we here at Night's Last Call have well, we started. Let, let's start with a little bit of history. Okay, okay. Let's this start is with a, a historical episode. This is a horse. This is a historic... some people new subscribers might not know this. That's right. That's right. So, and if you're not, you should subscribe. That's right. So, um, <laughs> in uh, in the in the in the year of our Lord uh, 2019. <laughs> I think you're going to throw some Pathfinder like month and, and year in there. Um, so I, I decided that I was going to start my own business, and um, I had gotten really into photography, and I thought this there I thought it was an underserved uh, profession in yep. our area, um, and I had uh, something else happened in 2019. Uh, 2019, just, nothing, nothing, nothing just at the end. Oh, December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, this is early on. This was early. Um, and, uh, I had happened to, I had, be, I had just gotten into photography, yep. uh, as a, as more of a professional thing. And I had gone to a number of conferences and I met this gentleman who ended up being a, a mentor to me. I sort of joined his Patreon, if you will, um, his exclusive club. And when I looked at his database of his people, no, there were none in Northeast Ohio. And so I thought, oh, I could be the plug, Yep. you know, I could be the, the premier headshot guy. So I rented this studio space with the intention that it would be a nice place where people could come in and do their uh, photography. And I had this you know, whole idea built up around it. And we well, went through 2019 and I was getting my shop ready. And then I, I launched and then 2020 came. Something and then, definitely happened in 2020. And then, and then about three months into 2020, of course, uh, my business was shut down by the governor. Um, and I was like legally closed for like a complete yeah. month or two. Um, and by the time I reopened, you know, that was the last thing that people were thinking about. Yeah. Um, and you know, photo photography is a little bit diff difficult when you have a you know a mask. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> smile. Did you get a lot of uh, headshots with a. With well, masks? you know, it's actually really funny. I, I a lot of my you know now I was blessed in that um, I was still in my period of time where I was kind of living off of my savings. Oh, yeah. And my Magic the Gathering collection. <laughs> um, he did own the Power Nine at one point. I did, and th th they got sold in 2019. Yeah. In, in part to start to the studio. Um, and I did want to do it via debt, so that was my idea. But um, I knew a lot of people who were – this was their full-time job, and yeah. they had no other source of income. And and and, and what they – basically, they called, they, they called them drive-by portrait sessions became very popular. Mm. So you and your wife and your kids would, at the pre-appointed time, stand out, go out your front door, stand on your front porch, and a photographer would drive up to the curb and with their telephoto zoom lens, take your photo of your family – and then and then drive on and then email them to you later. That way awesome. you could that way you could you know avoid um, you could practice distance and still keep their business um, you know in in place. So anyways, long story short, the I wasn't doing much, but but I had signed a lease and I had the place mm -hmm. for another uh, for another uh, a year. Yeah. So at the end of 2020, with the with the business kind of not doing anything, and I didn't have a job, so I was pretty bored. Um, Bob here mm -hmm. said, hey, my brother is in the military and yep. I want to play D&D &D with him when he gets out. Yep. He's like, you should teach me how to play D&D. &D. Yep. And I was like, okay. Uh, there's a really cool show called Critical Role that I started <laughs> watching. I don't know if you guys heard of it. And I was like, this thing is really cool. I want to do that. Right. So Bob. And I didn't know anybody. Yeah, Bob was a critter. But so. Matt, uh, our buddy Matt the Cat, was like, oh, Derek used to be my GM. And I was like, I know Derek from Magic. I just give him a little Facebook message and you were like, yeah, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So, here we are. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Worst mistake of my life. Um, Just answering the Facebook. Just yeah, turn so, that thing off. So we started playing uh, D and D Fifth Edition. Yep. And we played some of Citadel. Great, great game. And we played with a, a couple of friends. And then at the time, you had a podcast. Yes. That you were doing for uh, MLB, MLB Showdown, Showdown, which is was uh, was owned by Wizards of the Coast. Right. Um, and of course, you had like ten viewers. Like, let's be clear. I don't even know if it was that. Okay. Um, and, and there was all the people that I was sending and, it to. You know, <laughs> it, was, it was his wife, his mom, yeah. no, and we, there was a group of like George accounts. There was a group of like twenty people trying to revitalize this game. Those are the twenty people watching the videos. I wasn't like I wasn't reaching anybody. It was the same people. So <laughs> but it was fun. So Bob, you know, being the hype man Bob that he is, he's just like, dude, 
dude, I got a fucking podcast. He's like, you should. Just he had turn- mics in his studio. He's like, you should just turn all this shit on. I'm like, you got he's cameras, like, you got mics. Let's he's go. Like, Let's play. And so we had finished up fifth edition, and I said, all right, Bob. I go, you want to keep playing? I said, well, there's this new game that just came out last at the end of last year called Pathfinder Two, and I think I think you might enjoy it a lot. It's very crunchy, and it has a lot of like, uh, you know, I saw a lot of fourth edition mm-hmm. at the time in it, and um, and I was like, okay. And he's like, yeah, that sounds great. So we got together a crew, and we started filming. Yep. And originally, Nights of the Last Call was just that. It was, we would get together once a week. Yep. We would play for three or four hours with all these different cameras. And then we get uh, edited. One camera at first. Well, the, originally, the original <laughs> one. Then we were yeah. like, does anyone have a camera right. we can use? So then I built a table, <laughs> yep. which uh, it was table, that's table one. That's table one. That was the A-frame. Yeah, that's the A-frame. Table zero was the just the normal table that, that we played. I still in. have those tables. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gave them to you when I moved out. And so then we had that, and... We were publishing about one video a week, and we you know we were getting a couple hundred views on some of which, our videos, which was way more than I thought. Right, I mean that's that's good when you're starting out. But again, yeah. Derek had nothing to do, so he was editing these, right? Like oh, putting yeah, in the time. Well, yeah, I'm not three the, to four x per. Uh, right. Oh, yeah. Right, right. So if it's so you guys played for three hours, if it's three hours, hours there for like nine taking, to twelve. It's Ugh. taking me ten to twelve hours to to edit all these, and you know. I would add little flourishes. Oh, I remember the earlier ones. Graphics. Yeah. yeah, you could tell when I had time. All the rules and shit. There's <laughs> chimney counters. Yeah, and yeah, you could tell when I didn't have a job. stuff. <laughs> you know, because there was a lot more going on. So it's starting um, to value your time a little bit more. Well, what own. happened in 20, <laughs> so in 2021, I got a job. Mm-hmm. I started working uh, for a company, again, as a data scientist. And our lease, my lease was about to come to an end. And I was like, well, clearly I don't have a need for this space anymore. I'm not doing photography. And I have a lot less time. I said, but, you know, do we believe in this thing? You know, can, do you guys want to keep doing this? I did. And everyone said, yes. And I said, okay, I'm going to sign a new lease on a slightly smaller space. It's a little bit more affordable, still a lot of money. Cause back then, I mean, yeah, we, we may not have even been monetized. No. Yeah. Nope, because we didn't get monetized until we started uh, missing sessions in here. Right, which was funny. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, so at the time, I mean, it it was – you know, we we I, had the I, I, we had the view length, but never never the oh, subscribers. Right, you needed to become monetized. You need ten thousand watch hours. Yes, which for most people is this incredible bar that they will never crushed occur. it. Right, because if you're doing <laughs> if you're doing five minute videos and eight minute videos, it, I mean, it takes you a ton, and you need a thousand subscribers. We had tens of tens of thousands of watch hours, but we had like four hundred subs. <laughs> yeah, so we so just forever could, we could not get uh, monetized. Um, and by the way, when we did, we started making like three dollars and fifty cents a Woo! month. So yeah, so we we so everyone's like, yes, we're in. So we're moving to the studio, and then promptly everyone stopped playing. <laughs> I mean, I was here. <laughs> Bob, <laughs> Bob was here, but you know, other people uh, got not as interested in the show. They, you know, um, we can, we weren't making any money or stuff anything came like up. That. Who knows? Stuff came up, and it was a little bit of a longer drive for some people. Mm-hmm. And it was on the middle of the weekday, and they didn't want to come. So what well, ended up? Ha- that's what led to the whole like nightlifes and stuff like that, which is what made us very popular. Right. You know, it was a good, fortuitous serendipity because we only started with aps that was it it was just rise the rune lords it wasn't not any of this wisdom that derek was talking about then then you guys got to inject that into the game but it's hard when you're drunk drunk (laughs) players yeah the the drinking was quite heavy back then people still tell me about the uh the bottles being set on the table it was it was good times it was good times (laughs) so um but i but i will say so Pete, some of my players stopped showing up. And so I was like, well, screw it. You know, we got two or three people here. Yep. So let me just let me just talk at you. Because that's just what I that's just what we do anyways. Mm-hmm. Is we just sit there and talk about role playing games. So I started talking to them about role playing games and we were recorded those and we started showing those. And then we started getting the subs and the mm-hmm. views much more than we ever got through our actual plays. But I will say, and I think this is something important, and I I would like to think that you agree at home. There and again, I'm not calling out anyone in the space. I think us playing the actual play uh, kind of gave an, uh, an air of authenticity. 100%. You know, it's yeah. one thing for a content creator to show up and say, this is how you should be running your D&D game. And you're like, but how do you run a D? I've never seen you GM. Yeah. Or I've never seen, you know, or I've only seen it in brief snippets. It's like, well, you had 40, 50, 60 hours. You could go watch me GM. And Correct. if you say, I like the way that this person GMs, then maybe I should listen to their advice. Yeah. Or if you think that person's an asshole, then maybe I shouldn't listen to their advice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's huge because it's like, yeah, I mean, any, anyone can come up with a good idea, but seeing it 
in practice, right? Warts and all, right? And that's the thing, right? When you, you have so many hours recorded, like I'm sure if we go back through and overanalyze everything, there's going to be points where even Derek will be like, oh, that was a bad call. I fucked oh, that up, right? 100%. Right? And like that's so important though because it's like, like, yeah, guys, like like all this advice and all this stuff that 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 you know you can get and learn from here. Like we're not we're not pitching it uh, from the sense that this is in a vacuum, right? Everything's gonna be perfect. No, nah, like these games are messy, just like life. You're gonna get in, you're gonna fuck up, and that's the thing. You gotta be kind of comfortable with that, right? Like, right. You know. Yeah, you be gotta roll, make mistakes and keep moving. You that's gotta, actually yeah. a very hard thing because when I first started, I I want to try to be oh, the best I could. Immense. Oh, it's so big. Right. You're a host. You're an entertainer. You're a strict writer. You're a director. Mm-hmm. Right. Like like the DM. And there's there's just a blog somewhere about like all the different roles uh, a DM plays, and they're huge right yep. that's a lot of pressure and ultimately you want your friends to love this thing that you love so much right and that's the hardest oh, yeah. pressure well right we, we did a uh, we did a show not that long ago about like how do you sell your group on a new thing I, yeah and i said i said look i get it you're so hyped about this game and i said but i gotta be honest with you you, you can bring a horse to water but you can't make a drink oh, yeah. you know you but you do have to do your best to sort of to, to sell it um, it's hard, right? Because it's almost like dating in a way, right? Where like, like you don't want to come off as desperate because that immediately turns everyone off, right? So it's like, like such a good example. Well, such a like, good example. You know, right. I mentioned you know, your players are like, damn, he's thirsty. <laughs> I can totally see. Her. Like, like when when he's my kids, real strong. He wants the D bone real bad. Yeah, yeah. When my kids came to me, they're like, hey, dad, can you run a game, right? And like, like they got mom in the loop, right? Like, you know, my mom's like, so we're gonna play D and D. I was very much just like. I mean, maybe if you guys want. To. I mean, I got I got plenty of other things to do, but secretly in my mind, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Hey, all all those out. hints I've been dropping on the house have been working. <laughs> shout out to Hides His Eyes uh, with the super chat. Thank you, Hides His oh. Eyes. It says, can't stay long running my mega dungeon tomorrow. Sick. Love it. Is uh, it your mega dungeon or a mega dungeon? It says, says your. Yeah, dungeon. I wonder what he designed. I don't know if it's his specifically. That's what I'm wondering. What, what of, mega dungeon? What, yeah. Is, kind of, is it a homebrew? Uh, but have fun, lads. RIP studio. Yeah, RIP. Mm. So we started doing that and people were like, wow, we really like, and at the time we were, we started with talking about Pathfinder 2 because yep. we talked about combat taggers, but that's when the philosophy streams started coming in and we started getting a lot of really positive feedback from that. Yep. And that is what led me to say in, in middle of 2021, I want to start a Patreon because mm-hmm. I, I need, I need more of a platform to talk about this because at the time we didn't go live. Mm-hmm. So I only had it was a one way communication. It was just a YouTube channel where you would yeah. post shit. I would post videos that were edited, and the only feedback I had was the comments. Right, and I was like, ah, I don't like this. It's kind of weird thinking about it without the chat now. Yes, like without being able to interact with our with our audience and some of these friends and some of these fans with us. I, mm-hmm. I yeah. feel like they've always been there, but oh, really, hell. there no, was a time hell, they they no were just. Chat. I know, no Discord. I know, right, right, no Discord. Like I, we would it's just weird. Post, we would just post a video, and that was it. Yeah, there was nothing else. I you mean, couldn't be like, oh, this wild. Like, kinda, oh, it's oh, wild to think about. Lord High Summoner had a question. Yeah, we'll get to you on the Discord here after the show, right? right. Like, like, right. none of that. Yeah. yeah. You never see these people again. Yeah. You, know, you know who they are. I know. That's so wild. <laughs> so that is the reason wow. why I started Patreon. And I said, look, I, I said, I want to have a private Discord. That way we can just kind of keep it, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, locked in. And, um, and and that's when we had our first, you know, handful of people showed up. And and I, I, I mean, I'll do something stuff later this year. But you know, we're coming up on three years mm-hmm. of Patreon. We do have some patrons who have been around with us for three years. Oh yeah. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the Patreons. But but that's when the Discord started, and the whole KOSC community right started to emerge. Um, and you know, we kept making these videos because they were very popular, and it was very hard to get the whole group together to do the actual play. Oh, but. Yeah. We had a lot of people who were fans of the actual play, fans of the PFN or two. And then at the end of 20, uh, 2021, I went live for the first time. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. We did a New Year's Eve stream. With oh, Tim. yeah, with Tim. Yeah. That's Tim. right. And it was my first live stream. And we got some. And by this time, we were monetized. Mm-hmm. You know, we were making three or four or five dollars a month off of YouTube. But you got some tips. But I got some super chats or tips or whatever. For the first, and we made like sixty bucks or fifty yeah. bucks, and which I was, was like, like more than you'd ever oh, made. Oh, that's more than that the point. whole channel had made. Yeah, <laughs> like in its history, you know what I mean? Like I was like, <laughs> I was like, holy shit! And remember, I, at the time, you know, when the channel was making five dollars a month, I was still paying for this place. Yes, you know, so I was still paying, you know, yep. thirteen hundred dollars a month. I was in the hole every month. Yep. And um, you had an obsession with buying more lights, though. Well, yes, everything needed to look <laughs> That only grew as the years went on. That, the, the, the obsession only grew. <laughs> and so, yeah, so we um, we were like, wow. I was like, wow, this live thing is really cool. 
and anybody who knows me, my, my friends will probably both shake their heads here as I say this. I mean, I can just talk. So, you know, it's funny when I remember when we first started playing and, and stuff, you would you would we would do those philosophy streams and I would joke with you. I'm like, we're, you're going to run out of things to talk about. <laughs> and, and Derek was like, sometimes I could just talk to Smith for like 24 hours about yeah. something. And I was like. Ha ha ha. Yeah, right. But actually now, because Smith has been such a big part of this for so long, I'm like, I'll wake up in the morning with hundreds right. of right. messages of Derek just talking to Smith. And I'm like, yeah, right, you right. could talk about things all day long, right. all people, night people long. People don't get it. Like, yeah, like, like, they don't understand. <laughs> they're like, oh man, these guys are working hard. They're talking about all this stuff. How do they prepare all this shit? No, I mean, literally the only difference now is that Derek just goes, oh, hold on. Hits record yeah. <laughs> before like, like we start our normal conversation. 100%. Right? Yeah. In fact, most of the time... It, when these shows start, mm -hmm. we've already been having RPG-related conversations for the previous. I walked oh, yeah. in on you guys 30, having an RPG uh, conversation. Minutes, oh yeah. Minutes, yeah, no, I mean we were talking about like third edition, all kinds of stuff today. Well, like, yeah, yeah. We, we were. Well, I was trying to understand like what what is missing in some of these quote uh, quote unquote new school, old school games, mm -hmm. and and trying to understand what was the magic. And I was like, is is the game sucking? Is that what made it fun? And you're like, but did it really suck? And we were talking right. about it, but um, so. Uh, those things are doing really well. The live stream did really well. I like George. George's comment. I used to get the stream for for free and for several years in real life. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. You would just sit there and just, <laughs> he would just sit there, it. and he's like, they're just talking for an yeah. hour. <laughs> um, and so then in 2022, we had the idea. Mm -hmm. Since it was so hard for our cast to get together in person, that's right. I said, well, here, how about this? Live is working out really well for us. So let me get everybody set up at home. Okay, yep. and we will finish out our Rise of the Rune Lords campaign from home, mm -hmm. and you don't have to drive anywhere, and you can just be on and then off in you know three four hours on a weeknight. It'll be fine. Yep, and we did that, and again, you know the the the, the this viewer support mm -hmm. incredible, huge. I mean, at the time, unthinkable oh, amount, yeah. hundred dollar. You know, tips and stuff like that. Well, for another reason, some of those shows were the highest tipping shows well, of all time. Well, I was gonna get it. So, so at a certain <laughs> point, we had this idea of we we were just so in love with the interaction, and that is where Smith game mm -hmm. entered the picture because we said, wouldn't it be great if we had somebody who could operate behind the scenes and knows the game yep. and can run the things in Foundry and the things that, but also manage the tip things, and that's where Smith came in as, and is sort of our producer. And then we set up, of course, um, the Wheel of Pain. Wheel of Pain. Um, which, you know. Uh, Love it or hate it, it was there. Well, you know, the first version. <laughs> still, I mean, let me, let me be very clear was about this. Tame. The, the final session <laughs> of the Rise of the Rune Lords campaign is still our number one most money we've ever made on a stream. Um, pure chaos. Yeah, it, it was pure <laughs> chaos. But, you know, but, but wait, but wait. But this was an important. Mo now, listen, the, the, the conversation about what happened. In episode 33 is is legendary, of course. But I think it's really important because it and I've I've said this before, so this is nothing new. You know, there was this idea. Derek put out there this uh paradigm. You could tip to support your uh uh favorite PCs and give them hero points, or you could tip to support the GM Derek hero points and, and give the GM these these spins on this random wheel. And some of the stuff could be bad, some of the stuff could be uh, you know, maybe not so bad. But there was this underlying question, which is, would he do it? Is this all fake? Yeah. Is this just Derek pulls punches? Is this just scripted? Is this pull? Derek's well, making all this money. This was timely too, because I don't remember exactly, but there was something going on at Critical Roar at the same time where a lot of people were starting to question. Well, I think they had was stopped, it real? Was it? I not? think they had stopped doing it live, mm. right? And it was it was just being aired live, right? And then, you know, there was just a lot of questions. Geez, like, geez, is there's not even a, so if something gets messed up, they could theoretically edit it, you know. And and you talk a lot about and I talk a lot of shit. Rolling the dice out, <laughs> whatever happens, happens. And it's like if you talk it, what what happens if you if you do if that happens right, if you your talk players the talk, yep. do you walk the walk? Are you yep. are you going to sacrifice your uh, uh, your my channel. cash cow? Well, yeah. no, my channel. I mean, at that right. point, the the channel while we had evolved was the AP. It was the AP? Yep. Um, oh. And the answer is, I did. And Stevens in chat, so he he could recall the time oh, yeah. that uh, he had a heart attack over this episode. Right. I mean, there's there are so many people out there. And again, I'm not trying to say we're special because we're not. God knows that we're not. Um, nope. uh, but there are some people out there who, you know, especially people in the TTRPG space, who have these actual plays. And I mean, you know, like hijinks is a. I mean, look at how you remember hijinks. Oh, they're sweet. You know, they were yeah. incredible. Like they, they had, like, would, the best they studio would, I saw. They built. would <laughs> kill to do like half of the numbers that we were doing. Yeah, which is crazy because like 
how how much do they invest in that satellite? Exactly. Well, how much do we? But my point is, mm-hmm. you know, from a from an RPG perspective, our channel and those shows. I mean, they were they were in the top probably like it was like you know top one percent. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously people like Critical Role and Dimension Twenty oh, are yeah. way above us. They're, well, in terms of the, PF two, I don't think anyone else was even doing an AP. Exactly. So, uh, I was, you know, I was so, but these were the rules. Mm-hmm. Roll them as you know, let them fall where they may. Yep. And a bunch of people all t- tipped at once. All the rolls came out, and including the one hundred roll, which yep. of course was the last call. Um, and so that campaign came to an end. Yep. And. Then the channel very much shifted and it turned more into a, you know, a conversation piece and an introduction piece. And this is where for the first time, really, people began to understand. I think you know, some people had learned. It's like, oh, Derek isn't just a Pathfinder 2 mm. guy. That's just that's just the game he was playing when Bob asked him to when we started. Oh, it was a fun channel. game. Absolutely. But you're like, oh, Derek has. A lot of RPGs, mm-hmm. and he knows a lot of RPGs. There's he's a buying, shelf behind him with like yeah. hundreds and he's of buying books. tons of RPGs. <laughs> that, that's not a set. That's real. Right. Yeah. That's, not the, that's not the set. That's just my was my office. Um, and so a lot of people are like, "Wow, we'd love to get that insight." Yep. And so that's when the show, you know, that's when the channel really started to, to grow and take off, and Patreon grew, and then we started Northern Reaches yeah, to to tap into the Pathfinder One community. Way bigger than we thought it was going to be. And way way more successful than ever. And, you know, we've been talking recently about how that pattern has behaved, you know, has re- recurred. We did a Pathfinder 2, a second Pathfinder 2 AP online. We did mm-hmm. Quest for the Throws of Flame. We did a Root actual play. Root was um, fun. No. You, and, know, you know, we're pretty hard on, on, on Quest, you know, but uh, it, it does have its cult following. Like, yeah, but a lot of no, people are still really like, listen, "Wow, that was great." I, my problem, uh, my problems with Quest are well documented. In that, I think that it is an exceptionally well positioned adventure mm-hmm. that then railroads the shit out of the, yep. the players, and the ending is completely Dusek Machina. Right. But if um, you want to see Derek in good action, you can watch Quest <laughs> to see what he changed about Quest to make it actually good. Because <laughs> there was some. There was yeah, some, there, there was some, some fallings yeah, in that. Great yeah. systems that made uh, that fun. There was some fun stuff that Derek put in there for sure. Uh, deleted like ninety percent of the fan encounters, <laughs> which meant ninety percent of the book. <laughs> and uh, so that's good. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. So I mean, we made some changes and we did that, those things, but um, you know, I think that over time, you know, our audience started. This channel started. No, there's no bones about it. This channel started as a Pathfinder Two channel. Oh yeah. We were Pathfinder Two AP. We mostly talked about Pathfinder Two. But as we began to express about this, and there was a lot of, you know, um, um, I guess I would say concern on my behalf because it was like, am I going to lose my audience? Right. You know, and and we did lose people. You know, people who said, I'm I'm here for Pathfinder 2 oh, only. We had people who were here only for the APs. Well, there's so many people who just want their content creators to be pigeonholed. Yes. You know, I don't want it. And, and I, to a certain extent, I understand that. If I'm watching a woodworker and then he starts talking to me about finance and stock investment, I'm like, no. Exactly. But do I want to see that woodworker? It's like, I only make tables. It's like, if he goes to make a chair, am I going to be like, fuck this guy? Am I? Some people might be. Some people might be. Also, I don't understand. Just skip the episode. Correct. We And, and to be clear, that is really an option for us. I highly recommend it. Skip the episode. Skip the episode. Because we fucking do so many of them. I apologize. Yeah. It's actually true. Yeah. If you don't like one, I, well, it's funny. You might not like one. I, there actually probably is one that you might like. Right. Because there's so many different ones yeah, on right. there. You might be like, that's a game that's like another game I heard about. I should probably listen in. You right. might actually find some pretty good advice. And, <laughs> and, and so there's something that really, it, you know, it really interestingly took over as we went in 2023. And we, we did our Root actual play last year. You know, so again, so 2021 was, that was right? it was fun. Minus the audio problems. That was great. Yeah, we had some audio problems, but a lot of fun had here. But what happened over time is that the community continued to grow, even as we stepped back from where we had started. But it also sort of took on its own life. And these people began feeding into each other. And this was mostly a group of people who had come here to play one game. Mm-hmm. And now we have so many people oh, yeah. who play so completely games. different games, a whole variety of games, and it's all because of the you know mm-hmm. the the community experience. Um, and so, in a sense, uh, you know, the the channel, in my opinion, is is the Patreon, hundred percent. You know, it, and, you know, and I think that's you know we talked years ago, right, about like what's what's the value add of of you know the channel, right, right? Because you're a patron, you're trying to like you know, provide a service or something for, for your fans. Right. Um, and 
it's great because even back then we were like the community is is why people are here but people don't necessarily join because of the community they join because they love pathfinder 2 they want to be uh in a in a mega campaign they want to be in a community game they want to get advice they want to ping Derek. right like, like there's lots of different reasons that people join which is great right appeal to, to a lot of people uh but the stickiness mm -hmm. right the people who stayed were the people who got engaged with the community right and we'd always look at the you know numbers right people coming in people coming out and the people who like kind of never engaged with folks never really talked you know like they statistically didn't stick around very long right but the people who like came in even if they came in for one very specific thing uh and got engaged that community i'm i mean they they've made friendships that, oh yeah that they'll probably keep for the rest of their lives i mean there are people that i know for sure that play <laughs> there's a there's there's a in my head i know specifically a guy is running his own home game with his friends. Mm -hmm. One of the patrons is in his home game. It's a virtual home game, but one of the patrons is in his home yeah. game because he needed another player. And he's like, you're pretty sweet and you know this game that's pretty amazing. well. Yeah. So oh, yeah. They're not, that's, they're, they're right there, that's what yeah. this is so about. It's, well, it's right? not just they're playing community games, but they also like have sort of joined their each other's home games. Yeah. Which oh, is like wild. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, what the? What do we got? RFC throwing some money? Oh, we got. Steve must really want to make a point. We got, <laughs> we've got uh, we've got a, a massive tip from our friend wow. uh, Roll for Combat. Pour one out for the knights. Long live the knights. Well, <laughs> thank you, Stephen. Hey, that Stephen. Is, that is very, 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 very nice of you. Um, you know, and and, and you can't know, wait to see Stephen in a couple months. We gonna will. We're gonna go I'm see. looking forward to it. Yeah. Origins. Fuck, I love Origins. Well, Origins, but also uh, we're, uh, we're going to baseball, go game? baseball game. Yeah. Uh, with Stephen, while well, when he comes because he's coming here early, and I'm driving him to Origins. That's right. Um, I'm probably going to be in the backseat of that car. Well, you know, and, and, and like, I, you know, and I, I do want to take a quick moment here to shout out uh, Roll for Combat, who, by the way, has a new Kickstarter. Out. Is the dragon one? Um, it, secret dragon? It is the secret. Uh, uh, secret. Steve, why don't you tell us yeah, about Steve, your Kickstarter? Steve, Steve, what's the, what's the, I thought it was something Secrets of Dragons or something like that. I, I saw I, I get the emails from all of his Kickstarters. Yeah. I'm subscribed to them. There was a lot going on because this was uh, April Fool's Week too. So. Right. Well, that's why I had to get very careful it's, what it's, was it's being epic released. Epic new dragon. It's secret okay. dragons. Secret, we, we I knew it was dragons. Oh, dragons. Okay. Yeah, I get the secret. emails. <laughs> um, but they also have a, a, an April Fool's joke where you can play yeah. one character and it's a race uh, fusion. Is, yeah. Um, Which you know naturally, of course, even though it's April Fool's, looks amazing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. Someone was like, someone, I am watching Dragon Ball Z right now someone, too. No. Someone was like, <laughs> someone was like, was like, you know, uh, uh, they were like uh, the. Uh, you guys already did that with Triune. Oh, yeah, yeah I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good point. Yeah, yeah um, three three people controlling uh, one I didn't monster. even think about it that yeah. way. We did do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, just really great stuff coming out of, of Roll for Combat. And um, uh, one thing I want to say is it's kind of a, a great example of, of how this channel has sort of evolved. We didn't know Steven. Nope. We didn't know Mark. And we did a review yeah. of their... Uh, their first their Battle Zoo Bestiary. Battle Zoo Bestiary. And, and the context of this review is key because we'd done a couple before then that we were we not did so. the monster man. What's the monster? Monsters book? of Myth. Monsters oh. of Myth. Yeah. And, yeah we, Bad taste in my mouth. We'd done, we'd done a couple of reviews and we basically been like, yeah, you know, like, and honestly, if you take a step back, you go, Oh, we did Absalon. We we gave it like a <laughs> we gave it like a C minus, you know, or yeah. like a D, you know, like a, not even a D plus, like a C minus. I did not and like, like a lot Monster of people Myth. Were very, you did not like it, but anyways, so we reviewed this, so mm. we kind of had that, and I think we got a lot of people who came in and go, like for the hate watch. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, like or, or people who just love to see people rip people apart. Yeah. And again, we we always get this reputation, right. and then we counter it, and then some people get mad. Whoa, well, whoa, that, whoa. That's we because, don't throw me okay. into the we so group. The problem is, because <laughs> no, that was a great example, because they're like, oh, Bob loves everything, and Bob came out, he's like, I fucking hate this book. Well, you can't hype me up on Monsters of Myth and then give me nothing. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, p people have a problem, I I've noticed with us, because we're honest, and you don't see it on the internet. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, and when we don't rip apart a book, people go, well, they didn't rip apart the book, they said it was good, those sellouts. Yes. And then, of course, when we do rip apart a book, it's because we're assholes. Because we're assholes. Yeah. So we we praised the book. God forbid we just had an opinion. We praised the book. Uh, you know, Smith gave it very high praises for its five E content. And, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I thought the book was great. And I, the, I still use. I hate you. Hate uh, I best hate years. Monster Man. I still use their monsters. Right. So <laughs> oh yeah, but the and, monsters are sweet. If but, I'm running a five E game or even PF two game and I want something cool, I pull that book the off. The PF two I ran a couple last for the Northern Reaches. I'll, I'll, I'll just yeah. take Gander in the book. Just just. Yeah. Well, I, I love even, the monsters because I, uh, I, I know they're also in Foundry. I use the Bone Dragon thing. Oh yeah, you did in Rise of the Rune Lords. Yeah, you did. But Stephen had a Kickstarter for the second best year. Yep. It was uh, strange and unusual. Yeah, we have that Kickstarter. Yep. It got both the books. I haven't even opened them yet. I just immediately as soon as that was available, I was like, oh, I know this is going to be gold. And I just bought it. it 
got it put on the shelves. I, re- I, I went through it. it. It's pretty good. Yeah. So uh, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. We, yeah. Those guys time, make good shit. We, yeah. we, we, whenever we do a video, we'd also do these bonus videos for the patrons. So Steven joined because he wanted to hear what we also had to say. Yes. Like, like once the cameras weren't rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we turn these cameras they on. They really have to and, say. And long story short, you know, we really respected his integrity and he really respected ours. Well, I and, mean, and, listen, Bob, Bob had legitimate issues with the layout. I mean, we are super big on this has to be playable at the table, right? right. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, I will always remember this. Steven heard that and was like, oh, shit, Bob's right. Literally opened up the PDF editor, changed it and sent Bob a fresh copy being like, hey, is this better? Yeah. I'm yeah. just like, holy fuck. Yeah, right. It, and like, here's like, someone who's like loves their product or interested in their product. Right. right? And that's yeah. like for me, like just show me that you care. Right. Mm-hmm. And, that, and ultimately, that is, you know, that's the reason why I really don't do anything with anybody. But I do work with Rule for Combat 100%. and go into their show He's, and everything. He, like seems like okay he seems like an OK guy. He seems like a pretty OK guy. Um, but what was he? The, the What was the it, avatar? He was the he was the um, the budget. The budget. Oh, so good. The budget. The budget. Um, yes. So good. Just want to give a quick shout out uh, to Dodger. Uh, AKA Dr. Mac, one of the first Patreon supporters, came here for PF2 and live play. Still love that, but enjoy the rest of the content. Cheers. Yeah, and again, like I said, we're we're gonna be coming up here with some people who have been with us for for three years on mm-hmm. Patreon. Um, and again, I mean, the, the the list is very, very, very long of people who have really just incredibly supported this channel. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Ben. Um, oh yeah, Ben. Uh, huge. Ben A, uh, who was just such a huge instrumental part of the uh, like the three community. big ones that hit me in the head for like the first three big ones were Ben, yep. Vin, yep. and then Edril. And Edril. Mm-hmm. Or like the I mean, Stephen was um, um, Vlax was mm-hmm. big in the Northern Reaches. So those right. are the guys I interacted the most right. with. But like right. Ben and helped I, me with some with some of my first PF2 games. Vin ran me in some high level PF2, which is just <laughs> Silly games that he would run me in. That would be uh, session fifty-seven of Plaguestone. Right. I don't Vin know Finder. what he was doing. Vin Finder. He um, was dropping us off but, blimps. You know, it was and, crazy. And, and like you know, and the thing, the thing that's really cool about it is like you know, obviously some people aren't as engaged or active as they used to be. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Vin isn't as on as often as life he used is to be. life. You life know, is uh, life. Ben's got a bunch of stuff going on in his life, and and he's taking a step back. But you know, th- these people help build and shape our communities. Yep. You know, Donnie. Um, oh, Donnie. Uh, he's not even with the patron anymore, but Stephen Palmer. Um, oh, I love Steven. I, I he talked to I, he sent me some messages one day. Yeah, he he watched one of the streams and sent me a personal message. He's yeah, such a good guy. I, I get a couple messages from him. Yeah, uh, uh, he he Phoenix, specifically helped me Nihilus run my. Phoenix. Yeah, he specifically helped me convert um, a what's the Epic Encounters box for PF or for Five E. They like a box you could buy minis for, and it comes like a one shot. You know how I love my one shot. Oh, shots. I think I remember this. It comes yeah, with minis. He, it was he like helped a, you convert uh, convert a bunch of the kobolds and yep, monsters. Yep. And then he and then he, yeah. I ran it for him and and a couple other people. And he was like, afterwards, he's like, let me just stay on with you for about half an hour. That was and one of your first times like, running uh, PF2, PF2, wasn't it? One hundred percent. Yeah, and Steven I remember did that. That, that was yeah. great. He's a really good guy. He's such a good guy. Um, and you know, and of course, um, you know, we've got uh, you know, channel members who, I mean, hell, we've. We've we've hung out with these people. We've you know we've we've met these people. We've we've had really had drinks, great yeah, you know so like people like people like Scott GM Scott. Um, there may or may not have been a fiasco. You game. know Rick uh, Laughing Outlaw who we're building a table for. Yes. Um, you know and then again we just have so many incredible yep. people. Who Frosty's been with in us. the chat. I've been Frosty's in the chat. Trey's in the chat. I I, mean, I, just, I was playing my first. These are people Northern who have been with us games for a very long time with Frosty in the game. He would he would yeah, say after Frosty and help. getting up at like three in the morning yeah. before like doing before a, work. Yeah. And I think he's in. Uh, is it Navy? Or is Marine? Is Navy or Marine? It's not Army. Careful, don't insult him. I know. I I will not insult you, Frosty. I'm pretty sure it was Navy, um, but. Um, he would he would wake up before his yeah. service and yeah. or, and sometimes he'd be like gotta go. By That's the way, a man who values his uh, RPGs. By the yes. way, to, to put this into perspective, okay, with 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 uh, uh, Doctor Mac Dodger up there. Okay, so our first patron was Ross. Oh, that's your buddy. Who's our good buddy? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, a second Marines. Patron, oh, our, son of a bitch. Our second. Patron, Sorry, Frosty. You can kick him in the nuts, Frosty. It's all right. <sighs> Oh jeez, he's really pissed. Good job. <laughs> yeah. have, you, have you ever seen God Frosty? Damn, Bob. I've seen Frosty come on screen with his tats everywhere. He's he's intimidating. Yeah, well, so <laughs> I don't so want to about to get intimidated. <laughs> First patron, patron number one, Ross. Yep. Patron number two, Tim Carpenter, aka uh, our other buddy, uh, yep. Tim. Also a knight. <laughs> also or number three, Doctor Mac. Oh shoot. Number four, Edril. Edril, love Edril. And number five, Smith. <laughs> where where am I at? Uh, you're not, not a patron anymore. <laughs> um, and so, you know, um, and so those were all people who joined in, in July, you know, when we went live, um, along with, uh, Michael Sanders, Ragon, um, Vin, uh, Brian Carpenter, uh, 
George joined slightly thereafter. Um, Donnie. At uh, $24. Kaz, and Kudrigas, cents. Henry. I love that he did that. Laughing so Out Law. Our good friend Gid. <laughs> oh, I love Gid. Yeah. Who also joined, believe it or not, has been a member since October 2021. Quark. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Quark, man. He's still in the. He's still, he's still here. He's is still he there. playing P- PvP? Uh, yeah. He's, he's a PvP. I, mean, I think yeah, Gid adopted him. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, just Our PvP community is pretty. Uh, popular, you know, but I did not think it was. I, I mean, we're not allowed to go in there. I don't. Well, I don't London, go in there. London. Every, will, every time we take a look, London's, London's like, get the, the hell chat. out of here. London will tell us not yeah. to go in there. So, Stay away from that chat room. <laughs> and, and, and I guess this is just a long way of me saying that you know what we this channel started as just a YouTube channel, and we were just recording ourselves playing uh, Pathfinder Two. But what it had turned into is this incredible community of amazing friends and gamers. And what I think is really cool is. We have grown enough. The Patreon is over 400 people. Now, a lot, half of those people are lurkers. wild. Half of those people are lurkers. You know, they don't say much. They don't do I much. didn't think we were going to get 20 subscribers. subscribers. We have 400 patrons. Right. Yeah, I assumed George would give up making accounts by like the fifth or sixth one. <laughs> So, I know Matt the Cat did try to write a program that he could just continually watch YouTube videos and he got blocked. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, you, we think that you, might have actually damaged the views earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got YouTube flagged got YouTube. YouTube flag <laughs> so, but what's happened now is it's become sort of self sustaining. And we now have, you know, uh, Lord High Summoner is here and he and he was saying, I, I don't even know a time where yep. there was an actual play because he joined after Root. Yep. And so it's like, oh yeah, Root was and, our last one. You know, and I mean, granted, Root was you know last year, last yeah. uh, you know it was only like seven or eight months ago. But like time is meaningless. But I mean, like you know, six months, a lot can happen, yeah. and a lot can change. You know, there was no Dragon Bane six months ago, Bob. <sighs> was there a time before Dragon Bane? <laughs> I only know Dragon Bane. Some and then people say on. no. <laughs> Right, there's there's um, there's 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 B D and then there's A D. <laughs> that's like that's how we that's how we separate time now on the Knights of the Last Call Patreon. Yeah, that's good. Um so you know, I mean it's a it's a great way of saying this channel would not be here if it wasn't for for you and and, and especially for our patrons, especially for everybody who comes in and watches and supports us and tips and super chats and, and is just part of the Patreon. And it wouldn't be you from a perspective of money, mm-hmm. obviously. YouTube, we still don't make any money from YouTube. Um, you know, it's not five dollars anymore. It's like, like a hundred dollars. Yeah, I would say it's not <laughs> nothing. It's definitely something. But right. it's, I mean, it, that pays for what half a light. Yeah, I mean, it's not we, even worth it. You know, we still only yeah, get we, a week. Sometimes we, we get dinner. Let me put it this way: sure, we still <laughs> only we get supported we still, by raising canes. <laughs> we, we still only get a couple thousand views for a video. Yeah, right. And so that that's not really. We would not be still doing it if we didn't enjoy it, though. Correct, but. While I say that the patrons are what make the channel work, what I really mean to say is the patrons are the channel because they the are. community that yes. has developed um, it has, has has far exceeded you know anything that I would have ever you know hoped or dreamed uh, about doing. And you know, obviously, I'm very uh, cognizant and I, I want to avoid echo chambers as much as possible. I understand that certain people you know are there because they agree with me to a certain extent or disagree with me to a certain extent. Um, but you know, I'll, uh, let me just interrupt you. There's a person on Twitter today. That uh, someone was asking for good TTRPG content creators, and he said, "There's this group called Knights Last Call, and I don't agree with barely anything he says, but it's a pretty good watch." Or so, it, I'm, 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 sounds uh, like a member. Yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, obviously misquoting him a, a bit, or, yeah. or, or, or whoever it was. But I just read it, and I was like, "This person watching was like, they bring up some good points. I don't agree with those points, but if you're looking for a good content creator, it's not bad to listen." Now. Well, Three hours is not everyone's cup of tea. I can, I can imagine that. But uh, uh, and I think that's there's uh, some good stuff in there. That's a great take, honestly, because to Derek's point about not having an echo chamber, I love the conversations we can get into. Mm-hmm. Right, like like it's a good balance because like we have folks who who are very receptive to new ideas and new ways of thinking. Uh, and are open to that. We have people who unfortunately are less open, but you know everyone's where they are at. Um, but in general, it's like you know. Like, you, you know, you, you can't be a moron if you're going to assert a point, be prepared to defend it. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's such just good back and forth, like, yeah. conversations, yeah, we, you know? We've had conversations. People get hot under the colors yeah, sometimes. Of sometimes course. people have to take a step back. But, but I mean, even but, said, but, we but, rarely have to mock. We, we've only ever had to ban one and a half people. Right. And even then, like, the timeouts might have been less than five. Well, there was the guy that we called out for cheating, and then he quit. We didn't oh, actually right. ban. Okay. Right. Who was the guy? My favorite is the guy that joined... 
Oh, that was the Donnie. The, and AI Donnie thought he was bot. an AI oh. bot and he quit before I'm anyone so, could help out. A guy joined. <laughs> I felt bad uh, for that way, guy. I'm sorry if you were that guy. Actually, yeah. I, I feel like Donnie saved us. I, I feel like we dodged a bullet. <laughs> I don't know. He could have been awesome, but, but I, I, we probably guy, not. I don't know. Oh, we had a guy join and he was really excited. And he he typed this message of welcome, and then Donnie, our one of our longtime uh, uh, people and mods, was like, "Dude, that's the most AI sounding thing that I've ever heard." And we're in my kind life. of we're kind of blunt with what we say. Oh, very blunt. Yeah. Yes, you know, right off the get. And you know, it's it's us. It's Donnie. You know, like, he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. Uh, uh, Donnie's you know. so nice. <laughs> hey, he's so nice. But you know, this guy got just so offended, <laughs> and then he quit. I, I wonder know. if that's because Donnie was right. Like, <laughs> oh, well, that would be weird. That well, because like, I feel like most people would be like, "Haha," and then move on. I've been like, um, I would have just been like, "What?" Because oh, I wouldn't have got the joke. Yeah, well, Tor- it really wasn't a joke. Jackal Torn Moon says, uh, "Don't forget the honorary band." Yes. What was the honorary band? Oh, yeah. A right. Captain Relic, the Brass Dragon. I don't remember this one. It's a it's an RFC thing. It it was on RFC's channel. Yeah, it's oh. an RFC thing. Oh, I don't know. Oh, this one, you then. banned a guy on RFC's channel? No, I. <laughs> yes, but then I also. But apparently, he's also been banned from like five or six or seven other. Oh, discords. so you preemptively banned I him. Preemptively on banned him. On oh, ours. that's fantastic. <laughs> that's <great. laughs> I kind of like that. Maybe that's the half. No, I guess the half is got it. Cool. Uh, yeah. Frosty hmm. says, "My very first P- PF2E game, Bob TPK'd us with overtuned NPCs. Was that the they, spider one? No, no, no. This was. Um, I put uh, level." One skeletal champions in these tombs, mm-hmm. and uh, well, they tripped the they tripped the trap, and all four doors open, and so like there was four level one. Frosty, why are you tripping traps? Uh, well, I don't think it was him. Someone was poking around. Frosty, why is your teammates suck? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think we killed like all but like one person, and that person, one person escaped. I was like, oh, I I just joined the Northern Reaches, and I just killed the first person. Um, and then I realized I was like, oh. I thought they were like uh, level zero, and I could put, you know, it was a trip. It was like a moderate encounter, but I made it actually like, I think it was like extreme or severe. I don't remember I, how. I it don't know. Out. They tripped well, the trap. If so there's, if there's Bob, there's four. If they're the same level as the PC, they should be they're 40. worth how much? Forty. And yep. how many were there? There's four. So one sixty. Extreme. Which is extreme. So I gave him extreme encounter. Yeah. Which this is early in our so that actually it was bit, literally level flip. one first. Yeah. First one they were in there. So it, it should have been not been that way, but I misread it. Eh, kind of overtuned. Um, but could they ran away? Uh, well, one got away. Okay. So I, why didn't the others run away? I, I killed them. That quick? <laughs> I mean, those. I think GM Scott like tried to hit one. He was like, oh, that is not working. <laughs> GM Scott should have ran away? No, GM Scott should have I can't run. remember who. I, I know Sater was like the first, or Sedan maybe it was Sidon. Oh, one, Sidon, Sidon, yeah. Yeah, it was, we, it, was, it was one of the S uh, patrons. I killed them first, and it was like, oh, there goes the first one. And I, maybe one or two people got away, but it was... Yeah. Uh, you, had the, you had the highest, like, kill procession, right, for yeah, a while. For a while. Oh, yeah. For yeah. a while, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I... Well, that one I screwed up on. But after that, I, I took your mentality. I don't throw punches. So I put the encounter out there, and I'm going to... Well, I've, I had a tendency to be aggressive. I'm going to kill, and if you go down, probably going to cootie grab you. There was a little bit of okay. like, Bob, Bob, you're not the enemy. So let's, that I remember the, we had a talk yeah. to you about. So I, I have a weird. So you're no, not no, the no, adversary. No, no. I know. So that I'm is an interesting. Myself back. That is an interesting. Um, there's an, this is an interesting thing that you just said there, and I think it's something that is uh, needs to be talked about, and it's something that I think is actually true. Okay. Um, that, and, and I don't know how to describe it, so you're going to have to bear with me. Yeah. There was uh, a lot of conversation in the Patreon Discord. Uh, there's a there's a whole group of people who are, uh, gosh, if you're not a, I feel bad if you're how not do a you, How do you join? Uh, yeah, if you, you need to join patreon.com slash TP. I mean, everybody here is is a chaos. If member, not, there's not. some stuff in the description link, below. Link below. Um, we talk a lot about RPG philosophy, which is fine. But at the end of the day, it's about getting to your table and doing something that matters and having fun with it. But there's a lot of people in our channel, and we kind of all go back and forth on this. We talked, we've talked about GNS, we've talked about mm-hmm. stances, right? Mm-hmm. People who believe, who view themselves as an actor, and other people who view themselves as like an author or a director when they're playing. And I always describe. There's a lot of us who, like myself, who I describe myself as an author, okay, or a director when I'm playing. Meaning, even when I'm being a player, I think, you know, what do I want to do? This is what I want to do in the game, and what I will do is I will just create the motivation for yeah. my character to go do that right it's like an author being like i want my author i want this character to you know betray the party right. so i'm gonna figure out a way that that happens how do i get him there organically how do i get him there yeah whereas there's these people who have this actor stance who believe that they you know they don't have these external biases and i always question whether that can even be possibly true but that's not the point the point is is that we were talking about um 
the nature of these of these games and and how they sort of uh, you know where do they generate the sort of the fun from, and I basically said that there is something to be said about whether you're whether you're acting or whether you're playing as an author. We were talking about like is D and and of the conversation of acting came in like can you feel empathy for your you know a character and I was basically kind of like oh, I, sorry who who feels empathy like for example I don't I treat my characters like they're not real people you as a player me as a player treat your character right. your PC yes as it's, 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 it's I don't want to say it's my avatar but it's I treat it like I would my video game you're, you're not thinking of it as like like someone in a movie or a book or a play but even when I'm reading like in Game of Thrones when I'm watching Game of Thrones I'm like mm-hmm. well these are characters in a in a show you know what I mean like yeah but I mean part part of like this if they get inter- killed it's not the same as if they got killed in real life mm-hmm. but part part of entertainment though and is part of me getting, relatability to characters case in point in Game of Thrones I'm like oh that's great that a bunch of characters died I'm entertained that is not an idea that I would ever manifest in real life <laughs> Right where I would go, wow, that was so great that all those people got killed. What a great news story. So what am I? Well, I no one knows. <laughs> I was like, because I root for, but I root for them to kill me, well, and I root for me but, to kill sorry, them. We're, we're tangenting. I think I just want tangent. We're, we're tangenting, but that's please okay. continue. That's okay. But what I came to the realization was, is that I said, and there might be there, of course, there's shades of gray, of course. But I said, I realized some people play role playing games to be someone else. Oh sure, yeah. and I do that. Other people. I think I think there's a golf there. Mm-hmm. Play role playing games to do something else, mm-hmm. and basically the I like idea both those endings. The, yeah. the idea sometimes they're the same thing. The yeah. idea is is that like for me, like I, you know, if I could, I would be slaying dragons and getting potions and gold and treasure. Mm-hmm. I can't do that because that doesn't exist, and it's also dangerous even if it did exist. So role playing games are a way for me. To almost uh, what's it called, Bob? Uh, Iki Iki Sai. Oh, I don't oh know what you're the anime thing where you get teleported into a fantasy world. Oh, I don't know it. Uh, this is like um, anime sword nerds. art online. Help us, kind of. Yeah, Sao did it where they, like, you put on a headset and you become in the anime. It, it's in that literature. Is. Whatever that word. Is. Seki? Yeah, yeah. Is Sekai. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, so, is that is is that like sword art online? Because I, that's that is a big one in sword art online. Yeah. So, but the idea apparently is, everyone knows this. I mean, there's like <laughs> everyone's like, "What are you?" T-? It's it's a genre. Apparently, we have a lot of anime I, fans I, in the. Isekai. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, isekai. Uh, isekai. Hey, Roll for combat says other worlders. We love it. Um, <laughs> but like now, here's the thing. Um, I- Iki Sai. Ha ha ha. Like okay, going, Sao. Is, yeah. So Sword Online is is what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. 100 so, that percent. That, that's people who were playing an MMO, yep. but then they got sucked into the actual MMO. Yes. Which is super funny now because in a sense, yeah. Sword uh, Sword Art Online is a real life MMO. Oh, is it? And now they have VR support. Oh, that's so, like, beautiful. it's really blurring the lines here. L- lit RPGs do that too. Right. Lit so, RPGs do that. Derek as well. loves lit RPGs. Now, so I know. It's his the, favorite. Now, but, but, but here's the key distinction I am not like. <laughs> I am a day. I would never want to play. <laughs> I am a day. I London. <laughs> I got to find that clip. Oh, oh so you're, good. Trying, you're trying to say it? You were, you're the one that no, started. I mean, obviously I, there's a whole thing where no, I was I discussing. And by the way, no one, I think, uh, understands what it is. But um, <laughs> I was saying, like, when I play D&D, okay, um, I don't want to make, you know, Derek the PC. Sure. And then play Derek the PC in the adventure. I don't want to do that, right? But it is very clearly for me just a vehicle to allow me to do the things and, you know, go the places and, and fight the fights and overcome the challenges, these great heroic things, these amazing things that I could never do in my real life, either because they are. So it's those exist. last two exi- examples. So either because they don't exist or because um, it would be dangerous. Yeah. So for me, I'm much more interested in doing things. And then someone basically uh, brought the idea saying. of like, it, it doesn't really matter uh, because it's all kind of fake. Mm-hmm. And I said, I said th- that that struck something with me because this is something I actually said in, in my uh, uh, wedding, uh, in, in your yes. we- in when I was giving the best man speech, I immediately my brain went there. Yeah, when I was That's giving funny. when I was giving the best man speech at Aaron's wedding, and I talked about how, you know, Aaron and I. Had uh, never- I, remember, I remember the line. It, it was you know, uh, Aaron and I have gone on many adventures, and some of them were even real, right. <laughs> but most of them were not. <laughs> But here's the thing. The mind is capable of blurring the distinction of, of difference. And so when you sit down to play a D&D game and it's real, 
And I don't know what that means. But mm -hmm. what I mean is there's no here's my narrative meta currency so that we get a you know guarantee a good game. Mm -hmm. There's no, well, I'm gonna choose to surrender so that my character can't die, but I suffer a narrative campaign loss. There's no uh hey GM, why don't you make a ruling on this? So that uh, the things go our way and we don't have to worry about it. When you play a game of D&D &D, mm -hmm. and it kind of comes down to the dice mm -hmm. and you're with a group of guys or girls or people and you win, it feels like you actually won. Yeah. Yeah. Because you did. You know, and I and, and I said something which uh, unfortunate pumpkin said, oh, it doesn't make a difference to me. I said, it's like that for me, there is a huge world of difference between me you, Smith, getting together, and we're playing some co-op video game in the mission campaign mode, mm -hmm. okay? And we beat the mission. You know, eh, good shot, good good, good working. You, good whatever crazy dumb thing that you're probably doing because you're always doing some sort of support thing. You always got to pull us out somehow. Yeah. Um, Bob's KD ratio is right, way bad. Right, right. <laughs> but we won. And I said, but if we were, the three of us, going up against a human team, of human players. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we beat them. That's like a sport. I said, yeah. I, said I would feel much, of course. I would feel much better about that. Mm -hmm. I would feel much more proud of that. And Pumpkin said it doesn't really make a difference to him. And I said, that's really interesting because it makes a huge amount of difference to me. And when I play DD, when it's real DD and you don't have these narrative meta currencies or rules which are so carefully designed so that you're never actually gonna lose or whatever like that. You can get an outcome that can create a real emotional response. Oh, yeah. And your brain, I don't think, can tell the difference between. I mean, we were talking about L5R before, and that's yeah. the closest I got to that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, and, and L5R, Legend of the Five Rings, I mean, I would go to sleep thinking about my character. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm like, that character was awesome. And that was something I, I could not do. And I mean, the game sessions were amazing. For me, that's a sign that I'm in a good campaign. Yeah. When like I'm like constantly thinking about it. Now, yeah. when I when I find a tavern in the middle of the dungeon, I decide that I I feel like I'm disconnected from my character after that. I'm like I uh, <laughs> I did not think about that campaign. The second Derek folded his screen, that I was done. I mean, to be honest with you, in my in my, you know, thirty I was like reading like an MMO forum or something, maybe a TikTok. I don't know. In my 30, I think I got like a in, snack. In my 30 odd years of, of GMing, I will say this. By and large, the best litmus test for is my campaign going well is are your players talking about it between sessions? But I've, are they, I've are always they thinking about that. it? Are they asking questions about it? Are they interested? I remember how stunned Derek was when you and I had, like you talked about how you come to the Discord and you'll yeah. see 300 messages between Derek and I. I remember how stunned Derek was when he saw like a thousand between you and I. This is for Repentathuk? Talking about Repentathuk and about, we, we were laying out strategies for a base, how we were going mean, like, to like deal with the Knolls. Another session the I was really into. I mean, yeah. And Derek's like, Whoa, you guys really like this campaign. Right. And then we never played it again. Well, I mean, it <laughs> Derek was, was burnt if out. If anything, time. actually made it worse, it right? Because I think Derek went from like, man, I'm burned out. Well, that's all right. These guys won't care. So, like, oh, man, they're they really care. into this. God, I feel awful, but right. I can't I'd also, do it. I'd also like to point out that I, I ended the Legend of Five Rings campaign that you were just talking I know. about going to sleep thinking this about. It's so good. Um, I still think about that campaign. So good. Frosty says, I have fond memories of Lazarus producing a wall triune. Could not yes, I remember that prismatic wall, Frosty. Mm. And Frosty, as I recall, right, uh, was a little under level. For he was fight, final fight. Mm -hmm. Yes, he, he was. Did, he did not reach 20, but he he, no. made, he made the cutoff. Yeah, he, he did. did. Off. And so there wasn't so much that he could do, but prismatic wall is one of those things. Yeah. And, and that is yeah. Frosty, play. I do remember that very well. Those guys had a lot of good oh, plays. Oh, that, that fight had a lot of uh frustrating moments. Um no, not, hang on is hang on. To be fair, like, they did kill me first, so at least there was that. <laughs> I mean, that's what I was thinking about when you were talking about the fusion. I'm like, they went right after Derek. Well, they were no, like, get rid of him. Was, but here's the thing. I mean, it wasn't that they tried to, you know, kill us, kill me because it's me. What's funny is it just shows you how how the mentality of players work, okay? Each version of Triune, which, which I would never have picked, by the way. I want to be very clear about this. This is Bob. <laughs> Bob I, what, I made Triune. Bob, what were the three aspects of Triune? Uh, well, it was the heart of a giant, the um, blood of, 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 of a spider, and then it was like the it was supposed to be the mind of a vampire, but right. it ended up being the mind of something else. Right. But either way, it was, so blo it was mind, blood, and heart. heart and heart. Yeah, not what I would have gone with. But do you, do you know how hard it is to write <laughs> three years worth of lore around 
that <laughs> fucking concept. So how do I make blood and heart sound cool? Why is there blood and heart? Aren't they kind of like in the same vein? You would think so. Right. Blood, yeah. blood and heart, you think, right. are very, the Venn diagram well, like, there. How the fuck do Bob, I make this cool? Let me, let me put and yet it was Bob, still cool. Bob, let me put it into blood, heart, mist, fog. Oh, <laughs> you got me with the mist. So... Anyways, I make I make I make these aspects of Triune. It's a three-headed god, and of course, the mind one has a lot of psychic powers, and, and I gave it this ability, very much inspired by Starship Troopers, where it, oh, it, yeah. it was not a, it didn't have a it, it didn't really have a melee attack, but it did, and if the melee attack hit you, mm -hmm. it basically shoved this spike into your brain, and it would each round you'd make a fort save, and you would gain stupidity, which stacked, and then if the stupidity <laughs> sorry I just. Can we just take a moment to appreciate role-playing games? <laughs> We're talking about a progressive debuff With your for brain. a spike in your brain. brain. Right. That just kills you. Right. <laughs> so you get you get you're, you're like, oh, I got a headache. Your stupidity increases. <laughs> and then if your stupidity ever equals your character's intelligence score, right. you are permanently turned into a thrall. Now, this is the final campaign. <laughs> sure. By the way, that would take rounds to do. Longer than the fight Longer was than the by fight like even lasted, four times. Okay, but but the part when the group had strategized because they had they had made oh, yeah, war no, checks. They, oh, yeah. they, knew, they were so terrified. Yeah, they're like, oh, that could turn someone into an NPC permanently. Right, Derek has to go down. They first. would be an NPC for the other thirty minutes of the campaign. <laughs> right, but they were so players are so afraid of losing agency. I know that that was that was deemed. I don't want to lose agency. That was deemed the, the number one target that had to go down. Um, I mean, it's funny, right? Because like I think we all do it, right? Like like every time I cast a spell in, in, in uh, uh, Forbidden Lands, right? I'm always like, all right, turn it into a demon, right? That is, well, I mean, what's the odds of that? One in like 300? No, it's one in well, you have 66, to, right? Well, no, but he has to roll. You have to miscast, oh, and okay. then you gotta roll a six and a and six. And then you gotta right? roll six and six. So it's one in 36. Yeah. From the miscast, and let's yeah. say you miscast, you know, maybe a fourth of the time or something like that. So like one in two, one in 150 or something like that. Right. But every time, turn in demon. Right. No, I, I don't even know what the other ones are on the chart. We got we got a, a bear. Uh, a, your, the, la the last double one. your spell. Uh, I, yeah. What was the last one? You couldn't sleep. Couldn't sleep. Yeah. Um, but it's always like turning into a demon. I, Gonna die. I had a lot of fun but, that Forbidden but, Land session. Too. Well, what's interesting about that is you know this gets into that concept of fiction versus mechanics, right? Where like if if you're playing playing true to the fic, like let me put it this way, we've played a lot of D and D. A lot of D20, but a lot of D&D. &D. You all have as well. I mean, if I crit you mm -hmm. or you crit me, okay, and you're a barbarian and you have a great axe, all right, or, or I'm an ogre with a club and I get the 20, I get the crit, what is the description? Oh. Double damage? Yeah. No, we're like, this person is like blowing up. You're like caving in there. Chest cavity, no. you're decapitating them. I mean, to it be is fair, gory. if you're completely soulless, you're like, sick, crit. Map attack? 125 yeah. damage? No, but if you're actually, if you have a soul, yeah. you're, you're, if you're not, actually playing these If games. you're actually playing the game, then you're going to be like, <laughs> even as a GM, I'm going to be like, you, know, you crit my monster. And I'm looking at my monster. My monster's, got, my monster's a hill giant with 125 hit points. And you just did 35 points of damage to it, which is like a quarter of its hit points. And I'll be like, your great sword tears a bloody gash across the creature's side. Blood and organs come yeah. spraying out in a fountain. And it's, it's like this like, giant is clearly not going to survive the fight because of blood and organ loss. <laughs> but he's still up and fighting because oh, no, that's yeah, just he, how fancy he is. Yeah, but and, but you still got to bring him down, Bob. Zero. You right. still got 90 hit points of damage you need to put on this guy before he dies so, of blood loss in three minutes. So even though, even though we know what the mechanics are, we, we just can't help ourselves. Because crits are awesome. You should feel good about and that. And so the opposite is, like so the opposite is also true, where you're like, he buries the spike into your brain. Oh, minus two to int. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like, no. do, do I need a hill for that? Right. No, no, no. Yeah, Let's rest. No, you're you fine. It. No, you sleep it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that That's is, forbidden lands. That, uh, for, yeah, forbidden lands will be like, just you sleep have X amount of days. No, Take you have X amount of days All right. well, to, to, to heal some fair, injuries, which is injuries, nice. Yeah. Which is I'm nice. just talking about like the. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, to be fair, that is that is one of the things that I wanted to change. Right, right. Um, oh. But, uh, mm -hmm. but, I, but you know, that's an interesting conversation as we talk about forbidden lands because 
a hundred percent. It it and I that we were in the midst of those conversations when I was thinking about it, and I ran out of time, so it didn't matter. But we were in the midst of those conversations about fun versus interesting. Right. And a lot of times I think about these things, and I you know it's like oh I took a bunch of damage, and then I rest and get it all back. And it's like, oh, this is stupid. And I'm like, okay, so what if I made it a pain in the ass? Would right. that make the game better? And it's like, maybe not. You know, because like well, the problem is there's so many other systems that connect to it. We right? we, we we play. Don't the you games. guys play a game where you guys are dealing with space mortgages? <laughs> and it's awesome. <laughs> I feel like so there's probably it's, people out there that first really like that. It's a ship mortgage. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> because you might also have a mortgage on like a business or a vehicle that you right. own, possibly even a weapon. Right. And it's awesome. <laughs> Where guess will back me up. The, the thing about the ship mortgage <laughs> is you have to think about the ship mortgage. Is is it's it's an impetus to adventure. What does impetus mean? You know, a reason. Okay. You know, it's a it's a thing right. that starts you on your way. Oh, you know how you go to work, mm -hmm. I mean, it sucks. Yes. What if instead you went to work and it was awesome? It, you know, it was awesome because oh. you were in space. Oh. Right. Now you were doing the same thing. I'm just right. an you architect. Just, you were a space, space architect. No, no, okay, real time. I had this I was explaining this to, to my wife the other day. Uh, where I was just like, because uh, uh, she was making fun of us because of the Star Star Trek Adventures, right? Where like Kaz and I want to be in Star Trek, mm -hmm. like for real, it's our fantasy, right? But we don't want to be like in any of the TV shows. Mm -hmm. We want to be like on the ship you never heard about, okay? Right? So just some nebula class starship that goes and explores comets, and like no first contact, nothing dangerous other than space, which is dangerous, right? Obviously, but like like what happened today? Oh, we saw a nebula. Oh man, did it like like Turn you guys into like characters from some Shakespeare play? No, no, it was just a nebula. It was, it was totally normal. It was just a bunch of gas in the in the space. Oh, did well, you guys have a problem with the holodeck? No, no. Actually, we turned it off because it was causing way too many problems. <laughs> right? right? Uh, we just got really into jazz instead. Right? So like, like we love that because we love like we want to go to space and that would be fun for us, right? And we're nerds and like yeah. I would totally like like I mean, do day science on a nebula? That sounds awesome. Right. Sounds better than doing it on a shoe data, right? <laughs> But obviously, that would be boring for anyone else ever, right? We get that, right? Um, but I was trying to explain to my wife why this was so cool because she, you know, like most people, was just like, no, that does sound lame, and you and Cass sound like losers. And I was like, well, here's the thing. The secret is, no matter what it is, anything is cooler if you add space as an adverb to it, okay? Anything's cooler, right? Haircut. Space haircut. I mean, that does sound pretty cool. Right. Cat, space cat, space gone. Cat? Space, space gun. Space gun. Okay, space gun is really cool. Right now, we're thinking like 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 laser. laser. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Even the cat like had a helmet, but like a gun because everyone has a gun in space, right? Mortgage. Yeah. Space mortgage. I mean, a space, space mortgage, mortgage sounds way cooler than a regular mortgage, right? Because right? Right, your regular right? mortgage is it's on, awful. Is awful. <laughs> architect, space architect. If, if my job description said space architect, isn't that oh, cool? That'd be baller. That'd be a good be, business card. Hopefully, you'd be salary by that. Uh, McDonald's, uh, space McDonald's. Space McDonald's. <laughs> they they have the was it uh, not a drummer? George says bar space bar. Yeah, um, <laughs> they do have the uh, cos uh, the Cosmo thing that it's like going to be the McDonald's coffee stuff they're coming out with. There you yeah, go. see those things. Cosmo because you know McDonald's is like marketing. Pump marketing. We got to get more space. That's, That's right. Pumpkin space says, coffee. Pumpkin says I played Star Trek Adventures with Ben. I felt like I was so deep in that game. <laughs> That the sessions were stressing me out in real life. That sounds like an amazing campaign. No, but no, but see, that's actually something. That's what I get to. That's what I think happens. We, right? We, I think, predominantly this group, we play RPGs to do the crazy, awesome, dangerous, risky, fun, fantasy things that we could never do in our real life because it's not practical sure. or it doesn't exist. Or it would be stupid. So scum and villainy. All right. But, <laughs> and then the uh, scum and villainy, yeah. uh, uh, Legend of the Five Rings, right? Yeah. Uh, but when the game, when we start when it starts getting too far to the other side, where we start becoming that person mm -hmm. and we start empathizing oh, with that's that person. that's my issue. I, think, I was like, that's when no, you tell that, Derek no, to no, stop playing. Where, no, no, because Pumpkin's very much like us. And that's where the the stress, you know, the stress yeah. levels go up. Well, well to be clear, what was yes, the game that you had him quit because you were stressing you out in real life? Was that's that Scum and Villainy? villainy. Oh, okay, I thought yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to be clear, it wasn't the game's fault. It was because my life is stressful. Okay. I would much rather play a stressful game and have an easy life than have... A stressful life and a stressful game. I mean, yes. Uh, we just had a twenty-five dollar tip from Stephen. Is that Phoenix? Uh, Phoenix Stephen. I may not be active currently, but I always appreciate watching you guys. Your breadth and depth of tabletop role-playing game experience provides valuable content with actual context. 
Um, Heart, Stephen. Very, very. Uh, we were, we were Stephen. We were gushing about you earlier. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I hope very, he, very I nice. hope we got to see the beginning where I complimented him. <laughs> yeah. um, no, space it, Denny's. Yes. See, cooler than Denny's. Now, yeah, you still get diarrhea, but that would be space diarrhea. I had so much Denny's back in the day. Oh, that was used, the place to go. That was yeah. our all place. time. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, two in the morning, we'll bust it out again because you know when we used to go to Denny's. Uh, down the street. Well, no, when we used to go oh, to what, Denny's. After D&D. And, after D&D. And at midnight? Uh, EverQuest. Oh, oh, you're right. Because we're going to play an EverQuest right. soon. Oh, gosh. You're right. And hell, we'll be in exile. Maybe maybe we'll film a post-EverQuest game out of Denny's. That's what I'm saying. Just we'll, max we'll, trash. We'll do a live stream. All right. Give, oh, give me, give me. <laughs> I don't know if I had to digest give, a fortitude to eat a Denny's. Eat a grand slam. Give me Denny's in chat if you would watch a Life's the Last Call live stream from Denny's at like 12 in the morning. <laughs> you know, Denny's doesn't give a shit. Oh, they don't <laughs> They're like, all, all those drunks are here. <laughs> and and, and, and Steve, uh, Steve Palmer is here and said, I just caught up in yes. I oh, there's him. Steve. Good. <laughs> That's awesome, Steven. That's um, awesome. And uh, Steve, Steve, not Steve in, says, hey, fellas, first time catching a stream. Well, well uh, weird stream to catch. This is a weird stream to catch. Yes, uh, because we're just kind of talking about. Oh, he's about to hop off for session zero of Avatar Legends. Yeah, Sweet. Good choice. Good choice. Oh, it, you motivated him to run it. Oh, sick. It says uh, Derek's job, deep Derek. dive of the system is what motivated me to get a group together. That's, well, I mean, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Well, I mean. If I, you're encouraging people Avatar, to play games like Avatar is really great. Yeah. It's a great game. Only because it really does push you, you know, mm -hmm. into what it, the game wants you to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. No, it's because I really well designed game. Because yeah. I really like Avatar. To that yeah. Point. Uh, and Casey, I have not picked a class. I don't even know what EverQuest is, so I don't understand what I'm even Bob doing. Someone, you know I think, World of Warcraft is. Yes. So this is like the grand ancestor. So there's orcs. There are orcs. Okay, yes. I like orcs. And we will be killing them. Yes. So maybe. Well, I liked I liked being the orcs. Oh, you can't be an orc. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, orc. this game already no, seems no, no, awful. No, no, no. This game's like monsters or monsters. No, actually, they do have dark races. Oh, no, that's true. You could be an ogre. You could be an ogre. Troll. Well, you could be a troll. I assume the the chat was or the you not could be uh, a our Discord person. taking it. Mm -hmm. um, I assume the Discord. You could be a frog person. Frog that sounds person. awful. Should Bob be a frog person? Listen, I love me some frog lock. Okay. Uh, what is it about EverQuest where we don't hate is this, the races? Is this on Windows 95? Like, what are we playing this uh, on? Well, I'm oh, so yeah, confused. Well, we'll put, yeah, yes. at one point it was. No, it would have been on, like, 98. Okay. Because okay. it came out in 1999. You might have been out of Backport in 95. Oh, maybe. gosh. 98, 95. Listen, 95. they've made... Look, they came out with a new expansion for it last year. Yeah. It's still out there. The graphics improved? Yes, there, there was okay. a graphical Because I'm playing BG3, and I really don't want to regress. Revision in if about 2002. If you're going to compare it to BG3, we're going to have some problems. I just, it, I'm going to be regressing so much to play this no, game. See, here's the key now, and this is the thing. Oh, also, you have to read. And, I have to read? Uh, you know Ugh. how you click on text? I just can click things. I don't have to so, read nothing. So <laughs> when you talk to an NPC, you have to actually talk to the NPC. Are the type stuff in? Like, type like in them. chat, like Discord. What if I And you have to stuff. say things. No, you have to say the right things to the NPC or they won't respond. That sounds awful. That sounds great. Um, <laughs> that sounds awful. It's so fucking brutal. It's so brutal. Well, but, that's okay. No one quests anyone. But but you know, but see, that's that's interesting. Uh, Sail away says uh, AC was their first. AC thing. was a great. Game. AC was great. I love AC. AC was fun. I uh, I pissed I off Derek one day because I put all my stats in, in jump, jump and then I jumped over buildings. Derek's like, I hate this game. I hate you. <laughs> I just I do remember that. I never played AC two. AC2 was interesting. It wasn't as good, and it didn't li live very long. But it had some really good thoughts in it. It became the engine action they used for. Lord I was, I was really, I was really in MMOs, and then um, Warhammer, Age, Warhammer, Warhammer ruined me, you. and uh, I never recovered. That from game that. was supposed to be so. Amazing. That game was supposed to be such a. That game was supposed to be Dark Age of Camelot. Yes. To like the next degree, and it know? was made by those people. <laughs> right. And they just was, didn't know, you know how to manage their budget, and exactly. they lied. Um, uh, what was that guy's name, man? The Steve, British guy? St uh, Steven says uh, uh, UO was his baptism in MMOs. We never played UO because we were playing Meridian. <sighs> I mean, I, I dashed in it, but yeah, I never played Is this now. like, is it because I'm younger than you guys, or is it because I just didn't really get well, into no, the... Well, no, because oh. even though you're younger than... Now, like, 99, I wouldn't expect you to be playing EverQuest. Yeah. Right? But... World of Warcraft came out in 2004. Yeah. And but I, was, I was playing StarCraft a lot. And so you were familiar with the Blizzard, yeah. you know, the yeah. Blizzard band. So it's actually I, interesting you didn't get into the, like, wow, because of, well, of StarCraft. So I played Warcraft, but I would play, like, I'm going to play the uh, campaign and beat. So a lot got, of people we, who we joined. Tip, uh, from oh. our good friend. Oh, Combat Bush. Bush. Combat Woo. Medic Bush. He's another uh, oh, he's, old timer. He's been around for a very, very, very long time. CMB. <laughs> Um, oh, he didn't say anything. Uh, CMB did not include a message, but you know what? He doesn't need to. Uh, he's silent. silent but deadly. C CMB is, <laughs> CMB is, is hype train enough. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, thank you, Combat Medic Bush, not just for that tip, but for um, oh God knows um, a lot, a lot, a, a lot, many, 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 Big many, many, many channel months, supporter uh, for a very long time. Good yeah, guy. Um, and a good guy. Um, Every so, time I see his name, it always makes me think of the Rogue Bush that would oh, sneak the, attack. That was George's character. Yes. <laughs> That was so stupid. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Glicker said, I played them all and worked on World of Warcraft. Oh, well, that's pretty sick. That's sweet. Yeah, I did not play them all. You played them all, but I wouldn't say all. Oh, Listen, Bob, I played a lot. Bob, Bob's going to have a baptism by fire. Let's yeah. just put it that way. Yeah, I was more like, I think, like, I played a little bit of StarCraft, and then I was like, I like video games. I play Grand Theft Auto. That was Here, about it. Here's my thought you're going to get into it, you're going to be like, what are these graphics? You're going to start playing the game. You're going to be like, what is this UI? I can and get over graphics. And then after a little bit, you're going to be like, okay, okay. How? And then you're going to get your ass kicked. And you're going to be like, what the fuck? And then you're going to kind of get it. Yeah. So I'm okay with graphics. How is the speed of play? Nowadays, it's much faster. Okay. But yeah. it is But it is, But it it is. is not it's... It is not the kind of, it is very much. Because I get irritated in BG3 if I click the pixel wrong, and I get really irritated. I'm like, what the fuck? We're 2024. I can't fucking click on the character right. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, yeah, so but, we're good. But in terms of pace of play, like, I mean, because I, I I move a lot. I move really all over the freaking place. So, I so don't, I'm kind of sporadic. Well, we'll, we'll you'll, you'll see. Okay, yeah. you'll see. Um, and this but, is a game I have to. Uh, it's on Steam. I can get. Uh, yes. How do I get? How do I? How do, how do we even? How are we even playing this game? <laughs> I mean, it's on the Steam. chat has to figure out some of the details. Yes. Right, because there's there's classic. Yeah. Uh, which would be a ball boss. Steve and Derek and I are gonna be like, oh, this is gonna be hard. <laughs> uh, there's retail. Which like okay, we're we're gonna get some uh, NPCs to join us. You know, a lot of the game oh, has been no, no, no. There's a there's a burgeoning group of people who want to also make EQ one characters. Oh, and, join and up, join us. Oh, we'll have, have a whole little guild going. <laughs> oh a, shoot, yeah. And then now it sounds <laughs> kind of sweet. Uh, <laughs> now we're talking. Can we, yeah. can we get strongholds? Uh, yes, yes. Oh, I yes. love me a good stronghold. In the newer, like yes. when, when Smith uh, like decorates his interior stuff and you'll make fun of them a little bit yep, yep. that's i kind of like that one's got housing i kind of like that kind of stuff i kind of like decorating my castle i mean yeah. i kind of like it yeah sure. i kind of like a sims type well, of game you, know you guys also have <laughs> your families you i don't have my family yeah. so clearly there's this like you guys like to build your legacy make your, plant I, your flag each yeah. one retail for me is kind of like third edition dungeons and dragons at this point there's like 20 25 expansions major expansions there's so many systems in this game that like you can do so many different shit. Things that like I, I mean, I can recite off a list here, and Derek's like, I know maybe what half of that is, right? <laughs> like, like there's weapons that are artifacts that level up independently than you. Uh, you can do what's called uh, shrouds, where you basically turn yourself into an animal that has a different class, and they level it separately. So like you have your character, but then you could be a different character for a while if you want, right? Okay. Uh, there are uh, instance dungeons, but there's also live dungeons. What's in instance? So instance is like like for well, your group. Now this oh, is, okay. Yeah, yeah. You'll have to explain this technology. Yeah, now this is the way that things work, right? Like when you play a modern game, it's like if you and your people go into that dungeon, it's your dungeon for just you. It creates an instance. Of it. Original EverQuest, the dungeons just existed. Right. So like, there might be 20 people there if there are 20 people there. You could just go there. Everybody just lived in the same Oh, so world. like a true MMO. Like it is online and yeah. whatever. Yes. It, okay. Everything that's, that's in it initially was persistent. And then over time, they introduced like private I mean, instances. And that kind of sounds pretty sweet. And the reason why mm -hmm. that's is because cool. they wanted to reduce the, the, ba the bad mm -hmm. stuff. And then they want to increase the good stuff. Yeah. But whenever they do that, whenever we do that mm -hmm. in games, you know, like so for like RFC says camping was not fun. Yes, it wasn't fun, but it was also my favorite part of the game. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, like, like I, agree, like I agree, but Steven, I. Steven, you're not wrong because it was such a bad concept, and yet some of my best memories, absolutely, were doing camps, absolutely, and just shooting the shit with either yeah. friends or or with strangers, and, and, and that's the part I miss it was, so it, much it, it about was modern a games. Room. I mean, when I was, uh, to be fair, I stopped playing World of Warcraft during Mists of Pandaria. Yeah, but um, by that point in time. Steve and George had stopped playing. I was mm -hmm. kind of just playing by myself and I didn't want to like quit because I was like, oh, I like this character. So I played through, you know, all the, all the dungeons, heroic mode dungeons. Oh, and, yeah. I remember, yeah, really okay? into it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I probably said one or two yeah. words to anybody in right. my party. And in fact, you'd join a party and there wouldn't even be. Yeah. People wouldn't even say hello. They wouldn't even say hello because it doesn't matter. You don't need to communicate. Mm. But early ever quest that the pace of play was slow enough that, I mean, I mean, chat rooms were like four years old. You know, five right. years old, like chat rooms. You know what IRC is? What is it? IRC. IRC. 
Internet I, relay chat? No. Okay, basically just chat rooms. ASL, you know, in okay. sex location. Um, I, I did know that one, but I... Okay. That, but, but, you, I mean, you know what a chat room is. EverQuest. Yes, I mean, I had AOL. EverQuest, <laughs> EverQuest was basically just a chat room. Right. But you could also level yeah. up a D&D character. Yeah, every minute you got to push a button. Yeah, <laughs> and it was, it was kind of awesome. Totally. Yeah. And, I mean, so much so that they called it Evercrack. I don't know who Anonymous is. Oh, we did have Anonymous. What do we got? Uh, what I find impressive about the community isn't that we play all these games. Oh, that's from that's from Kyle. Thanks, okay. Kyle. <laughs> but we uh, have stay-at-home parents. But we have stay-at-home parents, office trade workers, oven. Even a guy. Oh, even a guy who runs the KLC logo on his virtual race car. That's all him. because. That's him. <laughs> all because. We love the hobby of gaming with our friends. Right. Yeah, I love and, it. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. We are a very diverse group, but we're all joined together, I think, by that interest in teaching RPGs as a hobby and as a space. Yeah, we, we joined for the, the teaching RPGs, but Thank then we're you, all Tom. humans. Like, So we're like, I kind of want to talk about sports today. Well, and there's were, a bunch of people that are like, oh, you, I also agree on yeah, sports. Yeah, you were talking a little bit about that, about the community, right? Yeah. It's, it's not just... TTRPGs. Yeah, I mean it's funny because uh, before we did the show, there was a poll about like you know what to talk about and talk about history stuff like that. And one of the things out there was uh, favorite Discord channels. So I was like, oh, that's a tough one. And and I was thinking about it, and it's like ironically, my favorite part of Discord is that that life section, right? We got lifestyle fam- stuff. Yeah, yeah, the family in there. We got professional elves. What you drinking? What you watching? Drinking, what you're cooking? What you're reading? Yeah. yeah. And and I I love that section because yeah. for me that's what grounds the the community right yeah. all the games and stuff yeah that's you got yeah touch grass every once in a while touch grass yep touch grass right and, and, and like, so I don't I've been listening to this guy talk about how important it is to physically touch grass with your feet yeah, not no, with shoes no hundred percent like it yeah. so to help your uh, yes. your magnetic polarizing yourself it I mean, does a lot for you freaking wild and yeah. I'm like I don't ever do that, uh, it, that many people don't and that's why we got a lot of problems I, I, just, I, I wanted to <laughs> highlight your point. So this is this is this is our this is our KOLC, uh, this is our KOLC RPG Discord. Yes. Today, me, I posted. Uh, or sorry, yesterday night. Sorry, yeah. last night. In what you're cooking? Yep. I, all I do is I post a picture <laughs> of a blue Dutch oven. Oh yeah. Okay. I was gonna rip on that for okay. being called Dutch oven. And I said very excited for my new Dutch oven, and and I didn't post anything else about it. And it's a it's an expensive Dutch oven. It's French. Then it got six. Well, you know, six likes, hundred, and then Luke says, "I think that's the one my wife has. Amazing cookware. We use it all the time." And then Edril says, "I have the same one in red. It has served me very well." And then Rocket Sheep says, "La Crusette, the brand, is phenomenal. Just be careful. You can scorch the ceramic pretty badly if it gets too hot. It's not quite the same as cast iron or steel in that ah, regard." It's good then, advice. Then this I is post- critical wait, advice wait, for proper wait. Dutch then, oven management. Then I post a picture of like the bottom half of some guy, some YouTuber, showing his scorched ah. La Crusette. <laughs> and then Anthony Ein Taxi says, "Brian Lagerstrom?" Question mark. And yes. So he recognized the YouTuber that I got. <laughs> oh, jeez. So that's great. It's just, it's well, like, that's real full circle shit. But, but, but my, my, my point is, that's on my RPG Discord. Right, right, right. No, it's it, it's a community. Right? Yeah, you know, it's right. a community of like minded people. I, um, I mean, one of my favorite in there is, uh, is uh, uh, I forget what it's called. It's, um, uh, it's about health. Health and fitness. Oh, health, uh, health and games. Yeah. Health and games. Is that what it's called? Health and games. Oh, games. games. <laughs> right. And like every 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 Flexi week. Collects. Flexi collects. There's a Monday check-in, <laughs> right? It's like, you know, where are you at with your weight, mm-hmm. right? A lot of people were like checking in and stuff like that. And it was just, it was so good. That fell off for a bit in recent <laughs> recent times. <laughs> well, yeah, it comes and goes, but. But <laughs> but, you know, but it's an active channel. It's yeah. an active channel. Mm-hmm. And, and that thread, you know, it comes and goes. But it was a very important thread because it was great because there's people who were doing a great job. And it was awesome, right? Because you can give them recognition and keep encouraging them. And I'll fucking tell you, you're a trainer, right? You know how hard it is to like, you know, get people over that that hurdle, right? Um, and then when people were having those rough days, right? Oh, you yeah. know, like like even a legend like Boothby, who like could like lift this table, you know, he's like, Oh yeah, you know, I, I only did, you know, I don't know, seven hundred reps today. I just I, I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't on my game. I failed you all, you know, like 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 people go in there and they're down and they just get the encouragement, like, nah, That's- man, you're you guys rip on me for my hype because it, I mean I get it, but being a personal trainer, the hype is sure. yeah the I hype mean, has to be there right. I uh, that's why I, my friend was always like you be you be a really good personal trainer you just you're able to get people like getting them going right I and like, I, I I mean I think that's you know that oh, oh by the way do we have we have oh. another tip uh, from Sorel uh, Sorel I, didn't leave a message but thank you Sorel for yeah the $10 let us tip. let us know if you want and to more say something. importantly Sorel put us at one hundred fifty dollars oh. for our just supporting the uh, the Knights in Exile fund um, which Ooh. you should explain what. 
this why because yeah. someone did ask earlier, or is this the last stream? No, no, it's yeah. not the last stream. We're just the studio <laughs> show's is, canceled. Yeah. Okay, well, I, so, we never explained what yeah. was happening. So, I mean, let's let's be real here for a moment. <laughs> um, there was a time where the channel needed this studio mm -hmm. because the only thing that we did was film us playing RPGs. Yes, and when, at the time when I signed this lease three years ago, the actual plays that especially. was actual play. And those and don't know, do well on. Well, uh, they don't do as well virtual. They, they just don't do as well virtually, and quite frankly, uh, you know, uh, I don't have the space to have people over, and I need a place that I can leave all the cameras set up. But even, I really think it's virtual, like because we could do this virtually if we want to. But it, it doesn't I mean, have the heart. Lot, it doesn't I mean, have the feel that it does. I, I completely agree with you. That being said, there's plenty of people there's, who that, do I mean, have there. incredible, amazing games, and they play online. Yes. But I agree with you. I agree. Um, uh, regardless, for our energy and for who we are, yes. we are better when we're Like together. doing Root was awesome. Right. Because right. I'm feeding off. I mean, Smith's like <laughs> trying to kill me sometimes. And I'm, like, I'm feeding it. I'm feeling it. I'm like, damn, <laughs> Smith's bringing us some good points right I, now. I, I think he really wants to kill me. <laughs> I think well, he's going to kill me. <laughs> you know, and, and so I had this because I had to have it. And then I signed a three-year lease. And we wanted to make the most out of it. Yes. And you know me, I'm a perfectionist and I wanted to be great. And I was like, look, if we're gonna be playing and I wanna play in person, I wanna make I wanna, I wanna make it look cool. I wanna make it uh, an impressive site. I and think I, you and, succeeded. And we, we have had, we've <laughs> had, we have had a number of patrons who have come out to see it. Um, Vin was here from Australia, go figure. Yes. Um, GM Scott has been here, Donnie has been here. Um, we've had a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, of guests on the show mm -hmm. and people come in. And it's a really cool space. That being said, it is very expensive. It is. And you know, the channel never, like, you know, it's not like, oh, the channel's making $100,000 a year, you know, like, or like where it's like, oh, we can just spend this money. It's like, no, I mean, I'm not saying that I didn't want it to do that. Mm. You know, maybe even to the point where I go, well, you know, hey, here's my two weeks notice. You know, the, the channel is is now my main. Yeah, that'd be great. No, we, all, we all have jobs. So. We all have jobs. You know, and <laughs> I'm like, hell, if you guys want to quit, I'll hire you because the channel's making so much money. Yeah. That would be awesome. It never did that. And part of the reason it never did that is because uh, we never sold out. And I never sold out. We just we just haven't made our play for fifth edition yet. Correct. So. Well, I mean, you know, and again, if, you, if you're a fan of this channel, you know that during the OGL, I said exactly one thing, and it was on a stream about 13th Age. <laughs> My talking, favorite you part. You talked about Orc, right? I was talking it was about, about the Orc. The orc. Yeah. And it I love where everyone orc. dropped off. Oh, yeah. That, 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 that screen. <laughs> it was like a cliff. It was like a cliff. There was like 500 people there to listen to me talk about like what I thought about the orc versus the OGL. Yeah, like, and then when I was like, okay, that's not what this stream was actually about. I said I would talk about it for half an hour. Now let's talk about 13th Age. And it was just like, wow, you know, down to like 100 or 80 people. But correct. And uh, uh, K. Stein, uh, Stein, Stein Juan brings up a good point. We're, we're not talking like this. We're doing a recap video about the history of what we've been through because a lot of people are new subscribers and they haven't. Maybe they haven't heard about how Derek started this whole uh, escapade, and now we're here, and it's like, okay, now this is another milestone in our journey where the studio is going to come down. These walls are going to have to be put in storage for a little bit, and and what does that actually mean? And and what? So it's not we're not going away. It's just that we want to reminisce about the good times, the bad yeah. times, and everything. So. Uh, that was a good one, Steve. Steve, what do you, oh, what do, you, what do, you, what do, you do? He said, when is this channel just going to be heroes? Um, Trevco. Honestly, that's, a, that's an interesting cut there. Don't uh, you have that person on your stream? Uh, uh, Trevco. Not anymore, uh, I guess. Anymore. <laughs> Trevco with $3 says, this is why we need Nikon. Trevco, listen, oh, buddy. We can talk fucking, about that. <laughs> fucking, you're preaching to the choir here, yeah. buddy. Um, you know, I, I busted my ass to try to get Nikon to happen this year, and it just cannot happen. It, There's too many hotels weddings. Hotels don't want money. Well, they don't want money. No, it's just there's so many weddings. There's just so many weddings. I think I still think there's just a tremendous backlog. Who's getting married? In this Dude, no, it, you, you have to book it over a year in advance. I know my cousin's getting married next year. Yeah, so Let's just read the book. And so they all told us my we need to do it in the spring. But obviously, we're not going to be able to get the spring this year. Sure, in you know, because it's this, spring because, now. Well, I'm saying, but even a couple months ago. Yeah. So we're we're trying to do it for next year. That being said, I will say. If you're a member of the Patreon, you know, and you can make it out to Origins. Trevco will be at Origins. Okay, sweet. Trevco well, is, the, is, is the one that uh, I was talking about uh, playing Magic and whatnot. So, yeah, Trevco is really. Oh, yeah, you, Trevco had all the packs. Yep. And you yep. couldn't believe that they had the packs. Yep, yep, yep. Which yep. is just because Bob's a fan. Yeah. Trevco but, is supposed to. Oh, I, th I think they. I can't remember if they bought their tickets, but not the hotel, or they bought the hotel, but not the tickets yet. It was it was one of the other. I think it was Trevco. Well, regardless. Yeah. I mean, obviously. we was to be there. Obviously, we won't be able to play games with everybody, but we can certainly hang out and say hi. But I'm also encouraging our patrons to get together and organize games, you know? Yes, because we, like, we're going to try to figure that out in the know, next couple months. Because by and large, I mean, these are people you probably have had some interactions mm -hmm. with, and so they're not complete strangers. And there's still that kind of like, I mean, I, I mean, and this is just me being real here, and I think you guys can agree with this. Even the slight barrier of $3 or $5 a month oh, yeah. 
keeps out a huge amount of assholes. 100%. 100%. Because when you have a public free discord, it just gets filled with trolls, bigots, racists, I mean, the horrible people, people who feel like they can talk shit and do nothing and there's no consequences for them. Yes. And there isn't. And they have no stake in the game. Even $3, you'll still get that. But like, if it was free, it's all you would get. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially, especially if someone just wanted to troll you. Uh, correct. Because right, trolling yeah. you would be fun to right. them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so I think that – and so our community has always been valuable enough to people that nobody wants to get kicked or banned. And so like when you come together, it's like, well, hey, instead of just trying to find random people to play games with at Origins or Gen Con, you already have – a game of yeah. you know of Dragon Bane and a game of of Mothership lined up with people that you kind of already know yeah. like that could be a really cool and em empowering yeah. thing. it is also just so cool to put I mean obviously I I knew what GM Scott looked like because his avatar before I saw him but it was cool to like hang out with GM Scott in real uh, and 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 in reverse and 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 everybody that we got to see uh, last year we saw uh, Sharky Sharky DNA and. Um, Gosh, who else did we see last year? We saw well, uh, Steven. Uh, Sean, was there. Sean, oh, Sean, I might be like getting some drinks with. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, me and Sean might go drinking one night. <laughs> um, so you know, we we yeah, we had we had. We had I just remember Sean uh, walking with just books that he kept buying. <laughs> by the way, because I'll forget. Uh, those of you who do run games uh, at Origins, those still count for tickets. So make sure you uh, log <laughs> out with Bob. Yep, 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 yep. Oh yeah, it's oh, a community yeah. game. That's a community game. Just in person. Um, <laughs> I was cool. Oh, what a, what a bastard. I literally stood outside with Steven talking about his book, uh, the Isle, uh, the, the Indigo that? Isles, mm -hmm. outside the taco place while okay. you guys were so, out doing so whatever. I remember flipping through that book in the most expensive game of Oath ever played <laughs> by man. I was like, damn, this is a good book. Was that, Steven, that must have been before I passed out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, he does. They say I'm kidding. Um, but, um, but anyways, my point is we have never, uh, you know, this this channel never really exploded in popularity, um, and that's okay. We're, we're totally fine with that. But I mean, it's a mission statement. It, you say to that, not but we're successful. actually obviously way more popular than ninety nine percent of other YouTube. What channels. I mean to say is we are not so popular <laughs> not that I can afford, or not um, that, not that, we, that we should be. And and my landlord wants more money. Yeah. Because a new owner bought the building, right? And they're trying to get their money back. Uh, of course. And so my three year lease is up. And like the the guy downstairs, he 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 the the smoke shop. Oh, he, he has like a fifteen year lease. He locked in a fifteen. Oh, year with lease. the old owner. Well the old owner. Yeah, exactly. And he was even telling me, he goes, "Man, they're not fucking getting any money from me." You know, like basically, uh, like smart what, what's he pay? A hundred bucks a month? Yeah, so? I mean, like, he pays more because it's a front face. But like, yeah. he doesn't pay that much more than we pay. Okay, which is ridiculous. And yeah. He's got it for fifteen years. But my point is, um, I, I can't justify paying more money for this place well, that, that we, we use like two to three times we a use month. two to three times and a month. in addition yeah. right like i assume it's still a three-year lease and like right you know god right. willing we're gonna get you a house at some point uh, oh, yeah so it. so that's what the goal is i don't right. want to just tell them the goal yeah so the goal well okay a couple of things number one the the, the, sh the channel is not ending by any yes. stretch of the imagination um we're still going to stream tuesdays and thursdays uh there may be a transitional period on on tuesdays you know there have mm -hmm. been times in the past when i've just streamed on tuesdays and thursdays but i definitely like uh the group atmosphere so well and this is also why we wanted to get some of the virtual things right like part of it wasn't just us being funny with you know yeah, yeah. should we play bg3 or everquest part of it was like that's something we can do that's entertaining and do it virtually right because for a while there i mean we're gonna be moving breaking this set down we have to move out so there's yeah it's hard to see but these are like there's like a lot of panels here yeah so <laughs> a lot um, of a lot of lights Derek likes and there, to buy. There's things this bitch can get in two days so i think he's uh he's well, a little ambitious two full days um, oh I, you've never seen me move some stuff <laughs> I, I love move i love picking stuff up yeah it doesn't say it's all yeah, well, we can't break them I mean, you gotta be careful with this we gotta unscrew everything yeah he's saying uh, we phone. can't bob it we can't bob again it. i don't i can't guarantee that it's all gonna be one piece but i'll move it <sighs> so anyways um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm careful don't so worry my goal was of course to buy a house and then we could just move the studio into my house because i'm a single guy and i can just literally set up fake walls yes. in a big enough room and right. be like hey instead of a living room i knock down that wall and it <laughs> make a studio and you, also you, you, you need to be careful when you start dating again like <laughs> like no, when no, she no, walks no, no, downstairs he's, he's gonna he's establish his boundaries <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a living room it's a studio you just have to deal with that uh voinupala is dropping out good night to you as well good night good night <laughs> um so yeah so basically we are going to try to figure out some way that we can 
still keep some energy going and maybe even get some live streams. Mm -hmm. yep. They might not be as in a cool location, but you know, a lot of us have been You say you say not cool, but I, I spent a lot of time there. No, I know. <laughs> I'm just saying that like, you know, this is obviously the pinnacle of what I want. Yes. Um we'll take a step back. Yeah, and folks folks I can mean, see where we I mean, does do the, our real playing. Does the content itself change? No. No. But you know, for the me, backdrop's gonna for change. For me, the presentation has always been amazing. But one thing that YouTube has taught me about the community at large, not just of TTRPGs, but just everybody, is that nobody gives a shit about quality. This is true. Well, uh, unless it's audio. Well, even then, they're pretty. They're pretty forgiving. <sighs> no, what they do, they don't care about anything. And when you have good audio, they compliment you on it. Yes, that's probably because everybody else is like it's everything shit. So we just accept everything right, shit. Right. That's what they do. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I I I thought that our attention to detail, our, our incredible lighting, camera work, and audio would propel us to great heights. Of no, it's all about thumbnails. It, it turns out it was all about thumbnails yeah. and seven-minute videos. <laughs> yeah. um, Did you see uh, Mark T's comment, the first comment of the uh, chat? It was like, you should have said how the, o the OGL, like, uh, made you to leave your studio. Yeah. Like ha Hasbro shutting down yeah. my studio. Yeah, yeah. Sends the Pinkertons next. Yeah. <laughs> then you would have got some clicks. <laughs> First five minutes said, no, none of that's happening. But we've answered the question. Mark, you are, Mark, Mark, you are great. That yeah. is correct. Mark, Derek says, Derek is a conundrum. Now, you may have heard Aaron before say something along the lines of, Derek, why do you – basically, why do you try so hard to not have fun or something like that? I mean, you put a lot of effort into it. Well, no, but like Mark is right. I, I care nothing about succeeding, but I still want to do a really good job. Mm -hmm. So it's like any success that, well, that actually have. makes complete sense. The only so, reason okay. this channel started, <laughs> the only reason this channel started is because I made Derek. Right. I made Derek press record. He did not want to do it. He he sure. would he did not he still hates episode one because of how the, it looks oh, because of the audio quality. Yeah, and then he's the, like I would I mean I, I want one's kind of bad. I mean I get it. I actually don't, I, mean, I don't disagree. It's great I don't in disagree. context that that yes. was the beginning. But objectively, over I, time, correct, it was not great. I totally agree. But if it was just up to Derek, it would never have been off the ground because he would have been like, it's not perfect yet. And to be fair, Derek's larger concern isn't that episode one wasn't great. Yes. It's that everyone goes to episode one. That That is true. They see whatever current stream we're doing. They yes. go, whoa, these guys seem pretty cool. I wonder how they began. They go to the first There's one. There's a lot of beer bottles it's like, and one like, camera. <laughs> well, even before that, you get this five-minute clip where Derek's like, welcome <laughs> to Pathfinder. <laughs> Our heroes will go on a great adventure that today. Is, that is exactly what I did. <laughs> Join us as they prepare to fight against that the was rise sweet. of the Rune Lords, which is the biggest fucking lie of all time. Such bullshit. There's one. It's not the rise of the Rune Lords. Oh, wait. Lord. Spoiler alert. There's Jeez one. Louise. One. Karzu. Rune Lord. Does he, does he rise at all? Was he already risen? You know, no. He rises at the plot appropriate <sighs> time. And then he is risen. It'd be like it'd be like Jesus came back, but he couldn't get out of the cave. Speaking <laughs> of like, ah, speaking of rising, as far as rising at the right time, Vin just rose into this chat right now. Oh, okay. oh, what shit. Are, what are, oh super chat. He said, "All right, enough of this BS. Where's the dagger heart? I I, I think it's I don't know if he's saying dagger IP. AP. Yeah, going to be streamed from. Also, hey guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't actually played dagger heart yet. Um, I, I'd be interested to to see how it plays. Oh, yeah, I play with, with, with you guys. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah. We should do. I that. think it's gonna be a good game. Um. Vin, I don't know. I mean, I mean, you know, honestly, part of the problem is, and like, this is a compliment, big compliment to you. This oh is, shoot, this is a known fact for you. Oh, I think running games, playing games, playing a variety of games, playing with a bunch, bunch of different people. I cannot speak on your GM skills, but what I can say is, I think as a player, you've become much more um, interesting. Oh yeah, I would say that. Like, and I'm being very selfish here. Like, like elf Ivar. If you watch like, my Rise of the Rune Lords, Rise correct. of the Rune Lords, and you would, and you have not seen my elf Ivar, correct? <laughs> you'd be like, that's well, the no. same person that played Rise of the well, Rune Lords. When I, when I compare, when I compare, even Forbidden when Lands, I compare Rise of the Rune Lords to Root. <laughs> yes. But then when I compare Forbidden Lands, uh, 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 sorry, AV. Forbidden Lands, the uh, second part of Abomination Vaults. Yes. Um, and Legend of the Five Rings to the first part of Abomination Vaults, right? When we were originally playing on VTT. Mm. So you you have become much more interesting. And that is because of one, playing with you guys more, but two, also playing and reading more with the with the community. Mm -hmm. Like I'm obviously I joked with you. You were like, What's this Dragon Bait game? I'm like, Yeah, I'm I'm I bought it. I'm I've read it. And then there's also like uh, I played in a random a random game with some patrons. I've I played uh Basin for the first time. You're like, whoa. I didn't even tell you to do that. <laughs> yeah, Derek was like, whoa, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I haven't played that game. Yeah. Um, I, but I just jump in random games with people because I'm like, that sounds awesome. Yeah. And I want to I want to get better 
because I actually really enjoy playing with you guys on Fridays. Like, it's really fun. Well, that's good. And uh, hopefully you do that. I, otherwise, why are you there if you don't? Obligation out. <laughs> uh, it's uh, supposed uh, to be fun. Leave my kids. No, I don't know. No, I, mean, I, I know George doesn't enjoy it. He's just like, he's just, like I don't know. This is this is a lot I'm stuck with in this life. Yeah, so. he's, like, he's like, it's either this or sit at home alone. So yeah. I guess I'll choose this. But some days he seems so, like he regrets that. Too. Yes. So again, I, <laughs> he's I, definitely I, reconsidering it. I've had a great time with you guys playing on Fridays and with the group of your you guys' friends, which are also my friends. Some of them obviously have been my friends for a while too and i want to do better because i actually feel that there's a lot of merit to some of these systems and i'm like when i'm playing pathfinder 2 and i'm like i move i move i attack i'm like i'm not doing anything justice by just being this like mechanical beast like just doing it i'm like i need to do better slave to the mouth and, and smith always talks about this like don't come to the table and not read, read anything like that's such a disrespect to your to your sure, sure, to your sure. GM, I'm like okay. Well, well now I'm, to your other players too. Well, yeah, so I'm like I'm gonna read Dragon Bane. I'm mm. gonna read Forbidden Lands before we even play this system. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, oh, that is a rule. Let me look that up. I'm like, I know this, right. and it feels kind of empowering as a player to know this. It's kind of weird. I get it. It's empowering to yourself, but also I think that you want to talk about power. agency. There yeah. you go. But also like, I feel like because I've been able to play with these community games, play with these great people of the patron, um, um, um. Again, all these all these uh, different people that are that are here in this community, I've been able to um, develop myself, grow myself, and then um, be a better player. Like you said, advance the games L five R with right. you guys. So I'm like, okay, well, and, and because that, of that, I mean, that, the community and, that you guys are building, right? And that's not just exactly, us. You guys are also building this community. <laughs> that's exactly the problem. Yeah. Oh, problem. Yes. Oh, because, okay. damn it, Bob. I well, fuck. I fucked no, up again. <laughs> because see, unlike many GMs. Okay, like, yes, I want my players, I guess, to have a fun time. But I also am there to have fun. Mm. Right? Oh, you so want to have fun. I want to be entertained <laughs> right. by my players, right? I know there's a lot of GMs who are very much just like, I just enjoy setting up the best chess board and then just being like, Watching my, you know, imaginations go into play. I like Those are people who like Final Fantasy 12, right? Or you there's, program your or there's the other side up. that just want to, they want their story to be unfolded, right, exactly. which they enjoy that thing that right. they built. And I enjoy, yeah. I enjoy that. So like during the root campaign, you know, a lot of people would find it hard to keep up with somebody like this guy. Right. But playing with Smith is a good training exercise. You, but you did, <laughs> I don't know how I should take you that. acquitted yourself oh, very think, well. Yeah. You know, and, 100%. And, and I was finding myself entertained yeah. by you. So this is getting back to... Yeah, there, when, there is great is getting, back and forth. Smith, it wasn't all just murder either. Right. When Smith made me change, uh, like my, when I was going to go full snake cult, yeah. um, I mean, I was going full steam. Yeah. And he was like, no, no, you, I'm going to change, what was the call? Change your desk? What was the thing? Uh, there was a way you could get, get a, a uh, not will point, but um, you get XP by like making someone uh, make a narrative truth, basically. And I had to do that. I had to make a decision to say, okay, I'm going to follow you now because that's the path of good. Oh, it was some move. I don't remember what it was. I, it was a move. Yeah. And I had to do that. So you got like a, a thing and we we did that. And I was like, wow, that was really cool. But I, I had to change the whole PC direction because I was about to die. Mm -hmm. And you made me do this. If you don't, if you don't fuck, stop fucking with the snake called, start saving some heroes here. Like we're going to, we're going to need to need to save the civilians. And I was like, okay. And that was, that was interesting to me. Right. Like, yeah, I had to change right so, on the spot because of Smith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but to Vince's point, the problem is that, you know, live play or let's plays or actual plays like, you know, that's a high bar for me. Yeah. And I want to be entertained and I want, you know, <laughs> people at home to be, you know, honey, Oh, we got a tip? Oh, oh there he is. There's Donnie. There's Donnie. There's Donnie. There's Donnie. There's Donnie. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, Donnie is my boy. Um, Donnie says, well, Donnie's my Donnie's my woodworker. I know. He's like crafter. Yeah, he's, I love Donnie. Um, <laughs> Donnie says, first rise of the Rune Lords, now the studio. <laughs> what do we have to tip to shut it down? <laughs> Donnie, if you tip... <laughs> 25 bucks. I'll delete the channel right now. Oh, don't don't even do it. Uh, one because he'll do it and two you'll you will oh, do I'll it. Absolutely do it. I was going to say 50, but I wanted to make it even easier for Danny. He wants to shut down a specific no, channel. He says, he says, yeah, he wants to shut off remastered decompression. No, he wants to shut down remastered decompression. Rules. I, shit, I might do it for 10. Having a I cold, might pay Donnie 10. Having a cold in memory have of a the cold, Having a cold one in memory of the studio. Mm. Yeah, well, Donnie is one of our uh, long, longtime patron supporters uh. and one of our current legends. Yes. But Donnie's also uh, been been to the studio. I, I, I loved I, I love Donnie playing in the um in the Christmas stream. <laughs> oh, God, those are so much fun. He reminds stream. you that he can delete it himself. Actually, perfect. That, you don't even need to just go do it, buddy. Uh, oh, he's a mod. He's a, he's a high ranking mod. What's going to happen? Are you going to get modded? Do you, do, you, do, you remember, do you remember the day when I 
just straight up deleted the Pathfinder 2 channel? Yeah, that's why we have uh, uh, remastered decompression. <laughs> I know, but do you remember, like, people were like, because I didn't even archive it. No, no, it was just straight Derek, up. Derek gives no shits. I, I just deleted Well, you had already renamed it <laughs> into Dumpster Fire. Correct. And then, and then I was like, this has gotten out of control. And so I just like torched it. Yeah, just and there it. was like a countdown. And everybody was like, this feels just like when like an MMO is about to get down. shut down. Yeah. You know, we're all just waiting for the moment. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, uh, but anyways, but uh, yeah, Donnie, that was one of my favorite KLC moments. Because that was the pop at Christmas carol. Yep. And, and we everybody had bingo. Uh, yep. We were playing bingo cards. Oh, we got to do that again. And people the bingo could, cards were legit. I mean, look, our fucking channel's amazing. The bingo, like, like, <laughs> I was telling my wife about the bingo I think cards. Occasionally, you can admit it. Every, no, the, bingo, the bingo cards were actually pretty legit. Like, what kind of fucking channel does that? I mean, the bingo cards were I mean, like a chef's kiss. You know, I mean, obviously, there have been some scheduling delays, but like, we're building somebody a $5,000 table. Like, uh, in 2022, I think I gave away $1,500 of role-playing games. and, and So, yeah, the bank account was literally zero. 2023, 2023 was a lot better financially. 2022 was you just pushing money towards everyone right. in the community. Well, 20, you got to invest. 2023, we I did. I liked it. 2023, it was fun. We definitely, we definitely made a profit. But um, it was, you know, whatever it was, a couple hundred bucks. Um, yeah, at the end of 2022, the... The New Year's stream, you were just giving out yeah. RPG books yeah. to everyone, yeah, basically. RPG oh, that was, I'm sure people but love that. We had we had giveaways. That, that was actually kind of fun. If <laughs> you got bingo, you got prizes, and one of the bingo squares was Donnie, who was playing a he was playing the Nutcracker. That's right, right? Because you were Elf on a Shelf. Yes, and you were a rogue. I was a yeah, a, a rogue, a rogue yeah. assassin, rogue yep. thief. You were Elsa. Yep, the doll. Who you, wanted were, to, you were a cold theme source for elements. Yours was sorcerer. yours was definitely not safe for work. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then, I don't know what you're talking about. Damien, <laughs> Damien was uh, Damien was a Call of Cthulhu plushie yes. who was actually Cthulhu. Yes. So he was a bard. Yes, of because, course. Because a cult. of course, a cult. And then Vin <laughs> was a because it's Vin. Oh, we had five people in that. Game? He wanted to be. Oh, Vin, wow. Vin was Mr. Potato Head, the thaumaturge. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Donnie was a fighter. And yes. He was the Nutcracker soldier, and he had a great pick with like the super spec pick crit and the bingo spot was Donnie had to do like over 125 I think it was 100 something 100? 150 damage 100? or something it like was, that Donnie yeah, do you remember but well that's, he crushed it but he does remember how much damage he did <laughs> and it was and by the way so Yes, Kyle. That was also with the Kawaii leveling when the tips kept coming in and then the, the stream. Kept no, getting... that oh, was no, that no, was the, the uh, that was the Leshy, Leshy stream. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no. yeah. So what happened in this stream? This was one of, this is all leading up to this incredible moment. Obviously, oh, the plan I'm, re was... I'm reading the chat. He wrote the word bitches in there. And so it doesn't pop up when I'm reading. Um, <laughs> so oh, hey, 156 damage. Boom. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you the go. The best part about that, which is, is not is, which is and when Donnie got because everyone's like, please. You know, because that's like the one spot they needed for their bingo. Yes. But like the best part was the best part was the whole plan was you guys were all dissatisfied toys. Yes. Or wanted to take over Christmas. Oh, no, I was or, still okay, dissatisfied. Okay. Or having sex with a snowman. Or having sex Whatever. With that's why I was dissatisfied. But, but the point was to kill Santa. Right. Right. Yes. And kill well, Santa. my kids were very concerned about the stream. Right. And remember, remember, you I let got, your kids remember, watch that stream. No, no, no. I told them the concept. Oh, okay. I don't know. They did not watch the stream. They just they, you, I knew the concept. You know, of the stream. Like, that goes up there of like Bob's birthday bashes. Do not let your family watch. Even I mean, in, Root's a little. Even uh, Root's a little. Root too. <laughs> even in even in a KOLC pop it themed one shot, this was this was a bit of a sandbox. And so you guys had never gone yeah. to the reindeer stables. So you never got to fight, you know, Dasher Dancer, mm. uh, Prancer Victor, that's right, that's Tom right. Cupid, Donner Blitzen, and Rudolph, who I had made into this massive thing. So during the final fight, when you guys were fighting Santa Claus and you were kind of kicking his ass and he was about to go down and Donnie still had not crit, Donnie, who was playing the game, right. Tipped like one hundred fifty dollars <laughs> to the naughty list, right? So that something bad would happen to him. And I was like, "Well, shit, Donnie, you get to pick. What, what do you want to have happen?" And he's like, "Let's have Rudolph join the fight." So uh, then Rudolph busts through the side of the door <laughs> of Santa's uh, Santa's cabin, and Rudolph, who is much bigger, a badass. Yeah, he's, he's kind of like I, I call him like the War Mech, you know, from Final Fantasy. Is 1. that one on the channel? Is that one only available for? That's on the that's a, okay, that's it's on the channel. Okay, and then. The fight went long enough, and he was able. If to you crit, want some extreme crit. content, and go watch I that. Do think Alia, I think Alia got the bingo. I did like. Um, I do think Alia pumpkins. Got he said that that year you you sent him three books. Derek sent me three books that year. I joined. That was a good year. Yeah, a lot of I remember we. I remember writing in one of pumpkins pumpkins books because we did the monthlies. Oh, yeah. 
You did the drive well, through RPG. Derek would for show the end. up with like like on a Friday game a with stack a stack of, of things. We'd be like, all right, boys, start signing. You know, we'd be like, oh. so if you got one of those, you got the same message from me, very inspirational. <laughs> and then you got like get fucked from Smith in a bunch of different a bunch of different versions of <laughs> get different language. Not not no. You, you wrote something Mandarin. About get the fuck. Get the fuck. <laughs> um, nah, fuck you. Uh, but um, yeah, so. Uh, what book did we send you, Pumpkin? Well, pumpkin like those years. I, I think one of them was L five R for well, some reason. Well, Pumpkin probably won. He probably and, and, and he, he probably won, he probably won a monthly. Yep. Uh, a contest. quarterly maybe. He might have won a quarterly contest, mm-hmm. and then he probably won the annual contest. Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so, well, but this year I think we're doing a couple. We're doing. We're for sure doing Call of Cthulhu. For that, October, that is, that is the plan. I would hope that we could yeah. do another Christmas dream. That was fun. Well, well, well I guess okay. the question is: Do we want to do Call of what? Cthulhu with respect, or mm. do we want to uh, bring in our usual cast of characters? We should probably let our patrons yeah. so decide that. Self-confessed cynic says. So essentially, that was all to say that the Daggerheart LP will be streamed from a VTT. Kind of what I was getting at, because mm. what I was going to say is that's true. It is tough to find players who can hang with these guys <laughs> and be entertaining <laughs> to me and entertaining to the wider audience. All right. <laughs> That, that's accurate. You, call you called him Penguin. <laughs> I did. Um, Which is still. Oh yeah, you had the fate book. I think I dissed you for that too. People, yeah. were, people still to this day like put a little penguin emoji to pumpkin every once in a while. So, you know, I, I mean, listen, pumpkin's come a long way. I feel like he's earned his own name. He's he's graduated from PF two. He's playing yeah. all, all sorts of RPGs now, and he's reading a ton. Oh yeah, he's legit. Yeah, he's <laughs> elevated. Oh yeah, he's doing the um. I'm, I'm actually doing that. The anim, like the Japanese Japan like Golden Memorial week. week, the Golden Week, and I'm going to be running L5R during that week. Jeez. You say this, but you have no idea how to run L5R. You've played. This is like a month away. I'll I'll get it by then. That's a bold statement, my friend. I just got to run the the beginner thing. That's still a bold statement, my friend. Wow. We gonna do it. We gonna do it for the the patrons. <laughs> All right. Well, outside of <laughs> Good that. Luck. You know, it's, 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 you know, I want people who can be entertaining. I want people who are excitable. I want yes. people who are, you know, going to create fun and things, not just for me, but for my, you mm-hmm. know, but for the audience, for you, mm-hmm. for you at home. Um, and so it's, you know, I, I it, we have some, we've had some great guests come on and be on the shows, but a lot of times, you know, they kind of live in your guys' shadows. And so, you know, one of the challenges with doing another actual play or doing another live play, whether it's Call of Cthulhu or Fabula Ultima or Daggerheart is finding the right people that I can pair with you guys mm-hmm. that, you know, that we can have a bit of back and forth. Because, we'll just we'll fly in Vin for every yeah, session. Like, for example, the Dread Game was amazing. That was a great game. <sighs> that Dread Game was fun, right, Vin? You know, that, that was, was fun. That was a lot of fun because you had somebody who could roll. And nothing like Dread. And it was absolutely <laughs> nothing like Dread for a variety of reasons, not not the least of which is that Smith had a third edition character. I love how like like Vid wasn't sure how far I went, and then he realized how far oh, I when went. You, when you pulled out the character sheet, it was. A but I think moment. he he was like, "This is," he's like, "Smith is crazy than Discord, and that's Discord Smith." But is Discord Smith really Smith mm-hmm. in real life? And he's like, "Oh shit, that's real right. Smith that, in real life." That's all Vin kept saying. Remember that? He kept, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yes, you won't believe this, but they really are like that. <laughs> like it's like it's, it's actually kind of crazy that it, it actually is like that. because oh, you know you always assume well, people are put on a face. And to be fair, we do some things, right? We try not to say fuck in the first five minutes. That's true. We do try to do that, um, though it doesn't always happen. We, we try. <laughs> we cut out a lot of the really offensive stuff. Sure. Save that for Fridays. Save that for Fridays. <laughs> uh, uh, that's about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we, we, we try to make sure that it's a little bit more PG-13. The hell is that? What is that noise? I don't know. Go look. It's got to be someone in the parking lot. Yeah. Revving up a car? Bob's going to go check. <laughs> what is, is that, that noise? Is it picking up on the audio? I don't think so. I don't so. know. I think we might be okay. Oh, it's, it's a couple. It's a what? A couple of bros with their hot rods in the parking lot. Ah, okay. What is, what is that? Like a lawnmower engine? Yeah. Uh, one of them has his car open, and he... I'm not going to rip on myself. I mean, this, this sounds he's got, like- a, he's got a man bun like myself, <laughs> and he's got a spoiler on the back. I'm not joking. He's got a spoiler on the back of his... He's got a spoiler? Like on a little, little four-door, and uh, the other guy's got his car open, so I don't know what's wow. going on, and All they're right. talking. Yeah, that, 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 that motor thrum sounded like, like you know... Like my my sock toothbrush went around. Yeah, that's what know. it sounded like for us too. Yeah, right. I don't know what it sounds like then. It must be really cool uh, out there. Trevco said we could totally have heard it. Okay, okay so well, you guys. All right, well, it's, well, it's, right, stopped. it's stopped now. It's stopped yeah, now, yeah, yeah. So. Um, the bulldozer out front. But so, but yeah. So again, I, I really like that. Um, that you know, um, that that's the thing that like finding people who can who can hang with you guys because it's it's a lot of fun and we get some really good experiences from it. And you know, I, and so 
That, that's probably oh, been We can always take a down notch and Bob and I can start drinking regularly during the show again. <laughs> oh, that, then we get Bob's birthday bash. Do you remember that? Coming up soon. You might not I, remember I remember that. parts of it. You may not remember that. Because I remember were, I started at like level two or something. Were, it was 10 shots to level two and you started the game at level two before we started playing. Was it 10? I thought it was five shots. I, was I just five. remember he had- Maybe it was level three. I know for <laughs> sure. level three. <laughs> what I do know is there were five glasses in front with margarita and all of them. And he was like, we're ready? And I'm like, he's like, all right, what level am I? I'm like, oh, is that what we're playing? Is that how we're doing this today? I mean, no, and no, I remember no, we no. had to switch over yeah, the peach Derek snaps. The rules. You know, I was just playing. Yes, this, what Aaron did. Was he, the, no, Aaron, this oh, was exactly. He meta that this shit was too. Dark, this was exactly Dark Council. Yes. Right, where it's like, well, Derek made the rules. So the rule is, if you do however many shots, you gain <laughs> a level. I'm going fishing for willpower. So I'm, I'm going to go fishing for willpower. So <laughs> Casey says the Marg bottle didn't stand a chance. Yeah, I mean, we. Oh, I had to bring out the peach the peach schnapps over there, the peach Crown Royal, because the shots were going to be too strong to that do that. Peach Crown Royal was nice. very delicious. I think um, it's still over there since Bob's birthday bash. Uh, I think it's still fair, there. I, I would put a Mark bottle yeah, away yeah. <laughs> every episode of Quest. So, Well, that was just so you could deal with Quest. <laughs> that was just to get through it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wolf says, I wish there was a Patreon level slash channel where we could get on that super offensive Friday content. Interesting. But you, you know, we've this talked is, about this been, doing this it. This has been talked about. <laughs> But I don't know if there's a. I don't know how to do this without being demonetized uh, yeah. or canceled. Yeah, or, or it would never be on YouTube. Um, I mean, it, we cannot be. On, there's no yeah, way yeah, it could let, be on YouTube. Let me be very clear about something. You know, uh, Bob Smith, myself, our friends. I mean, we are all very, very respectful and yeah, you yeah. know, good people. But that being said, you, I'm on the risky edge of respect. You're a little bit more risque. Yeah, but Smith's it, actually very respectful of know. people. But Friday nights he can let loose. Well, 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 let <laughs> Friday nights more about like the shock, right? Like, well, the yeah. jokes are more about the shock. Yeah, it's not yeah. like like oh, yeah, like we're offensive. And this is how we yeah. feel. Like, it's more of like I'm going to say something like this to see how shocked anyone well, else. Let is. me give you an example. Because most people are not. Where some, at that and, table. And some, and you somebody, are sometimes. No, no. I, I, sometimes <laughs> somebody had a comment that was like, "You need to clip the succubi story from when we were we were telling okay. the story," like. Oh, 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 just of the AV dungeon, right? No, that, no, no, Derek's no. Succubi story. My Succubi oh, story. Oh, the one you told about the other day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a story that normally probably wouldn't get told on the channel. <laughs> right. But we were feeling- We had to be like- We were a little loosey-goosey about Casey it. Casey brings a good point. Smith talked about pleasuring his wife last week on YouTube and didn't kill the channel. That's true. <laughs> well, but that in and of itself is, is Smith and his business. Like Derek talking about his- Well, and hers. Uh, Derek, Derek talking about his wizard- and how he made the observation that oh, with this spell, if I get to this level, I could I could bind two succubi to my will, and that's it's, be it's also just Fridays like, where we don't have to worry about anything. That's a little bit more. That's like more on the scale yeah, of yeah. that what we're talking about with the Friday shows. That is not something that I would ever really encourage or allow or want in say our quest game yes. or you know our whatever you know. Um, and I did sleep with a, slow, a snowman. That was on on YouTube. Well, I mean that that was that, you know we were focused on the mission. And to be fair. To be fair, that was probably about the limit of what I would. Fridays ever is also just so chaotic. It, it's it's such a it's such a random well, that, cluster. Know, it, there goes brings us up. That that's our time to relax and unwind. That's and, the main thing. I'm not, I'm not honest, entertaining. If anybody. I can be honest with you guys, I mean, there's so many people that I talk with all the time uh, on the channel, and I, I really do consider them. I mean, it's you know, it's kind of parasocial because, but it it, it is more back and forth I think than a lot of mm -hmm. content creators are. So I, I don't want to say, oh, they're my friends. I mean, they are definitely. Acquaintances that I spend yeah, a lot of time. A step with. above acquaintance, but below friends. Yeah, somewhere above in that range. Yeah, but below friend. But right, because again, we don't have any of those like personal connections, but we do obviously spend a lot of time with each other. And I would have no problem feeling comfortable with some people mm -hmm. being able to. Oh, but, yeah. but for our peace of mind, yeah, it's nice to have a time when you know we're not on. Uh, yeah. And Trevco, Bob's birthday bash is happening this year. Uh, I'm it's trying to plan. I'm trying to figure out the date. It is. And uh, Smith actually moved closer to me, so if pa if. Uh, Nights in Exile is at Smith's house, which we plan on being. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be like within pickup distance from my wife. So uh, Uber ride uh, doesn't need to be happening. My wife will just come pick and me up. <laughs> you'll be in your house. I, I can literally pass out on camera, and you guys can just leave, and it will be totally fine. I would keep the camera on. Twenty four totally <laughs> hour stream is oh, just Smith passed out. Like, it I love just, it. Like the shot, the shot would just totally just be like. <laughs> Someone tunes at eight in the morning. He's People still like like randomly log in, just tip like I, Smith's wake up fun. Like I would run over, get some coffee I would at run Denny's. Over, I would get on OBS. Oh, I would put like a a, oh, a timer, like a stopwatch oh, that's, that's just good. running, oh, just snoring for like good. eight hours. Oh, that's good. Mm. That would be really really good. Um, wake up to like me being like, be quiet upstairs. <laughs> Is that the dog? <laughs> Damn kids. Um, so Dad, wake up. Dad, wake up. You're on TV. <laughs> 
So, uh, but you know, there's things that we haven't had, a, you know, big plans that we've 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 wanted to do with the channel. But of course, obviously, real life is uh, is a bitch. That's air horn. Such and a bitch. Um, you know, I I still would love to figure. A 24-hour charity stream. Uh, that 100% is, yes. down. That is a definitely. I don't know how I could physically manage that. I we'll don't know do that it. I could. We'll figure it out. Uh, it's very difficult for me to stay And away Smith for is big. Hours. How many how many Red Bulls can we <laughs> Well, I can't, I can't drink any of those. Those will be in the hospital. Well, no, no one should drink them. That's what my doctor told me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's poison. But this isn't about health. This wow. is about staying charity. away. <laughs> this, is about, and charity. This, is about, this is about sick kids, Bob. I know. We, we want to do Extra Life. I know you're a big proponent for charity. Life. And I yeah. love the idea of donating to charity. That's something I... You know me. I, I'm yeah. very frugal with my money. Well, you know, I love donating to charity. Well, that is my one thing we, I love to we, do. <laughs> can, we, can we take a brief moment yeah. to talk about the community in that regard? Yes. Right? Um, oh, with like flax and stuff yeah. like that? So oh, yeah, yeah. Go for it. We had a community member, uh, who uh, Steve mm -hmm. uh, Vlax, who, whose house and property were severely damaged by a really bad storm yep. a couple years ago. And he came to us and said, hey... Uh, I'm probably going to have to cancel my my membership uh, because I, money's tough. Money, money's going to be super tough. We've got this big deductible going. So what do we do? We have a charity stream for Vlax. Now, obviously, we have people here very generous. You saw some hundred dollar oh, yeah, tips yeah. tonight, fifty dollar tips tonight. You know, it's twenty five dollar tips tonight. We had we we probably got six or seven or eight hundred dollars. That was eight hundred bucks at the end of the day. Yeah, in tips um, that I was able to just completely give. Yeah, which is great. Not even a stream. We had one of our long term it was on uh was on our Leshy stream, was on our uh Poppet stream, Damien. Mm -hmm. Uh his grandmother died. Oh yeah. And yeah. he needed to fly back I to, him 25 to bucks. Pittsburgh yep. mm -hmm. uh like that weekend. And you know, money's tight for him and he there's no way he could afford the flight. We he had a GoFundMe. He said I said, Yeah, post it. Boom. A bunch of anonymous donations, a bunch of other people. You could tell that these were people from our community. Yep. And he got his goal, you know? So like there's just been a lot of these instances, of well, and, and it's so funny because it's like when you when you read when you do that kind of stuff, the, they just give back. Like you know, you're like oh, he needs help. Everyone wants that, and then Damien just wants to give everything back two thousand percent. Well, and a great I mean, because Damien well, is so giving. Well, and a great example. <laughs> He's of that, so giving. Like you know, uh, Damien got an extra copy. Yeah. Of a, of a game. Oh yeah. Wasn't it like right. the basic box or something. Like ba it was like oh, it was, it was like a basic. Uh, it was an extra copy of, of old school census. Yeah. And he wanted to give it away. And yeah. He's like, are, I, he's like, let me give away this hundred dollar. Damien's, set. you're I think, so good. Beautiful box. I, th I think I think Alia won that too. Got that too. <laughs> Damn she you, Alia. <laughs> Alia's winning everything. She made out like a bandit. <laughs> yeah, she did make out like a bandit. But you know, but hey, whatever. Yeah, you know, she's been on the stream a couple times talking she about is. Forbidden Lands. That's right. Which you is know? another game that we're playing. That's true. Um. So my idea, like I said, my idea. For for a twenty four hour stream is I want to build we a yeah. super mega dungeon. We could do it with terrain, and then the challenge is going to be: can the PCs get to the final boss, probably a big dragon, mm -hmm. before twenty four hours mm -hmm. before right. sunrise? Right? They have one night, but the the people can tip to just kill you and basically make you restart. It's almost like a roguelite. Yeah, but. In D and D, and it's like each and time we, you, we were gonna have like random characters, right? Almost like uh, I thought you, arena I thought you were gonna day. have the PC, uh, the PCs built by the patrons. Yeah, people could build because I like that idea. It. Like yeah. that's oh, that's but my like, PC. Some of them were gonna be like ridiculous. That one's shitty. Well, 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 well <laughs> like, also too, like I'd let you prepay. Like I fucking bins. Like, remember, it's all for charity. I would be like, I, you Keebler can, elves, <laughs> right? And so, like as you're going through, it's like somebody could be like, you know. Basically, like tip for like Derek Hero Point, yeah, you know, yeah. like that super power. So if the party wants, they can they can supercharge the party. But then you, and in this case, you're like, won't you have Ooh. some people trying to what kill? What game everybody? would you run, uh, Kyle? That is a Dungeon World hard question to ask. Probably not Dungeon World. Dungeon World's for bots. I feel like if we action. got the Dwarven Forge out, we are doing some tactical mini combat. So is that like four E though? Yeah, because it's gonna be late and tired. We'll probably be drinking. The math is gonna be it's tough. gotta be. I don't know. I'm, it's probably like in the third ish area. Maybe. Okay. Well, you know, it could even just be like five E, but yeah, or five. I could. We could do. Well, if you did five E. Cause, Ooh, cause, cause you it, could promote that for the charity because advantage and disadvantage is <laughs> yeah know, it's wrong. Oh, nice. Vin, you better <laughs> calm your tongue with Dungeon World sucks. By hour sixteen, well, of the hack that we drunk. did for Bob's birthday bash was legit. <laughs> um, so um, uh, it's not going to be PF two. I'm yeah. not going to do that. Yeah, no, no. no well, wait, I wouldn't do Pathfinder two for the same reason that I wouldn't do fourth edition DVD, exactly. Yeah. Which is that five E could work. Five E could work. Like because yeah. the idea is that the, char work. the characters would be leveling up quickly. They'd be getting and like I, yeah. it, it takes too much yeah. time. Too much math. Oh too much gosh, adding. It takes so long to level up your character. Like this would be if we played five E. Uh, Frostjack Thirteenth Age isn't the worst idea, but you still which would be fun. Have, I never played it. You do still have powers. Daggerheart has powers. Like my idea would be like fifth edition D and D. Don't no don't tempt me, Sean. Fifth edition D and D. No no feats. Yeah. Right. No feats. Yeah. And and basic skills. 
And just like because then it's like okay after level three I don't even think you get a new ability. Yeah. What about yeah. what about what about Dragon Bane? Dragon Bane could be good. Oh, Dragon Sean, you're 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 suggestions on the table. Dragon Bane could be good. Plus, I love the idea that somebody could tip like twenty bucks and somebody can make a skill improvement roll like right then, Ooh. like live in the middle of the thing. Like that, that sword we, we would have to have a camera ready that, for it. That sword skill. That sword yeah. skill needs to go up twenty bucks. Couldn't you do? Uh, all right, it went up <laughs> like just in the middle of the session. So Dragon Bane could be really good. In fact, I said the other day on Dragon Bane's fun that um. Uh, you know, if I if I were to do DTX again mm. with that stuff, I said I'd be I'd be really if if I knew about Dragon Bane when I did that, it'd have been really hard for me not to do Dragon Bane. Dragon Bane's good for a twenty four hour because it's just it's it's rules light enough that you're not going to get too bogged down. Right. Like after after, after hour twenty three, right. you're like, Ugh. also also Dragon Bane has a nice advantage too, where it's like you don't really get anything there is no levels right. so it works perfectly yeah. right? so in other words if somebody dies here yeah, it doesn't matter. and you make a new character but you could also do something ridiculous like a hundred dollars you just give them a new heroic ability right. you know it's just like we could do it the game isn't yeah. balanced could anyways. do it anyways um, if we were planning on that let me know because I'll reach out to Free League and see what they <laughs> say we don't say. reach out to anybody I could do it they won't respond to me but I could try one of my again, this is another this is another classic. This is one of my favorite. This was at Origins. Origins, yeah. Oh, uh, all the free stuff they wanted to give you. I was actually, but you, nope, would, no. you wouldn't accept I was, it. I was at the Modifius. I wasn't with you. I know. You would have, yes. <laughs> I would accept that. I free was stuff. at the Modifius booth. <laughs> yeah. And I was looking at Dune books. Yeah. And I was talking to this guy, wearing my nice last call shirt, yeah. but I did not bring it up. Right. While I'm talking to the guy, a bunch of pa- fans, I don't even think they were patrons. I yeah. think they were just fans. Came over and we're like, hey, are you are you Derek from Night's Last Call? And I was like, oh, hey, what's going on? He's like, oh, we love this. We kind of shot the shit for a second. And then the guy who was at the Modifius was basically like, uh, he's like, you, are he's you like, famous? He's like, he's like, are you are you an influencer or whatever? I, was like, I don't know. You know, I got to. <laughs> yeah. And I, I would say I've And then he looks anyone. up and he like, yeah, I could tell he goes and looks up our channel on, on his phone and he kind of comes back. and He's like, hey, well, here's my card. I'd love to work with you. If there's anything I go. I, I go, I'll take the, uh, can I just buy the books, please? And just leave like, <laughs> Leave me alone. I just want the Dune uh. books. I just want the Dune books. I don't want to get into a business relationship with you. I just want to read about the I just ben- want Dune. I just want to read about Sandworms and Bene Gesserit. Because I. I yeah. Derek's not a shill. I'm a shill. Yeah, you are a shill. I'm a, for sure a shill. I mean, it's not even the shilling aspect, right? It's like, mm. I hope we didn't piss these people off because, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, I can't imagine why they would be. Because um, <laughs> well, they're like, can I give you stuff? And you're like, I just, no, no. Right now, now Kyle says we could also do Ryutama, and that would be that would be a hell of a thing. Uh, did you uh, did you see, did, did either of you watch that Wander Home stream at all? I uh, no, no, I watched I the first half hour. Tied up. It sounded interesting because I was like, what is this? Well, there's, yeah, That's there's, a no dice. There's no dice. Yeah. It's GM is optional. Uh, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is a. Is it a game? <laughs> I still don't know. Um, we, there was a Sunday you did this scene? Secret, yeah, Sunday. Secret Sunday stream? Some people were really Secret excited Sunday about stream. it. It was an Easter stream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some people were, because it was basically, it's basically a hyper-narrative, fortune-based resolution mechanic. Okay. So, like, your character has, like, six things, and it uses uh, fate points without dice. And basically, you can you you can spend a fate point to do something, mm-hmm. like, but in order to get a fate point, you have to, like, also do something. So, so this is Cowboys and Indians, but with meta currency. Yes. Got it. Tracking. Got it. Um, and uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Donnie, mm. Donnie Johnson says Fantasy Age. Actually, that you know, Fantasy What's Age. What's Fantasy Age? I did a live stream about it. Yeah, um, I missed it. It's D20, but it uses um, a D6 stunt die and stuff like that. Um, it's pretty. It's interesting. Um, Vin's got a question for you. Vin has a question for me. He says, so where are all the lights and stuff going to go? Great question. We're going to break them all. Well, the first thing that, yeah. <laughs> so the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to take down the lights and we'll probably do a stream while we do that because I want to. Do you guys remember the painting stream? Oh, the, only the patrons will know oh, yeah, this. Yeah, so yeah. if so, you're a patron, you got exclusive yeah. behind a bit the of scenes. A lie. There's a bit of a lie because we will do another stream from the studio. But it won't be. But it will be only for the patrons yeah. yep. and it'll just be kind of like a live feed of us just. Oh, I think we should do two things because, because. When we were doing the painting one, we had like some some jazz we had, like, playing, jazz. and like we were talking role playing games as we always do, right? Yeah. And people were like, "What are they saying?" I know it's good. So maybe what we can do is have like the patrons only ASMR jazz teardown, but maybe for like I don't know, our heroes or exalted or something like we'll have the yeah. We also recorded what we were talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, we can actually just, you can actually get. I'm the, gonna be extra careful. When I say get that the live, you get to live speed. Um, so. 
regardless, uh, the lights and the electronic yep. equipment yep. are not going to be put in a storage unit. No. Some of it a lot's going to Smith's. is going to be repurposed and taken to Smith's mm. house where we hope cameras that we stuff, can set yeah. up nights in exile. Now, I don't think we're going to need five cameras and we're not no. going to need 27 lights. Um, and it's important to think like like what, when we're in exile, it's going to be like a camping trip or like us at Origins, right? Like it's going to be a little bit lower tier quality. Right. Uh, yeah, we, we can't just like drill yeah, shit into my you know walls listen i've live no. listen i've live streamed from vegas we've live streamed from origins convention you've live streamed from a boat I've live streamed from the middle of the ocean that's right on a cruise ship so this we are not we are not disfamiliar yeah right with uh with live streaming in in what i'll call adverse conditions right um we're uh we're a stream from anywhere company mm-hmm. we're, we're stream from anywhere company. i don't care if you're streaming on a beach <laughs> just, just get your work yeah, done. It fits the chips. Um, RFC says, send it to me, and I can set it up in my house, and then you can just fly here and stream. Well, Where is we'll, we'll just fly uh, to New York. New York. I ain't going to New York. Are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's how you really feel, Bob. So uh, well, I don't uh, like so the nothing, Yankees, nothing, and I don't like the Mets. So, All right, then. So nothing's getting <laughs> sold. Um, nothing's getting, you know. I mean that that has been that is no how nothing's you, being sold. I mean that is how you including actually, this space because the landlord <laughs> is never going to be able to resell this spot. Never, never. Actually, mo- anything that Derek probably going to sell. I'm probably gonna steal for free, yes. and then and then I'll yeah. be like, oh, just yeah. Derek wouldn't actually go actually, to the effort to sell actually, it. There is a I, I you're gonna want, sell some stuff. I want to sell some of the furniture pieces over mm. in there because they're just furniture pieces. Yeah, yeah, and then I also have my like seven thousand dollar professional lighting. Oh yeah, 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 that we used. You to don't use, need that, yeah. but I don't. I don't need that anymore. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, um, Mystic says, "One of you surely has a spare bedroom." I'm just saying. Well, no, Mystic's, no, I don't. Yeah, spare basement. Well, the, the, the thing about it is the ceiling uh, height. Uh, the thing about it is, buddy, uh, this set. Is really big. This table is ten feet wide, right at the front. This table is ten yeah. feet at the. So front. you don't even see how far it goes over to there. <laughs> and a lot of what you're seeing is is sort of an illusion of, yeah. of forced perspective. You still have like the behind but the scenes shot. No, because no. this is the behind the, the scenes shot. This is okay. the wide shot. But no, yeah, yeah. like uh, the the whole the whole space takes up about uh, thirty feet by twenty feet. Yeah, it takes about six hundred square feet. It's not even yeah. that. It's that these panels in the back go up eight feet. Yeah. And so you guys can kind of see the lights at the top there. Those are at the ceiling height. And like Smith's got the best basement for this. And his is at like seven feet. Like, I think mine's yeah. at like oh, six. Oh, no, these wouldn't fit. Mine's like yeah. six, oh, four. Yeah. Let me be very clear. Whatever we go to is not going to be able to have this. And, no, and there's that nothing also, that, by yeah. the way, yeah. when I was house hunting, I was like, I need to have a, yep. a basement that has eight foot ceilings. That's hard to find. And it is hard to find. And I did find it. And then I was going to buy it. And then <laughs> they sold it. But um, somebody else. Corporate. 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 Thanks, BlackRock. Uh, thanks, thanks, Black Rock. Um, so yeah, so that that's the issue. Now that being said, Mystics, Mystics, we we do have our microphones and we do have yes. some cameras and we do yes. have some lights. So we are going to try to make you know and we're, we're going to try to make the audio pretty decent and we're going to try to video is going to be what it is. Basement is full and, of and cool stuff. Clear, you know, <laughs> like is, it's cool stuff this, there. This, this is going to be nights in exile. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, the king has been deposed. Mm. Right, and once he lorded over a, a luscious palace with servants and and you know wine. Now he lives amongst the the commoners <laughs> and he, you know he he dresses plainly and he eats gruel and and but plus that actually you'll have a lot more access to wine. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a lot of wine in that. House. Wine and pizza on the ready. Right. But my point is, <laughs> three is that, fridges of um, wine. <laughs> you know, I, hopefully that the the fun and the excitement. You know, this this channel uh, was found. Energy will still be there. But, but also, like I think people might dig like seeing where we play in our personal games. They yeah. will. They will understand. You know. Yeah. yeah. I, again, your setup's pretty sweet. It's yeah. just not. It, again, I do want to build Smith that new table. It, Smith's setup is pretty legit. Like anybody, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, ninety yeah. percent of people will be like, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, if you're Joe Magliano or whatever his name is, like you'd want dungeon tiles in your background too. But Pumpkin says this is perfectly sized for AP combat, ten feet by ten feet with uh, four PCs and monsters. Yeah, you could maybe good. just squeeze it in. Uh, not not quite. It'd be oh, my good. brothers in the chat. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this a hole. Danny says, "Love you guys." Bob smells though. Uh, Danny, I love he, how we figured out how what? Danny had so much fun in DTX. It was because he <laughs> never missed once. What? Yeah, Danny uh, confirmed that you had fun playing DTX, but uh, I thought it was because you uh, never missed the Ranger. <laughs> um, Self confessed says, "All I ask is for the beer to be on the table." See, again. he wants the beer cans on the table. <laughs> I well the problem is I use solo cups for uh, Smith's house and so I have mm, I've been known well, to drink a little too much at Smith's house. Yes, the, the, on the regular. It may lead to occasional TPKs. Um, yes, or I, just regular screwing up missile magic missiles or something. I will say that my in general my uh, demanding nature, my perfectionism 
will be able to take a break mm -hmm. because I'll know that we are in exile. Right. And this isn't the real channel. Right. And that'll We're, we're going to have a little thing like up and, on the and template and that says exile. Oh, yeah. It'll say knights yeah. in exile. And so that'll like allow me to be more okay with – more like you know, more Bob birthday bash, a little bit more lower quality yeah. in the in the in the presentation. That being said, uh, which will be great for you because you can maybe let your hair down. And well, have I like more fun. Oh your Matt Mercer I, I, hair I, down. I, I, I have fun, but <laughs> I would just say we made this channel. I made. This I usually drink to, heavy on Fridays, not usually on the Tuesdays. To entertain yeah. and to educate. You know, and that that's kind of what we're trying to do here. You know, I don't want it to just be completely boring. <laughs> Read Jeez, RFC's comment. And tell us what you really think. <laughs> RFC bringing out the punches tonight. <sighs> just being well, savage. Who could tell the difference? Uh, nobody. You know, I mean that. Yeah, they would only have viewers. So. I mean, look. <laughs> look. How, many, how many people are viewing right when now? Hundred. When when some uh, yeah hundred. When somebody shits thank on you hundred people versus when, the Stevens two hundred. When somebody shits on me in the comments of a YouTube video, I heart it and then I pin it to the top because I and I because I because I want to make sure. Everybody sees it. That's right. By the way, as a, a sort and of you a, go on RFC stream, tell me not to join your channel. <laughs> yeah, as a as a uh, as a counter uh, sort of a counter punch to that, somebody on the Discord linked me. They're like, "Oh shit, you guys are getting famous!" And there was some <laughs> oh no, there was some channel that has like seven hundred subs. Oh, um, and they made a video rebuttal. Which okay. Was, which was like an hour and a half long. So, oh. so, wait, wait. so I respect that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, look, you're going to put, you're going to put an hour and a half together. I respect that. That's actual work. That's but, not just like 10 minutes clickbait. Correct. They did it in response to, uh, not the stream. They okay. did it in response to my, the problem with Gen Con. Oh, clip, oh they which, actually did to which, that. Yeah. Which was a 13 minute clip. Right. Cause, and by the way, that wasn't even a whole live stream. It was just yeah. at the beginning of a stream. I said, oh, by the way, today was Gen Con registration it was bullshit. So you, I mean, you, you got were, a lot of flack for that. I feel like Gen Con's like putting money in to be no, like counter influence. No, it's because it got shared on a Facebook page, which is where this guy I think found it called uh, Friends of Face, uh, Friends of Gen Con. But even so, it's it was your opinion. Facebook. You were passionate about your opinion, and I don't know if your opinion was really wrong, but it's still your opinion. Right. But it, it <laughs> definitely was accurate. Right. The, but we could get into it, but point is, this this channel. In fact, you know what? I'll shout them out. Um, uh oh! Shout out! They are called. They oh are called, gosh! They are called the Geek Cabal. Geek Cabal. Now they're they have, gonna have a thousand subs. They have three hundred and sixty subs. Now they're gonna have a thousand. Okay, and well, no. Here's the thing. This is the pinned comment on that video. By the way, the Gen Con hate video got a good number of views. Oh, okay. It says, "Don't agree with me?" Question mark. Or even if you do, these folks put together a rational rebuttal to my complaints. Check it out, and I link them. I linked that oh, to their video. Oh, you shouted them out already. Okay, so I sweet. already shouted them out. And then I responded or I you know into that to that guy's, you know, uh to that guy's video. I put in the comments, "Nice video. I'm going to put a link back in my video description as a counterpoint offering." And he responded back and said, we appreciate you watching the video and reposting it. This is a welcome, classy response. If you do end up attending Gen Con and we end up setting up setting a getup together, you're more than welcome to join us. For those who didn't catch the name in the video, this is the gentleman who posted the original video. This type of response should be applauded, and I can only hope wow. that we would react yeah, this way. They're good friends. If we well, that guy actually seems pretty respectful. Well, no, because the point is, it's like somebody disagreed with me. They were not an asshole about it, right. and they actually made reasonable points, even if I don't agree with them. But they, they, <sighs> they put in point. So yeah. that's actually how YouTube put, should work. And they put in the work. Yes, so well, that's how Twitter, Everything all that should, should work. work. Yeah. You should be able to disagree. Ah, so I actually kind of applaud this person. Have an I argument. Know, I mean, it's kind of legit. Uh, Disagreeing with me does not make you wrong or bad. So, you know, I don't care if people right. want to rebut, rebut against me. I'm just like, just don't be like, you know, you know, because again, there were, there were, the there were some bad faith arguments. And to be fair, I don't, for example, for example, if you were going to attend a convention in Cleveland and I said, Okay, but your hotel room is in Akron. Would you view that as acceptable? No, right. that's 45 minutes away. Exactly. So my thought process on this is just that, yes, you could say, well, you could still attend Gen Con. Okay, but if your barrier to attending Gen Con is you could sleep on the floor, you right. could sleep in your car, right. you could be at an air, you could be at a, you could have to wait 15 to 20 minutes for an Uber that then takes 20 to 30 minutes to get you to the, the city. You could wait to get picked up by the police. Right. <laughs> so I, yes, you are right. You could attend Gen Con. Right. That's just pedantic. I, I, I just don't think that that's really yeah. attending Gen Con. Yeah. I get it. Yes, you are right. You are physically in the door. Yeah. They can't bar you from entry because you and, have a badge. And, like, I get some people love Gen Con that much that they're Correct. willing to go through that pain. It doesn't dispute that well, that's, that's And that bad. was the second part of my rebuttal, yeah. which is I said it's sad that there are people who are willing to go through that pain to go to Gen Con because Gen Con is a shadow of its former self. Boom. 
So, so that, where I thought you were going with this whole okay. comment was the free league thing, which was when oh. free league posted your three hour video about Dragon Bane and put it in their playlists for Dragon Bane and your three hour video of Dragon Bane. Uh, just talking about the game. We're just talking about the game. Our, our comments, our questions, and, concerns and, was was longer than the APs in the in the in the, <laughs> in the, in the playlist. Right. Like you could go watch an actual play of Dragon Bane and be done in, in a tight two. Yeah. Wow. But if you want to just watch us talk about yeah. Dragon Bane. You were like by far the longest one in that in that uh one of these is not like in their in uh free leagues Dragon Bane uh playlist about people uh commenting on it. So again, uh, it was kind of that's what I thought you were, oh, we're getting famous. <laughs> indicate they might be excited about doing a charity stream. I would be if we did DB, I would I would uh I would uh if I had enough time, I would, I would reach out to them. Okay. Okay. Um Are they gonna be at Origins? I have no idea. I mean I assume so. Maybe we can make some friends. Um, in Sweden? I don't know. Oh, make some friends. With, with, uh, with the we'll talk to goblins and androids. As long as you guys can find a place where you can all meet in person. I hate online stuff where everyone stops mid-sentence because someone else said something and everything's on a delay. That is, the. I mean, that's the case with Zoom calls oh, yeah. at work. Is that, he saying about the exile? He's, no, oh, okay. He's, he's saying that when people play online and they, you know, or even like when you're doing a Zoom call and it's like, what? Oh, no, I no, do no, hate that. That's, no, why the, that's why the VTT didn't work so well. Yeah. Like, I want in person. RFC, uh, I'll I'll put you up on that if uh, if we end up doing DB for a charity stream. Steven knows everyone. Steven uh, doesn't everyone. Yeah. Hey, but- Steve, uh, do a show about what's going on with the BG three guys and Watsy. Like, what happened there? Because they're like, yeah, we're not doing a BG four. Why? Yeah, guys. they're like in. They're like. Yeah. Well, I mean, going- I, I know Steve knows the answer. Oh, I'm sure Steve knows the answer. But I told my brother that he's. I can't believe they're not doing any DLC. And they're not doing. They don't want to do no, BG four. Like, like they're hard out. They're like, fuck these guys. So it, it, I was. I I have to assume that's 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 Hasbro. It has to be. Right? It has to be Hasbro. Like has someone got greedy. I don't know. It has to I be mean, Hasbro. Let me just tell you something. They nailed that game. Because it wasn't they like they were bored. They were like hostile. Like, they like, nailed that game. Let yeah. me tell. Let me tell you something here. The other day, I, I something sparked in me, and I I went onto my Steam, and I opened up oh. my Total War Warhammer oh. two, and then I was going to get Warhammer 3 because it came out at this point like during the pandemic I yeah. think, and I never bought it yeah. hmm. and I haven't played Warhammer 2 since like 2019 or yeah. something b- before the pandemic and I looked and I saw the reviews were, were terrible for Warhammer 3 and a lot of people said it didn't work out of the box and mm. I guess they had pa- a buggy launch I guess they've patched it since then yeah. a lot of RFC said, already covered it um, oh, oh we, excellent we, we but, must have missed but, that one but I'll have to go back and look at it uh but I went back to two, and I was like, "Well, I don't. Maybe I don't need to play three. I'll just play two. So I went back to two, which I played a lot of. Sure. You know, for me, it's a lot. It's like, you know, three hundred hours played, which is a lot for a video game. A lot. Um, I mean, that's that's still a lot, regardless. Yeah. So three hundred hours played. I played it a lot. That's played, a lot of hours. Uh, played a lot of campaigns, um, and um, I, the original game was maybe sixty nine bucks or fifty nine bucks when I bought it, and it, it might be around that now or a little bit less. But man, again, I know I'm I'm a noob here. I'm looking and I click in it because I'm like, oh, well, you know, what have they patched? And like they have a, they have one. I think it's a free DLC where it's like it basically makes it really bloody and gory. Mm. So like the body parts go flying and stuff like that, which I thought was kind of. But then I start looking and I go, I'm like, oh, that looks awesome. I was like, oh, shit. King Thork, I am brow, you know, special dwarf character. And like you can bring him into your campaign. Are these DLCs or uh, these mods? These are DLCs. Okay. Nine ninety nine, ten dollars mm-hmm. so that you can add one dwarf lord unit to the. A thing, Rapunzel de Leonis, right? She's like uh, the Joan of Arc of the Bretonians, mm-hmm. right? I remember the model from when she came out, right? She's the Grail Lady um, or the Grail Maiden. You want you want the Rapunzel de Le- you know it? Leonis, ten dollars for one hero character, named hero character. And I was just looking at a cup all- of coffee. I mean, this is basically a skin over the actual unit. That's right. No, it, it has its own unique stats. And okay. it has like one or two, but it's it's just. I would a, assume a skin's like, like five five to eight. To yeah. ten dollars, so like, ten hours. Like, like legit. I'm looking at this DLC, and I go, the original game was like fifty bucks. If you bought all this DLC, you're in for three hundred or four hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, your uh, your uh, your ex was super into The Sims, right? Have you looked at the DLC for The Sims? Oh yeah, like the the there, five dollar packs for like a yeah, but a, there's so many of them for like a, a if, pack of chairs. If you wanted to play Sims Four, hundred percent, right? Everything. It literally costs you somewhere around like. Three thousand. Uh, Amanda Jeez. has Amanda has spent over two thousand dollars on yep. the Sims. I know that. Um, I knew. I do know that. Yep. Um, I think we got another tip. There is uh, from yeah. Flim Filmier. Filmier. Long time Filmier. Lurker. Long time lurker. Your channel has helped break me out of my F twenty 
uh, shell and expose me to the whole new world of RPGs. Thank you for being great stewards of the of this hobby and keep doing what you are doing. Well, well thank, thank you, you for that. And yeah. I believe this gentleman just joined the Patreon. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Well, What's the name? Philomir. Okay, I didn't miss. Well, welcome. Too. Well, hail Phil Miller. Welcome. Um, yeah, you know, listen, I don't listen, bring let, out the welcome let wagon. Let me be very clear about something, and I, and I will say this for the millionth time. Number one, we are probably like we are probably more pro five E D and D than like some five E channels at this point. Because we don't have all, like, the hate built yeah. up over all these people. Now, to be fair, some of that's because we didn't play it. But also, our expectations are very different. But <laughs> we're aware of what the system let is Let me be very of. clear about this. I can't speak for Bob. But this guy, this guy, we love D&D. We love D20s. Okay. And, and we're being very specific here. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I, I like mean, the D&D lore videos that our, our what's Mr. Rex does on YouTube. Love his channel. Okay. I'm talking D and D. Well, he does D and D lore. Yeah, but I don't care about the lore. I'm talking. About I D &D. care about the lore. I know, but I'm saying the game. I do appreciate itself. the lore, Bob. See, I mean, I love the wait, game. What is I D &D? love all of it. What is D and D lore? I mean, it tells me about all these different monsters and oh, and the, and the okay. forbidden lands and all that stuff. I thought you meant like you mean Forgotten Realms. Uh, no, I thought, sorry, Forgotten Realms. Yeah. I thought you meant like who Lorraine Williams was. No, 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 sorry. no. Sorry, I've read all those books too that yeah, you, yeah. you tell me to read. <laughs> I, I've those are good spent books, by the way. An hour tell. watching a video that was entirely about elves trancing specifically in the Forgotten Realms. Is it, how that was, was it by different. Mr. Rex? Because his stuff is so good. It may. I don't remember. It's been a while, but maybe because it was good. So I love his stuff because it, it talks about like what is why does this monster do what it is and and throughout the history of DD all the way to 5e oh, and that like is really cool you were doing with the class review now right. i do read all those books that you keep telling me to read and those are actually really good books sure, too yeah books. okay real dnd so i like my, my, my i never is, got to play like you guys have played but i'm like i'm trying to because it's so rich it's so rich <laughs> the reason i was saying this is because i i pre i love philomir that you broke out of your f20 shell because the, the fact of the matter is if somebody went through their whole life only playing dnd that i would be, that would be a shame that. yeah there are a lot of other really cool games out there and you should definitely mm -hmm. go and play Dragon Bane or uh, Traveler or Call of Duty or Powered by the Apocalypse you. or uh, Blades in the Dark or Fabula Ultima. All incredible, incredible game. But there is nothing wrong with loving D20 games. And there's nothing wrong with loving, you know, your favorite version of D&D &D or Pathfinder. The because reason they, we, you, they are at their core, the heart of this hobby. And I, I, I mean, but the reason always, guys, and for me, they will always be, you know, at the base well, people mistake your hate for you just your critique. Well, no, they mistake my critique. Oh, sorry, for, for hate. your hate. Yeah, yeah they, they yeah, think yeah. you guys you guys are hating on it when you guys are saying this one part of uh 5e or this channel or this part of D D 4e or 3e, you guys just don't like. And you're like, so let me talk about why I don't like that and let me explain it. And they're like, well, they hate D D. Part of it too is our history, right? Like yeah. people assume because initially we we came off as a PF2 channel that we that must naturally mean, hated 5e. We must hate 5e and we must hate DD. Yeah. Like when people found out that like we liked fourth edition, and I know. D &D, people were like shocked and they were yeah. like shocked. Because then it's like you start going back and you go, wait a sec, wait a sec. So you love fourth edition. And it's like, yeah, we, we think it's a great edition. And we're like, wait, wait, but you're also pretty cool with fifth edition. Yeah, actually, the last DD campaign we played was, fifth, was edition. fifth edition. That's right. You guys did. It's like, okay, yeah, but uh, then what? Third edition is, is a bunch of flap up? No, that's. That might be my that favorite. Might be favorite. Yeah. That might be my favorite edition. That's everyone's like, oh, Smith loves 4E. I was like, oh, I love 4E. It's a great game. Is that, is that your favorite edition? No. No. And then it's like, it's like, well, what about second? Oh, Bob didn't even know. Yeah. I would have said 4E. Bob, you bit the hype. I would have said 4 You're playing 4 with your family. Yeah, but I'm also playing Forbidden Land. That right. doesn't mean that's my favorite game of all time. I mean, I didn't think it was. Right. I'm just saying. Right now, my favorite game of all time. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's a good question. Yeah. All time. All time, Bob. I mean, you, you've played a lot. Yeah, some of them have only been for a couple of sessions, but I think in some cases, as a player, yeah, L five R. Wow, wow. I've had I, that one strikes wow. the biggest core with me as a player. Uh, being a GM, probably Dragon Bane because it's just so easy to run. That I could believe. I mean, I just have so much fun running Dragon Bane, but I'm like, I don't get to play it as much, so maybe I just don't have that respect. But L five R, I'm like, I never was like looking more forward to a five R L five R campaign than I will. AV, I I was looking forward to for playing PF two. And it was fun. And, well, you got to and, be a kineticist. That was and all, 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 but again, even <laughs> some of our games. Forbidden Lands, I'm actually having a really good time playing Forbidden Lands. We've only played four sessions now. Four sessions. L5R, L5R was just, every week I'm like, what the F is going to happen? Because this game is so intense. Mm. And so, I was like, this was fun. <laughs> every every week I left going, that was a great well, session. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, not to put too fine of a bow on it, but I think <laughs> that it exemplified the idea of we play to find out. 
And when you don't know what's going to happen, when you truly yeah. don't know, because mm, yeah. like you could go, oh, the game has D20s. We don't know what's going to happen. And it's like, yeah, you're but, planning I, AV, but, but even like the I subtle, kinda, I kind of know what's going to happen. The yeah. subtle, the subtle, yeah. you know, the yeah, subtle honor has switched. Like. Well, no, because even when you're playing Dragon Bane or even if you were playing BXD and D, yeah. you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. My character could die. No, it sounds like you're pretty well convinced that it will. So if it does, it's not even that surprising. In Legend of the Five Rings, you're just like, like you always say, yeah. you could die, and that would be like the least of your worries. That's right. what I'm saying. The like the little Derek would you're just like, you're like, or I could spell the ruin of my fa my family, and my right. clan. We, like it's we, we were doing just, that first fight, six yeah. sessions in, first oh, fight, yeah. right? Yeah, we sound like one of those groups that are oh, like no, really gonna roll the dice. This is actual the fight when we were leaving town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the, it was like right out of Game of Thrones, right? Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was perfect. It was it beautiful. entirely they, they inspired by Game of Thrones. I love that. They were testing our honor. Specifically, it's inspired by the scene where Jamie Lannister confronts Ned Stark. Uh, about his brother, yeah. and then the Lannisters and uh, yeah. the Starks fight in the streets of King's Landing. And they were actually in Otosan Uji, yeah. which is the Imperial capital. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my hand was literally shaking, which was fucking hilarious because I was so tense. Oh, yeah. Because it was like, oh, I'm going to fucking like, die. Like, but you, but, but, but the, they have that kind of reaction. Like, I mean, I mean, I think at a certain point, we all remember, right? Like, there was a time when, like, and I've seen it in your face, but you were older, too, but there's, like, a time when it's, like, the first time you're going into a, a, a game, and I mean, imagine if you were playing an old school game too, where like, the, I guess with the new school games, people don't know that the rules are there to coddle them, but like an undead, oh, yeah. a skeleton starts shambling to life and creeping towards you. And you're just like, I mean, I mean, imagine if you did that to Rowan, God. right? Your daughter. I like, remember the black skeletons. The black are skeletons of Rapanathook. That's a great. They group. crawled up from level two, and you know we talk about Rapanathook all the time. We, we, you have not seen true Rapanathook. No, we need to go. We back. didn't even get to the dungeon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, you know what it's like. It's no, like we weren't even going we to the dungeon. Sub dungeon. We were going to the the tutorial dungeon. <laughs> you know what it's like. We get there. You know what it's like. It's like when you're like the X Men, right? And you're fighting like Sentinels, and then like Nimrod shows up. Oh, he he's on our level, and you just run. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, we Nimrod, fight. Is, a, we, we Nimrod is another level right <laughs> you know and so like that's what like a black skeleton yeah. was like and so like to have that kind of reaction uh is, is so cool and that's really interesting that you said well so, so that I, what i wanted to bring up with when you were talking about the, the fight there was it wasn't even so again death wasn't the, the craziest thing right uh, uh, sorry one second is it steven's thing this. no no oh. self-confessed cynic had a, a two dollar oh. super chat oh. which i really he said f20 you know fantasy 20 is the mary of the ttrpg <laughs> fuck mary kill <laughs> And I think that's absolutely right. Right, that's like, pretty good. Yeah, right, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like yeah. what? I'll buy that. What's the RPG that you go kill it? I don't yeah. ever want to play it again. Yeah. What's the RPG that you go? Yeah, I'd have I'd have sex with that, but I'm yeah. not getting involved with that. Yeah. What's the RPG that you go? Yeah, this is yeah the, you're selling now. The background. The safe, I can yeah, settle down. I'm having dependent. kids with Dungeons I'm, and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly your good point. Um. So yeah. Sorry. Sorry. And then Stephen. Uh, oh yeah. Stephen killed us. My favorite game of all time was playing Fiasco with Smith. I mean, I believe that. It's on his phone. He probably still has it saved. That clip of you. Just in case he needs the blackmail. Yes. You know, at this point, I don't even remember. That we, game. we were all drunk at that time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's legends. I, I only know it through secondhand stories. That's right. Um, you gotta watch the clip. <laughs> I, I do want to watch the clips because I don't remember what happened. It was obviously I, I can only imagine someone like walking below us because it was so loud. We were so loud. <laughs> oh god, we had to be so loud. I mean, we yeah. Been, last time I played that game, I was got thrown out of a bar. Right. We've so. been yeah. we've been asked to we've been asked to vacate premises. I, was, I should probably not play that game. <laughs> so anyway, I want to go back to L five R. Go back to L five R. The part about uh, death not being the only the bad thing. What made that game so incredible, I thought, too, was just even after a scene, Derek could be like, all right, uh, Bobby, you lose an honor. And that felt so crucial. Oh, yeah. Like, I was like, excuse me, what did you just say? He's like, oh, you lose an honor. Uh, 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 Smith, you lose two. And you're like, whoa, fuck. Like, yeah. that that hurt worse than anything you could have said to me. Well, it's based, too, on what I'm like, your honor's uh, now at. I'm, so especially a minor, and, minor loss for me is like, Jesus Christ. And me yeah. and you kept, uh, was it honor? That we were we were going back and forth. It was honor and glory. I couldn't remember what was the, what was the you one? and I were fighting over honor. I honor. Think. Okay, so yeah. we had this point where like who was more samurai? Than <sighs> and 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 Smith was so much more courteous than me. It pissed me off so much. But I wanted I wanted to take the room at the end. And Smith was like, "You can have the room if you would like it." And I'm like, "You fucking bastard! You just out honored me. <laughs> like you just you just pimped me. Like you just backhanded me like that." And it was like, but like see Bob every Nick your hand waving prepping for GMing. I, you got a lot trust to learn. Me, I, I'm gonna try, but I want to do it. Right, and, but see, but that and that's the thing with that. I, 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 I'm now curious. Now, before we continue, because okay, I, yeah, I, go I, for I do want to just be same question. What's your favorite, what, your favorite game that you've played? Oh, uh, I mean, I think it has to be third edition. Yeah, I think so. Now, let's be very clear. Playing third edition, playing. Yeah, third edition, 
three point five, Pathfinder one. I I do separate PF one from three X. I would probably say it's hard. I go back and forth on three point five. Some right. changes were good. Some changes I didn't some like. Some changes were good. Some changes I don't like. Yeah. By and large, I've said by and large, thir- three is my favorite. Yeah. I I would. I mean, they're close. They're yeah. really close for me, right? Because three point five is right. Barely different, but Correct. different enough, right? Yeah, I, I would probably if Way I had, if I had a gun to head three point oh. <laughs> Way less. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just so many good memories. And, and also too, like it's not just nostalgia, right? But like like just playing the game a lot, and it's gonna be funny. Anyone who plays third edition is gonna listen to this and laugh their ass off. It really felt like the game just like worked. And yeah. I, I'm not really talking about the rule set specifically, because obviously I had problems. I'm talking more of like most of the time I showed up, I wasn't really thinking about the rule system the way I, like we do now. Part yeah. of that's because of our job, obviously. Like we're always thinking about the rule right. system today. Uh, like it very quickly like drew me into the game. And then the parts of the game that were obviously like this is a game, I really enjoy. Right? Well, what's really interesting to me is, you know, you see so many people, you know, drag games like 5e because they say, oh, you make so many few choices. And, uh, you know, you pick your subclass at level three or whatever, and then you're basically done. I, it's, I mean, it's very similar and, and, to, and to you, basic And you get edition. your ASIs, and yeah. you can trade them in for feats, I guess, if you want, but you might only get a couple of those. They're like, con- contrast that yeah. with fourth edition, where you're getting a new power, new feats, sure. every level. Pathfinder 2. That's Pathfinder 2, yeah. Where you're yeah, getting yeah. a new feat and a new uh, ancestry feat or a new class feat every level. Or, you know, other games. 13th Age, where you're, you know, there's only 10 levels, and every one's a banger. And yet, you, talk, you go back to third edition. Uh, if you chose a barbarian, yeah. If you're doing core rule book one, three point uh, barbarian made no choices. They yeah. got rage at level one, and then that's it. They, they, didn't, they didn't get a choice. Yeah, and none of their class features were choices. Assuming if you, were, you were a half orc barbarian, you'd get seven feet choices over the course of twenty levels. Yeah, um, and uh, a uh, and like a ranger, the feats were like you know plus one to AC. A ranger picked bow or two weapons at level one, yeah. and then that was it. A paladin made no choices. Right. They got their abilities, and that was it. Right. And sure, you got six feet or whatever, you know, seven yeah, feet. seven if you're not human. And most of the time, they were pretty, you know, yeah. you know plus one to attack. Plus, yeah. you know, dodge, weapon focus, you know, plus one to attack, plus one AC. Very, they re- like, they were like two sentences. They were very, uh, yeah. They really didn't do much. And yeah. so it's weird because I view that now, and it just seems positively it feels like second edition DD and, or first edition. It's crazy because we had this conversation before, and like you went back, and the number of characters that we'd made that were like dwarven fighters, barbarian, you know, yeah, just like same character class over and over again. But like, you know, we had such a good time with it, right? Like, yeah, you know. And now Beowulf makes a great point. He said, uh, "You guys played a very trim version of three E, though no prestige classes, very little multiclassing." Yeah, we and, we, and that, we occasionally use prestige classes. We just didn't like them. Well, they the problem with, the problem with prestige <laughs> classes is that by and large, prestige classes to me felt. Um, well, they were so specific, and we've always been kind of like a generous group. Yeah, they've been very specific. We've been very generic. But also, like, a lot of the prestige classes, like, were very campaign-specific. Oh, yeah. And people would just pick them up and splash it, you know, for yeah. whatever it felt cheap. reason. Oh, yeah. it, it's, it's why, like, we get upset about things like Leshies. Right. Right? It's, yeah. Just, it's, it's not that it's a Leshy. It's that it feels like, and here's a Leshy out of nowhere, right? Yeah. Like, where did this thing come from, right? right. And like, so, I, like, yeah, if you're, like, a Purple Knight or whatever it was. Yeah, like, for example, if we were playing a Forgotten Realms campaign, and we had a fighter or a paladin. Yeah, and you're in Cormier. Like that, yeah. And you're in Cormier, the Dale Lands, and you get involved with, you know, King Azun or. Oh, side uh, note, 3.0 Forgotten Realms was amazing. Yeah. You know, or 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 a Kaladini or any of the people, yeah. um, Van, Vanguard Jadass. And then, like, you get involved with it, and then it's like they induct you into the Purple Knight. That's awesome. And then you take the Purple Knight Prestige yeah. class. That's awesome. Yeah. I actually, now I'm thinking about that it. That would be awesome. I have it on my bucket list to be a Harper. And I need to do that. <laughs> at one of these, I haven't done it. And we've played how many uh, Forgotten Realms? Second like, edition, third like, edition? Like Forgotten Realms. We've definitely played Forgotten Realms, but we're like based in Silvery Moon. I know. And like, and like, we've the, dealt the, with Harpers. The game started with me passing you a note that was from signed those who harp. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So uh, that is where I think pre- list. that is where I think prestige classes. Uh, well, that's are what they were intended for, and that is what they were intended for. Yeah. Um, and instead, but but even forget prestige classes. The 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 way that people misused and abused the system is just something that we just didn't do. Yeah. No, you know, we didn't care about like the we'll splash this. But I mean, the, 
the, the, the builds. You know, we were just never big at building the builds. Yeah. Beowulf says, I played a purple knight in 3E, ended up marrying into the royal family, and retired as a demigod who protects Cormier. Fucking amazing. That sounds fucking amazing. <laughs> That's great. That sounds so I, amazing. I want, I want to live like that. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> um, I mean, Cormier is... Probably, if not our favorite country. I mean, I love a lot. I mean, I I love. This is, sorry, Bob. I I don't know this stuff. The Silver Marches, I know Harper, which are no longer this. called that. Uh, um, they were for a period of time. They were called the well, Silver Marches. They they've disbanded the accord. Yeah, because like King Alblud of many arrows did something. And I, mean, I don't. He I, was an know, asshole. Listen, Sundar didn't get supported. Let me, let me be very clear. If if I ever played in Forgotten Realms again, fourth the spell plague never happened. And oh yeah, yeah. We're playing I, third edition, and I don't give a yeah, shit what yeah. happened in fifth edition. Yeah. yeah, this is this is fifth third edition, edition is is basically. Third edition, and the spell plague didn't happen. Got it. Except we still have Dragonborn. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, it's got to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I want. I want. I yeah, like. The, I mean, I love the North. I like the Silver March. Yeah. Like, Cormier is awesome too. It's hard. Ugh. Yeah. I. I'm. I'm very. I love. I love. I, I wish love, Cormier was a little bit closer, honestly, because well, I would it's like actually to like, not that far from the Western Heartlands. It's really not that far. I mean, it's right at the southern end of Anorak. It's really not that far. I mean, yeah, compared yeah, when you yeah, you, yeah, yeah Delphanor. When you start, <laughs> yeah, but when you start thinking about other places, oh yeah, yeah, Island, yeah, yeah, for sure, for it's, sure, it's, it's pretty far. But I actually like that area to the east. I love Cormier. I mm. love the Dale Lands. Oh, Dale Orleans. Lands is amazing, and I I love the Moon Sea. I mm-hmm. think it's like such a cool. It the Moon Sea was a part of my inspiration for Northern Reaches. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, sort of a cold land, yeah, a harsh land, yeah. an unforgiving land where people kind of live hard scrabble. You know, lives. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyways, um, but we, but Derek hates lore. Bitch, don't no, we, me, we just hate bad lore. Yeah, <laughs> I, I literally said that. I said I heard, <laughs> in the Discord. I said, "Correction, Derek." I did a strikeout. Yeah. I was like, "Derek hates bad lore that doesn't matter." That's yeah. what I said. Um, anyways, uh, but Cormier is awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. Long live King Azun the Fifth. Because uh, I think I think the fourth dies. Well, I don't know. We're, we're back to third edition as far as I'm concerned. So. No, I think the fourth is dead in, in third, third edition. edition. I yeah. think he was alive in second edition. Okay. And he died fighting a demon dragon. Oh, and so his, that was a his, thing. His, Cormier son, had a whole his demon infant thing. son is the yeah. king to be. There's a series of books and about that. And his daughter, Alucer, yeah, that sounds right. is the, the queen regent or something. Yeah. Or something, and then King Azun the Fifth is like a baby. That's right. So it's kind of like a situation like that. I don't. Yeah. Know. That could be remembering, uh, misremembering. It's been a while. Anyways, um, I see we could do a whole stream on Forgotten Realms. You guys could. And you do. guys could. <laughs> what? Not you, Bob. I mean, I would listen. Hey, Bob, in. you saw the movie. I have seen the movie. I was in Forgotten Realms. I, I was. You played. I, you play Baldur's Gate. Look, I would love to I, listen. You know what? I don't actually know all that much about Baldur's Gate. It was always a little too south for me. I actually don't know that much about. I mean, I played the first game. But I know more about Neverwinter than I do about Baldur's Gate. I know more about who the Neverwinter. hell talks about Neverwinter. Yeah, it's up there. Um, uh, uh, oh, Beowulf! I, I saw your comment earlier about a um, a uh, uh, more ethically neutral L five R. You should look at Hackmaster because honestly, like like the way those systems were. I'm not. Be, I'm not joking. I'm serious. Like like a lot of the social systems in that game. Uh, really reminded me of more of like a, a European kind of base mm. uh, L5R, right? And that's one of the reasons I kind of like that game is because like I love L5R. It's um, like mechanically, it's amazing. Uh, I love the theme and the lore of Rocker Gun. You know, that's great too. But it is so specific yeah. for me. Like sometimes I just want to like kill orcs. Yeah. You know? I mean, you could be, we could have been a crab. You could have gone killed a go- a Oni. And- yeah, so much weight. I mean, if we were doing I like- I tried like, that in the first uh, game. Um, um, RA. Is that yeah? Uh, adventure? No, it's air. Air. Adventures in. Oh, adventures in Roku God. God, that would be one thing. Yeah. Um, Samurai attack. You know, or if I was, if we were doing that crab campaign. Yeah, right? crab campaign. But like, you know, the problem is, is like, yeah, but lines to the wall. That could have been cool too. Oh yeah, the lines are coming. <laughs> right. You know, that'd be kind of cool. Um, that would actually that would be a great one. <laughs> that the problem with that is that's like a milestone moment, right? Sure. Because the crab had been trying forever. To get everyone to the wall, yeah. so the idea that the lions actually showed up right. to fight the demons would be like you know season seven kind of shit. Correct. It's a, it's, a, it's a, right. It's the last battle, and it takes place in one episode, and then uh, it could play darkness, and then the and then the NPC shows up and kills. Yeah, you can't see anything. We just right. we'd have all the unicorn out in front um, uh, taking the charge. Yeah, uh, uh, Mystic says uh, Forgotten Realms lore episode where Bob asks all the questions. So Bob, you said your favorite game that you've played is Legend of the Five Rings. As a player, yes. But your favorite game that you ran as a GM is Dragon Maid. Right is now. Dragon Maid. Mm-hmm. My favorite game that I've played is D and D three point oh. Yep. Ooh, yeah, that's a hard one for you. GM. Well, I feel like it's got to be like okay, a PBT. I gotta give game. it to D and gotta give it to D and D three as my favorite play. 
playing game. Sure, sure. Because it was just so many great experiences. Yeah. That being said, like the single greatest, because like, I mean, you know, Brennard, Asher DeLon, I mean, all those stuff. But my favorite game to, D- and I DM'd most of those yeah. moments, but my favorite game to run is probably not D&D 3.0, yeah, especially I, I in a modern context, yeah. because I just, designing all those monsters and NPCs and all the, the stats is too much. I loved running 3.0. I would say it's not my favorite game to run. I would say my favorite game to GM or run is Blades in the Dark or <laughs> Forge in the Dark. That makes sense. Although Legend of the Five Rings was fun. Legend of the Five Rings had one problem. You had to roll dice. I had to roll dice. Mm. And in that game, that's particularly tilting. It's actually a, a super pain in the ass. Actually, like, you're rolling the way a player rolls. Yeah, let me be very clear about this. My biggest complaint with Forbidden Lands is not the willpower farming. My biggest complaint with Forbidden Lands is why is the GM rolling dice? Mm. It's a dice pool system. It's designed for pushing. Why is this a mechanic that the GM it's has so to use? weird? It's so weird. And then you get in these weird opposed die rolls. And, I mean, yeah. like, mm. it's just very strange to me. Like, just make it a player focused thing mm. and make it all about them. So when I describe, you know, the the orc charging at you and slashing down at you, now I go, well, the game has parry. And like, I get it. It would change the whole thing. I hate, like, it's, it, I, I, I will countenance to it in D&D where I just, you know, grab a D20 and roll it. Well, also, and say, oh, I hit, I miss, or whatever like that. D&D is trying to be, like, at the same field for everyone. Yeah, but, right? like, 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 Forbidden Lands specifically is like, this is a monster. It's got different rules. Why couldn't it have this different role? Right. But <laughs> but roll, and, and then again, and there, this is another, this is a style of my GM, which you guys have not experienced mm-hmm. because you haven't run it. But, like, you know, well, the only, I mean, the only one of the only people I know, other people who knows it, is um, Alia, who runs it, who mm-hmm. runs Forbidden Lands. Um Enemies are, be able, are, 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 are supposed to be able to push. Oh. And I think that's very stupid. How does that work? They just push. And why wouldn't they? To yeah. get success. You, yeah. mean, D- then, you mean NPCs? That, that's like the spellcaster NPCs. problem oh, okay. of like third edition. Yeah. Yes, it's the spellcaster problem of third or edition. Fifth. And right. D20. Hey, my... I wonder my, if that's this case in Dragon Bane. I, I didn't think that was. My NPC caster... I bet you they, they got rid of it because it's dumb. Yeah, it, it is dumb. I don't remember them. I, at least I never did it. Yeah. So I so so I don't like it in Forbidden Lands. Yeah. But I really disliked it in Legend of the Five Rings because I the you have all these symbols and opportunities. My my players don't care about that. And quite frankly, I don't care about yeah. that. Yeah. You know, that's super weird. Now, so, Grant. So, so do you not just like now, uh, like if I had maybe like you know an NPC who was basically like a PC, even if the party wasn't against them. Maybe I could see them having dice, but you know, have minions or have adversaries that are like on a lesser scale where it's just you no know, dice rolls involved. So my question, and I think Bailiff brings it up here, is like he actually likes rolling dice as a GM. Do you actually do you actually not like rolling I dice? Then actively yeah, dislike it. But when you're dice. a player, you're like, that's the way I want to do of things. Of course, that's what makes. But it when exciting. you're a GM, when we play every Friday, you're like, I don't, I shouldn't be rolling at all. You actually don't want to even do it. I don't want to roll at all. So Blaze, I like rolling as a GM, right? I think. So, I don't know. I, I do not. I, I yeah. actively dislike it. Because hmm. you know why? I don't need the spotlight. Yeah. I'm the GM. Mm-hmm. I want it to be about the players. Every, all these other people out there, hmm. these phony-ass fake people who are talking about, it's all about the players. Well, then give it up. Make it mm. about them then. Yeah. You know, you guys were talking earlier, and mm. I was talking about, like, uh, you know, um, and 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 Alia is here. She says, I've had NPCs push on occasion, but not often. Right? So now it's a DM choice. Yeah. And that, I don't that, like that. That gets into a weird soft Yeah, it sure does, buddy. Right. It sure does. Now it's like, are we even playing Forbidden Lands? I right. don't even know. Right. So I don't, I don't. Also I, just the time and just, uh Yeah. So I don't like being able to push because it's like, why, why am I pushing? Yeah. It's pushing just, seems out of place it, for pushing sure. Seems very, yeah, yeah, pushing as, seems as, like very much like a, a, a you know, but players also, got the will. They but, want it more mechanic. like the third right? edition thing where it's like, oh, well, my NPCs. Uh, armor took a point of damage from the push or their, their gear took a point. Of, who cares? Who cares? They're going to be either dead or run away. It's not a real PC. You don't even track yeah. that shit anyways. Yeah. Um, but uh, I agree with Mystics as well. Having the players roll the dice also keeps them engaged. I agree. 100%. Ro- rolling. Hmm. You'll very rarely find a player who isn't engaged <laughs> if you're asking them to roll their dice mm-hmm. and it lets them take kind of control of the situation and the narrative. And at the end of the day, I want their successes to be theirs yeah, yeah. and I want their failures to, to be, be theirs. theirs. We talk all the time. One of the worst feelings that you can have in D&D is when you have the high AC character, but the DM's just rolling hot, and you're just like, man, I just don't feel like I can do anything. So uh, Cephalod is saying that he's thinking that you rolling the dice means you're giving up the outcome to the fate, but what you're saying is, 
Oh, I, no. I'm giving the player the choice for the outcome. Not not that you're just giving it up. Like you're, you're not ruling yeah, it. I still want it to be random. Yeah, yeah. He, he's shifting the resolution mechanic. Correct. Right correct. I, I, I want, think. I, yeah, I, want, yeah. I want. I want. I want the player to be responsible for their active, like, like, and then I want the player also to be responsible for their defensive or their reactive right. check. It's like like you know how you make a save and throw. Yeah, Dex to make a save and throw, yep. but you don't do that for armor class. Mm -hmm. But you could. You, you absolutely could. Identical. Yeah. Yep. yep. It, right. it, it is exactly identical. We tried that at once. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, let, let's let me let's answer one's question in a second. Let me. Mark I'll, says, I'll be right back. Think about upgrading <laughs> thumbnails and titles, Derek. Uh, oh, you're going to the bathroom. Um, all right. So Bob's gonna Bob's gonna shoot over to the uh, bathroom. I guess we're going back to forgotten rooms. <laughs> we're going back to forgotten realms. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite area of forgotten realms? You know, because there are areas of forgotten realms that uh, you know I don't know as much about. You know, I don't know. Oh, there's so much I don't know. Uh, about that. You know, like I don't really know that much about like the Vilhan Reach. No. Um, I know a little bit about Sembia and Aglaron and Thay. I know um, like things that came from there. Yeah, but um, you know, it's uh, it is it is it is an amazing world. I do appreciate that they're you know they're making Thay the the big bad guys again, at least with the media stuff like the movies and stuff. Oh, really? Oh yeah, well, they, uh, you saw the movie. Oh yeah, that's right. They were from Thay. I, I yeah. just kind of forgot about it, but yeah. Uh, uh, I am. Sarek loves more because they went through that kind of like now we're merchants uh, yeah. and we're gonna sell adventurous magic items. That which, was the third. But no, but I kind of like appreciate. I, like, the I, I appreciate the it. evil capitalistic empire. It was kind of nice. I you appreciate know? it. I'm not. I'm not dogging it. But I also appreciate like oh no 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 we're we're just gonna be assholes and right. we're just gonna turn everyone undead. Um, <laughs> what uh, self confessed cynic had another super chat it says most GMs love rolling. I, however, actually agree with Derek. Wow, wow, I'm surprised by that. I vastly prefer having a resource as a GM instead of roles, one that the players can see. I, I do agree with that. I mean, mm -hmm. like, like I'm fine playing in a game where I don't have any meta currencies or anything like that, and the players can just, you know, uh, I just I attack you, make a defensive role. You attack me, make a defensive role. But that being said, I, I, I do love when players can sort of manage and see sort of the resource pool yeah. that I have. And I think that that's well, really That's really one reason I'm kind of like excited about Daggerheart with Dagger like how fear yeah. and stuff the, like the that works. The fear pool I think know? is a great way. Um, I, Ooh, that's an interesting. So Boothby says, Waterdeep was always our main neck of the Forgotten Realms wood. And uh, Alia says, or uh, sorry, Sarek uh, agreed to, to Waterdeep being one of the favorite cities in the game. Yeah, we didn't go there too often. I was not uh, a fan of Waterdeep. Mike Babuda was super in the Waterdeep. He liked Waterdeep, he, he, he liked the big city. I had the set. I have yeah, Waterdeep City yeah. of Spenders box set, second edition AD&D. Yeah. But it's huge. Waterdeep is is weird because it's it's kind of like what you always complain about Absalom. Waterdeep is actually like what a city with magic would look like. Sure. So I mean, like they do have like like toilets that work and right. magic lights. Yeah, and, their 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 cemetery is literally an extra dimensional bag right. that they basically throw people into. It, it is actually a high level magical city. Right. And people want for not there. Yeah, but it, it, I don't know. It just it. I mean, I don't know. But yeah. that I'm not saying that is necessarily a good thing. Right, because yeah. it's just like so high fantasy, right? And it, it, you always have the issue. Like this is the flaw for realms, right? Like there's like fifty level twenty gods in Waterdeep who are literally gods and married to other gods. Right. Yeah. It's like what? What are they doing? Right. I mean, and, I mean, I mean, if you go by the third edition logic, I mean, Kelvin. I mean, I think he's dead now, but in like the five E lore, but like Kelvin was like a level 37 character. Right. And he was blessed by Mistara. Right. And he was married to one of the seven sisters. Right. And his prestige class was broken because the requirement for the prestige class was to marry a god or something. Yeah. It, you know, like, it was, you know. <laughs> yeah. What, what are we doing here? Right. Right. Because I mean, it makes it really hard to be like, why are we adventuring? That is the biggest problem with Forgotten Realms. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I will give you going all the way back and you played in this adventure. Which one? Oh, you played in this adventure. I bought my mom one at bingo when i was like 14 years old and she gave me 50 dollars mm -hmm. because she won you know she, who knows probably back then it was like 500 dollars or a thousand dollars life-changing money but she gave me 50 bucks and i had wanted to buy the ad and d second edition forgotten realms box set forever mm -hmm. up in comic specialties on 185th street and i went up and i <laughs> bought that book and we were playing a campaign at the time but I really want to play Forgotten Realms. So the airship that you guys uh, have just got. Yeah, that's when we ended the campaign. I that, ended the campaign. That was after the session where we uh, were itemizing our 19 barrels of salted fish. Correct. You guys crashed. Because that was on the airship. You guys crashed in the air and then Forgotten Realms. And then you were like, okay, this is kind of lame. I'm like, okay. Well, to, we'll to be clear, Derek literally was like, your airship crashes and you find yourself in the Forgotten Realms. Yes. That was the transition. I mean, I was like 13. Bob's like, it works for me. I'm, that would totally work for me. <laughs> so... um, 
but we basically that didn't work out. And then you guys made new characters. Well, the Forgotten, in Forgotten Realms, Realms, the Forgotten in the Forgotten Realms, it worked. So the Forgotten Realms box set came with maps. It came with um, yeah, those boxes uh, com- campaign setting, and it also came it came with a book called Running the Realms. It was like a GM's guide to the realms. But it came with a book called Shadowdale. It was the yellow book, mm-hmm. and it was a d- deep dive into Shadowdale. But it also had an adventure which took place under the old Skull Inn and mm-hmm. the old Skull in Shadowdale. There is a scene in that book, very, this is very uh, straight out of second edition, do sec machina. Like you're halfway through, and basically there's a scene where it's like, feel if the PCs are getting their you know butts kicked, you know, it doesn't say that, but if the PCs, feel free to include this scene. And while the PCs are exploring the dungeon, Elminster, who is right. like the level 50 Archmage of the universe, shows up Accurate. with a dog, and he's like trying to get it to perform tricks. And he's got a wand, and he keeps going, heal. Heal, heal to the dog, but he's holding a heal wand. So every time he runs it, when a PC gets healed, and then he looks around, and he goes, "Oh, I didn't realize that we were had any company. Well, let's find someplace more private." And then he disappears. That's such oh. a second edition Ed Greenwood what thing. What in the is that? Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Um, wow. So did you guys answer yeah, what in the Ed Gre- what in the Ed Greenwood was that? <laughs> did you guys answer London's question from above before I left for the bathroom? I did not. Uh, He's like, question on this channel's journey. What's the one thing that surprised you the most about the channel or and or the community? Well, one that there's a community, <laughs> two that there's still a channel. <laughs> uh, what has surprised me the most about the channel? Well, I would say the one that the channel took off for me because well, sure. I really thought this was going to be more of a us just. Like my podcast, just yeah. a couple of guys hanging out, mm-hmm. play. We have some fun. We record it. Twenty people like it. That's yeah. fun. And then the community, by how receptive it is, how encouraging it is, how I was able to grow with it. I mean, because I mean, we see each other once a week to play. That's fine. But like now, I'm getting like two x the mm-hmm. growth because I'm playing on other days and I'm running games for other people, so I'm getting three, two, three x the growth. And everyone's so encouraging and play this game and this game and random games that you guys aren't maybe you guys don't even want to play. I don't know. And so I think the, the chant the community is the most impressive to me is how how well I can how well I can expand my TTRPG knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um I would say the thing that the thing that surprised me the most about the channel is I mean, as a content creator, it it was I mean, I knew this. But it was really surprising to me just to see, you know, I thought, you know, I grew up, I grew up in a time and a place where like TTRPG, you know, TTRPGers were different. Mm. You know, we were smarter. We were more bookish. Yeah, we were the nerdy outcast. We were the nerdy outcast. And I really thought that that community would be different than the other community. And it turns out they're not. And I don't mean that to you, the viewer who's watching into hour three of this. I mean, like that, you know. The sizzle cells and thumbnails and shock and you know shock jock stuff and and like you know, three feet to brim to mastermind your five e game and like that that is what draws in the views even in that t- like obviously that it's like if, if I was done if I was doing like a celebrity drama channel mm-hmm. that would make some degree of sense mm-hmm. success what is Kim Kardashian doing next what cra- you know you won't believe it okay I get it but like when it comes to TTRPGs. I, I just expected it to be different. Well, and th- it wasn't. I think that, um, you know, role playing games have gotten a lot more mainstream since we started as kids, right? Like, yeah, a lot more mainstream. Yeah, fifth edition was a major game changer. It made DD accessible to the people who weren't just nerdy outcasts. And then Crick Roll and Stranger uh-huh. Things. You're watching a DD YouTube video. I gotta imagine you're at least somewhat invested, and you're you're more than just a casual viewer. I, I mean, I, I think we're just conflating a couple of things, right? Because because these people clearly enjoy the game. Sure, I'm but not saying like, that they don't. I'm simply just saying that they're not looking at the way we look at it. Absolutely, they look at D and D the way they look at other entertainment, which makes complete sense when you think about it because they'll go and they'll click on the click baby sure. ads because it's all entertainment, right? So so that was that was what surprised me about that. Um, I guess the other thing that surprised me then as a kind of a corollary to that is that our channel never got that big. I mean, obviously we're, you know, almost 12,000 people is huge compared to where we were to be, but, but on a percentage basis, mm-hmm. we have one of the largest Patreons mm-hmm. in existence. Yes. Like there are people out there who have Patreons that are, you know, a thousand people and they have 300,000 subs. We have 
four hundred. Yeah, and we we don't even have twelve thousand. Yeah, so yeah, that's an incredible uh, so, conversion. Rate. So we 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 don't see many people, but the people we do find really engage with us. That's true. That has been that that was kind of surprising as well. Um, you know, because I didn't even know what Patreon was when I started the YouTube mm-hmm. channel. So I was just envisioning a world where you know, uh, you know, people were watching videos and right. getting excited. Getting getting your thirty cents a getting month. My thirty cents a month, you know. But ideally, getting oh, he got a hundred thousand views. Do the math on that. That's like five hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Well, that's pretty good. I could do that. You know, that's worth it. But uh, for the community, what has surprised me about the community that hasn't self destructed? I guess we can learn anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, because Amen. well, because or we haven't completely ruined or that. we haven't ruined it or we haven't deleted because um, that, was, that was George's. George's <laughs> it was just like Smith hasn't deleted it yet. We, I thought about it a couple times. We are building <laughs> a community of people who have different backgrounds, different beliefs. All over the world. All over the world. It's kind of cool. Right. So normally you get these communities together and everybody's kind of marching in the same direction. Right. And so the frictional points of interface are very low. But here we have people, I mean, we have people who, you know, basically like would be fine if their game didn't ever have combat again Mm -hmm. in the same discord with people who want to just basically play, you know, a a, a skirmish. I mean, Blades in the Dark won March Madness. Right. I still don't know how that happened. <laughs> I actually don't know how that happened either. Apparently it was very strong on Twitter. Mm. Um, who someone ran the numbers. But it's and funny because Blaze of the Dark didn't didn't I think it made Elite Eight last year. I don't no, think it, I don't think it made tw- Final Four. There was a there was a Patreon I mean, votes point, versus Twitter way. votes. It was huge on Twitter. Look, look, Blaze at, the look at the difference a year. Last year, finals. Yeah. Pathfinder Second Edition. Makes sense. Versus Legend of the Five Rings. Makes sense. Pathfinder Second Edition wins. Yeah. This year. Last year you had the Twitter votes too. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had half of what we have now. Mm-hmm. This year, this year, finals, Blaze in the Dark, Fabula Ultima. Yeah. It's just it's it, just, it, it, didn't expect that. Yeah. Yeah. London makes Kudos a great, to those games, L- by the way. London makes a great games. example. PBX and N D, which are theoretically both Pathfinder 2 games. Yeah. Um yeah. Uh, side by side. Yeah. And PBX and New Dawn yeah. couldn't be more different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't even it's it's not even fair to say that they're even like quite cl- close to the same game. I mean, I remember Ged playing Northern Reaches and that in itself, the sentence is nonsensical. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh Blaze of the Dark Beep F you by three points. It yep. was very, very close. It I was mean, very close. I was shocked that Fabio Ultima didn't win. I was actually shocked too. And that's how strong the Twitter vote from Blades in the Dark. Now I'm going to run a different. And I love. Mixture. I just said that's my my favorite game to GM of all time. I kind of. Although I've only played it twice, I kind of want to play it again. No. Damn you! Damn you! Damn you, Emmanuel! I forgot. I have to. I have to roll in for Fabio Ultima. Nope. Okay. I got to give it to Blades in the Dark. Hmm. I just don't ever want to roll. Derek hates rolling. I hate rolling. I want to play Blades in the Dark again. Like maybe a little more. Realistic than just like one or two shot that I played on the channel. Oh, we got a nice uh, tip Lollipop. There from Mr. Lollipop Candy. Lollipop Candy. Thank you, Lolly. Uh, to the studio, but more importantly, to the Knights and to the community for providing an environment uh, for sharing experiences and fostering growth. I'll be catching most of this on the VOD. Well, that's what it's all about. Uh, that is what it's all about. And Lolly, you're, you're a big part of that for sure. And, mm-hmm. you know, we really appreciate you sticking around with us for this long. But, um, uh, I, you just basically hit on the, the high points there, Lolly, which is um, it's about the community. Mm-hmm. It's not about the Knights. We're part of the community. Mm-hmm. I, I Sometimes I don't even feel like I we lead the community. I, there's other people. No, I, I far more influ- there's far more influential people on there than you or I or any of us. I mean, us. I feel like we're playing for Ben Lance because of Alia. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, at this point, Bob's literally just a player. Like He's just um, joining other people's games. I, right? I am <laughs> playing so many uh, different games. But the environment to share experiences and foster growth. Because that's, again, yeah. that's what that is important to me. Yeah. I, 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 that's I, what Derek's I, always wanted to do is I like people keep to, people playing RPGs. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and just, you know, and I said something the other day and Ben. You Have know, fun but, the right way. Ben, <laughs> ben on his way out. Because I did say, look, I, I'm never going to tell you because this is the difference between like me and Ben. I said, I'm never going to tell you to not have these pointless pedantic arguments because I love them. But let's be very clear about this. It doesn't matter. Just play the damn game. And Ben was like, so much this. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Like, I mean, that's that's yeah. the case. But yes, uh, Alia, rolling, rolling dice as a GM seems to be Derek's red line. I can, I can abide it in a D20 game. Sure. Because it's so quick. Yeah. But if it's, if it's some sort of more complex 
system. Uh, also, like, there's like, a little bit of a, like, like a I, fuck you in D20, you know? Yeah, I well, think yeah, you, you oh, get no, behind no. that. Yeah, I can get behind that. You mean like when I roll and I roll yeah, high and fuck you? because you're a little bit like, fuck you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a little adversarial. Yeah. Rolling the dice as a GM is a little adversarial. Right. Because you're kind of- And that root- works in D20 because it's kind of like, like, yeah, you're here to get fucked up. Like, you know? Let me put it this way. If I was attacking you with my cool monster yeah. and I rolled the D20 and I rolled high- Yeah. I, I, w- I would probably be cheering and getting in your face a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah. But if we weren't doing that, right. and instead I describe the creature attacking you, and I ask you to yeah. make a defensive roll or yeah. an armor roll, now the PCs and you, are like and you yeah. rolled a two or a three, yeah. I don't think I would be mocking no. you. No. No. Right? You, you you would have a tone of dire, you know, yeah. like, oh, it's getting So I think mad. there's some, like, shot and Freuda that goes yeah. hand in hand with D&D yeah. of being like, yeah. And it works. You guys are going to get fucked up. Or, like, like you know, when I roll the monster, because I love rolling monsters hit points, you know, like. You get D- that big A. In D&D. And you're like, you're like, oh, it's just a, it's just a, a skeleton. You're like, oh, but how many hit points do they have? Well, they only have D12. You're like, oh, so average of six. And I roll, like, 12, 11, 12. And you're like, is that just happening? Yeah. This is the skeleton elite guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> ah, yes, these were the Pharaoh's elite god. They were the ones who had the honor of joining him in the afterlife, and now their undead yeah. bones guard his yeah, treasure horse. Garthic yeah. Iron Nuts. Yeah, Garthic Iron Nuts. But um, so, but when it, when it is a game that is either Man, not- London, we try, but the, the space is so small. So small. Uh, when the game is not adversarial, or when the game is, has a, like even Fabulous Ultima, what game I love. When I look down at a monster sheet and I want to attack you, it's like, okay, I want to do this monster attack. Okay. Uh, okay, it's, a, it's, a, it's agility plus strength. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the strength is a D10. The agility is a D8. So let me get a D10 and a D8, and I'm adding three. So D8 plus D10 plus three. Like, the fact that I have to, like, build that, even that little die pool as a GM really irritates me. Yeah. Because I don't – I want as little of loading time mm-hmm. on my side – of the screen as possible. I respect that. But I, I think your point of player agency is a stronger one. Yeah. Right. Cause, because particularly in a game like F U, like like D D, the camera is always shifting because it's not really about the players. It's sure. not really about anything. It's Dungeons and Dragons. Right. It's kind of a fucking shit show. Correct. But like like F U, L five R, Blades and Dark, these are narrative games. They are about the players. Right. And they're always about the players, even when the players mm-hmm. are getting fucked. Right. Like when the players are getting fucked, it's like, oh man, this is a dramatic moment for and your character getting that fucked. Reminds me of Root a lot. Yeah. And, and I think that that's my problem. That's a good point. I think that's my problem with kind of modern versions of D and D. It's like modern versions of D and D have a lot of painting the yeah, picture. They're that, the fuck you. They, they well, they they like to pretend that they aren't. That's true. And yeah. they and they make you feel like you're the hero in the narrative game. Yeah. Right. Like D and D wants to paint itself as being Fabula Ultima. Right. And I was describing like someone was describing like sacrifice and why they didn't like it, and they were like it means more to me you know, sacrifice from Fabula Ultima. Right, where your oh, character yeah. can go out yeah. oh, and then you that. can choose to die and go out in a blaze of glory and do something amazing. Mm-hmm. And somebody on the channel was like. I I don't like that because it feels cheap, like you didn't earn it. He's like, I would much rather, you know, it happen. And I can get that point. I understand what they're saying. Right. But here's the problem. You're you're thinking of the is the common magic the gathering problem. You're thinking of the ceiling, not the floor. Because mm-hmm. in your mind, you're playing your D D game, which right. is real, not everyone has sacrificed themselves every session. No, 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 no. The party, you know, your 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 fighter goes, get out of here. Yeah. The the ring must survive. And you're like, I'm gonna hold them off. And you're like, now of course. In Fabio Ultima, your character could be low on hit points. You go in, the, the thing is collapsing, the clock is ticking, your character gets dropped to zero, and I'm like, are you surrendering? You go, no, I'm sacrificing. You know, and then we describe your character's epic final okay. moments while you hold off the horde of Baylors as the, the party escapes. Naturally be a horde of Baylors. Of course. So um, why aren't they teleporting? Because pass. they must accept this yeah, challenge. No, I mean, like, look, Lord of the Rings, Gandalf. <laughs> The ba- the ba- no, the Balrog yeah, killed him. Yeah, oh, yeah, Gandalf was out of hit points. Ba- ba- Gandalf was out of hit points. The, 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 what you saw there was not Gandalf. That makes sense, right? There's a shit ton of orcs. Gandalf was in Malay. Clearly, he's low on hit points. Right. He. I mean, this is old school D and D. He had what 16 hit points. Yeah. Right. I mean, he was a high level wizard, so that's probably about that. Yeah, but his race may have given him insane stats. Maybe, and he had he the ring. Okay, he whatever. Story, and he had he's still under like 30. Okay. My point is. <laughs> The Balrog killed Gandalf on that ring, yeah. uh, on that bridge, and then he, Gandalf chose to sacrifice, surre- uh, sacrifice yeah. and then he was like, oh, cool. Yeah, you destroy the thing, and then you're falling through the abyss, and you fight your f- enemy because you're you actually back up, and then you climb all the way back up the thing. And climb then you back up him, is clutch and, and making that awesome. And then you die. Right. <laughs> right? And you're like, oh, shit. Now, some people might say that doesn't feel earned, and I can understand that to a certain extent. But what I'm saying before is when you're thinking about it 
happening for real. Yeah. Like you're playing a D20 game where you're rolling dice and I go, get out of here, go. So you're and then you're, the floor comes and then you're, in. You know, you're like, I draw my sword and you're like, cool. And you go up and I'm like, well, the ogre crits you and you're dead. <clears throat> and then he goes and kills. And then everybody else yeah. just takes double move actions and engages the party and catches up. And you're like, well, that didn't play out the way I thought it was going to. And it's like, so your big moment, because in your moment, you're envisioning you holding off the, you know, the, the horde of enemies while your right. enemy escapes. But you're playing D20 and it goes to shit right. often. And so modern <laughs> D20 games. And then you get mocked. Yeah. And they, oh, yeah. Then you get heart The team's like, bitch. They'd be like, that was dumb. Yeah. Just the run player's away. like, gee, yeah. thanks. Yeah. The player's <laughs> like, well, I, now we're really dead because you just fucking killed yourself. Thanks, asshole. Like, so. <laughs> Go get me some beer. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to need it because we're going to be rolling characters here in five minutes. <laughs> See, that's d and <laughs> <laughs> So modern DD, right, it paints this po- – modern DD wants you to think that you can play Fabio mm-hmm. Ultima in it. Right. And it, I, I, don't, I don't think it can. And so older versions of D&D at least knew what they were about, right. which was this heroism shit is, is for the birds. Right. Your character could just die. Third edition is sort of a meeting point in the middle. And that's probably why I enjoy it because it, it's it, actually it, interesting. Third edition could still totally be like, well, the mind flayer shows up and uh, you're right. all dead, <laughs> like before 100%. you even get the chance to go. But on the other hand, third edition, you know, you get a little bit of you, you don't die at zero. You get a little bit of wiggle room. Mm. Your character's stats are forty six. I mean, not as much compared to modern you, games. You, no, but just you, compared to base, you have feet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like your characters were definitely a little bit more super heroic in third I, edition. I, I think, yeah. You're right. Third edition is that middle ground, but it's important to know it's the middle ground, but not progressing towards more narrative. No. Third edition is the middle ground swinging back, actually. Right. Yeah. Because we talked about this before, like back to the dungeon. Third edition was like, hey, listen, we like some of the second edition stuff, but we want to get back yeah. into fighting orcs and yeah, stuff. The, 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 when third edition released, they had all these treatises in, in Dragon Magazine, which was like their theme was back to the dungeon. They were telling their writers back to the dungeon. They're like, basically, they felt like. I mean, this this is fifth edition. Yeah, every edition of D anD D happens like this. If you look at second edition, it's starting to become which, like the Star Treks, right? Yeah, every yeah, yeah. So odd that, one's good, yeah. <laughs> that, right? So at the end of first edition, you had the Dragonlance saga, and for those of you who don't know, the Dragonlance adventures are literally you playing the book, mm-hmm. right? And it's like you, you use pre gen characters that are characters from the book. It's extremely scripted. It's a very linear adventure, but you get to play out the book, right? Okay. But then by the time we got to second edition in the campaigns, by the end of it, you had things like um, uh, Planescape, and you had things like right Ravenloft. They were much more narrative dare oh, yeah. i say railroady so as a reaction to that third edition came out and they said let's stop with the narrative railroad we back to the dungeon let's make our adventures you know sunless citadel forge of fury let's let's you know return to the temple of Em. here's a random dungeon Liter- in your dmg literally return to the temple of elemental yes. evil great adventure okay and by the way first edition dmg random dungeon generator. Mm-hmm. second edition DMG, like no random dungeon. Yeah. Third edition. I don't remember it was in the second. Third edition DMG. Edition DMG. Third edition DMG, random dungeon jitter. Fourth edition DMG, no random dungeon jitter. Fifth edition D&D, random dungeon, random dungeon, dungeon jitter. And it's because fifth edi- third edition was a reaction to the over-narrativism uh-huh. of second edition. And, and then, fifth edition was a reaction to them losing their ass. And then fifth edition was a reaction to the over-narrativism of fourth edition. Yeah. And, and So what's coming out next? Well, we have no idea. <laughs> because Watsi is like if terrified. If it's going to come out. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, what's coming out next? Let us know. <laughs> um, uh, look at Nate's comment. Nate. Nate says, just found you guys last week. Haven't even played a TTRPG before. Wow. Why, why are you here? I mean, but welcome, I been, but why are you binging here? Binging your videos about DM philosophies you guys talk about is fascinating. Didn't know it could be so deep. Oh, buddy. Oh, this is so just, deep. Just so deep. So <laughs> deep. That's what I wrote. Um, and RFC says, hot garbage is coming out next. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Woo, great. Look, looking forward to it. No, but it, it, So would you say fifth edition is better than, uh, I don't know, 2024 edition? Well, what's or? funny about it is, the funny about it, if we follow the pattern of editions, right? Then sixth edition right. should be a more pro narrative, pro storytelling, pro linear game because that's what we've seen. Right. And that, that also would, then encounters and, market failure. And that would and, and that does fail. <laughs> I mean the, the Dagger Heart. Second second edition literally bank second edition and fourth edition arguably bankrupt bankrupted yeah. their companies. Yeah. So Basically led to almost the destruction of the line. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas first edition launched the company. Right. And then third edition was a renaissance. It's, yeah. We'd still the baseline. Revitalized the entire we, industry. Right. Revitalized an entire industry. The, right. Literally the, the renaissance, right? The D20 renaissance. And then fifth edition, obviously, is the biggest it's ever been. Right. So anyways, long story short. So sixth edition is going to be hot garbage. But seventh edition. <laughs> 
But the seventh edition, it stood up. It stood. And that's what you're getting, lad. You're getting the strongest edition in these lands. <laughs> it has huge tracks of classes. Huge feats. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up here. Uh, Alia says, "Haha, this might sound insane to many, but I'd probably find the hail mary going to shit and TPKing to be a more fun and memorable experience." I All guess right. it's a mindset thing. Are you here for cinema or are you here for something more grounded? Well, it depends on what you're playing, and it depends on what you're playing. But yeah. I will say that if you're with the right group, hmm. right where, because I agree, what I want out of a moment is something memorable. Oh, yeah, and so even if it goes to shit and the person dies and the party wipes and it was like, well, that fucking just happened. That's to me a win, yeah, because it was such a great moment. It's the, you know, it's the encounter. It's a session that goes right as you expect, right, and everything goes according to plan. And you know, you're like, okay, well, and and you know, we did it. You we might know this. Derek didn't have a specific example there. That's just because we don't remember those. That's true. <laughs> that is actually true. Um, Oh, what does Knights in Exile mean for the channel? Well, Kendall, uh, and this is where we'll wrap up. Uh, mm -hmm. The answer is we don't fully know. Mm -hmm. um, now, we did reach our our, our, our tip, our uh, super chat goal from last time where we were going to get this guy to play some EverQuest 1 with us, um, which was for Aaron and I was like our, like our first real MMO. I mean, we played Meridian 59 and we played MUDs, but... Yeah, you know, that was like the first big, big, big yeah. thing. and and it's and it's such and, and we got our shit pushed in an yeah. EverQuest, and it's and it's still you know and the game is still out there. And Bob has never played an MMO, and so I, I played MMOs, but I've not played something like EverQuest. Was, what MMOs have you? Yeah, played? what have you played? I played. He's gonna say like Call of Duty or something. No, no, that's not an MMO. But I have played. Uh, there was a. Oh, I guess it doesn't count. It's a, it was a phone game. No, it does not count. Just okay. But it was an, it was a mass okay. not a, multiplayer mass it, online no, game. That does not count. Um this is why I said you're gonna say something like Call of Duty. Yeah. Okay. Because so, it's yeah. not gonna be an MMO. It wasn't picture. the same thing then. Right. So so EQ one's coming. And yeah, the reason why I'm, we had those goals, again, we didn't know if people were gonna film out. One of them could have been BG three. It's we are gonna <sighs> I was have, for BG three. We are gonna one. have some Tuesdays it's where we're not going to have a studio because I'm going to cancel the internet. I'm going to yep. take the cameras out. So we're not going to be able to film live. And we are going to hope to get set up in Smith's basement yep. uh, because Smith basically has an entire basement dedicated to just gaming and hanging out. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't disrupt his family to put up, you know, a bunch of microphones and stuff down there. All this stuff is going into a storage unit. Hopefully one day that uh, we can get, a, a, I can get a house or I can get some sort of affordable place or something that we mm -hmm. can make sense where we can bring all this back. But um, for the time being, we're gonna be a little bit pared down. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna kind of rein in some of the the glitz and the glamor. Mm. And we're still gonna try to bring, you know, live conversations. Yeah, none of this is going away, it's just going into storage. And Thursdays are unaffected, you know. Yeah, Thursday, Sunday streams, all that stuff. Still be Tuesday streams, all that. And you know, you might see a couple Tuesday streams where it's, you know, it's just it's just me or whatever like that or maybe something we can we can do a Zoom call or something, yeah. but yeah. you know, we're, we're going to keep it. We're going to keep it going. Um, I do, do want to uh, make a comment yeah. about some stuff in yeah. chat here. We got okay. Lan here talking about Ardwolf like Wow, that is that is the old days. I don't even know Ardwolf. Uh, I know Ardwolf because it was one of the few modes that people actually play. They had more than ten players. Oh, okay. Uh, I might have logged in once or twice. Uh, Derek and I were were big Medivia fans. Medivia, I, baby. I know that's like you know uh, controversy, but right. you know, right? Because isn't there like the whole like he stole the code from DQ? Yeah, or like all the DQ guys got upset because he like took like you know their two thousand lines of code and then added like two hundred thousand to it. But they're like, it doesn't matter. It's derivative, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I see both sides personally. Uh, and also, who cares? It's a like. mic. Squeak, squeak, squeak. And then uh, EverQuest Online Adventures. I actually like that game. It had a lot of potential. EverQuest. Was that the one on the PlayStation? That was the one on the PlayStation. Oh, man. It was like took place like 500 years before the original yeah, AQ. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. It was kind of cool. See, that was like when we started like, that's like when, we, when like MMOs were in councils. I was like, I'm out. That's like when I got like. Was that another line? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, honestly, the last. I'm not even kidding you. The last console I had was PF was a PlayStation 2. Mm -hmm. I never got an X. I had an Xbox 360 and a PlayStation 2, mm -hmm. and then I didn't have. Then I had a place. I didn't have a PlayStation 3. I didn't have the Xbox after that. I never had. Oh, I didn't, same for me. I didn't have a, a Wii. Was my last. So oh, like I had that a Wii. era. Yeah, I had the, so I had a Wii, the same a 360, as me. and a PS2. I used to play Final Fantasy 11 on my Xbox. Okay. And then <laughs> that's horrible. And that then, was great. I have so many good memories. Like I never hot got, summer, cool Pepsi. I never in the got basement. a Wii U. I never, I never got, got a Switch. I never got a. 
I got my brother's Switch. I got, never got an Xbox One. One. I never got whatever came after PS4. that. I never got a PS4. PS5. No, wait, here's the thing. I did buy a PS4. I was on Black Friday. It was on really? sale. Wow. And I bought it. I literally. Did you ever open it? Never opened it. Yeah. You still have it? Yeah. Oh, well, let me rephrase it. I did open it. I didn't open I bought it, and I bought Final Fantasy. And it came with Uncharted. Okay. And Uncharted and Final Fantasy are still in their shrink wrap. The PlayStation did get plugged in. And I uh, used, used a DVD player. No, <laughs> we downloaded Amanda and I when we were dating. We I downloaded one game from it, which was called. Um, it's like a group tower defense game. It's called like. Ooga booga. Tick, That's so random. Tick tock. <laughs> That's attack the most or something. random thing. If somebody in chat could even probably t- help me out here. That, that, that would be incredible if you knew what it was. But it's like a game where. Uh, like there's paths and little monsters come down the path and you have to like build cannon towers and spear towers and try to take out the creatures before they get to you. And you have like freezing towers and flamethrower towers and cannon towers. Anyways. And you wear these like kind of like tiki masks. I, I call it. I call it, awful. I call it tiki man. But <laughs> anyways, Bob's just seeing your video. I like, um, I like tower defense though. No, games. it's not. It's not tower defense. Um, you people. Um, uh, Bob, we have a super chat from uh, from Alia. It says, I'll miss the studio. Here's hoping it returns. Well, this so, one won't. The, I mean, this physical studio will not return. Yeah. But the idea is, again, none of this, again, is going away. It's just going in storage. We spent okay. way too much time and energy on I was off by a little. Okay, it's called blah, 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 Adventures on Tiki Island. Oh. Uh, it is called Pixel Junk Monsters 2. What the hell? That is the name that of the game. That is a very random game that you Pixel bought. Pixel <laughs> Junk Monsters 2. That is the only game. That I owned for the PlayStation 4. It might have even been a PlayStation 3 game. I don't know. I bought it from the online, mm. you know, thing. And it was fun co-op, and we used to play Crush That. And Roll for Combat says, I love that game. Okay. All right. Well, apparently, this <laughs> is a game. But anyway, once Derek has a, I, a, a new place, we will get in the studio back. I love in. that game. Uh, let me just say that I love that game. I uh, I don't know why. It's such a random memory. But I really enjoyed playing Uno on my Xbox 360. I had a game like Uno, I think. Uh, on my old Xbox 360. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah, uh, right. yeah, my Xbox yeah, 360. Not Because yeah. my Xbox, I didn't really use that much. I'm talking about the white. The white one with the green ring. Yep. And the, it was kind of inset. Yeah, 360. I had a lot of downloaded games. I yep. used to play, yeah, they card games. Ones. I used to play Euchre. I used to play um, oh, so Rummy games. and stuff like yeah, that. I used yeah. to play that a lot. I love the Xbox 360 controller. It is by far my favorite I still controller. still use it for like PC. Yeah, it's my favorite controller yeah. of all time. I, you know, because I've, I've had a PlayStation every now and then. Yeah. Um, the Xbox is very nice, very comfortable. Controller. I think my brother has the plug in for like PC. Oh, actually, yeah. um, I got a, this was years ago, obviously, I got a PS3 randomly because you know, I'm not like a diehard console fan, but just typically I enjoy more of the Xbox games. Um, but I wanted to play um, The Last of Us. And it was a, a PlayStation exclusive. So I got a PlayStation and got this game. But I fucking hated the controller. So I actually went out and got a third party Xbox controller that worked for the, for the PlayStation. PlayStation. That's crazy. Because I, I like yeah. I couldn't stand it. And it's so funny because one That's of the funny. reasons why I never got into Halo is because the original Xbox controller was, the original was so awful. bad. And I hated it so much. Remember that penny arcade guy? Yeah, and I couldn't, I mean, I mean, that honestly, like th- at that time, Xbox couldn't stand it. Mm. N64 controller couldn't stand oh, it. Oh, that was awesome. Play, oh, the N64 one. PlayStation was you weird. You would have to move your hand. Yeah, Play, the PlayStation, N64 one you played, you played yeah, you, a certain you played, way. PlayStation, so PlayStation controller was GameCube great. was okay. Uh, GameCube was okay too. I actually yeah. don't mind the GameCube. Mm-hmm. It had the extra joystick that you but almost that never came used. After. That was yeah, the second. Yeah, yeah, it was alright. Uh, but but then but then the second generation, you had the GameCube controller, which was pretty okay. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't mind it. I played a lot of uh, Smash Brothers with that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Melee, and then PlayStation Two was just like an upgrade of the PlayStation One mm-hmm. controller, basically. But the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty controller. No, was, was after that, it just changed. wait till you yeah. have to play with like the Switch controller, and all you get is the the side piece. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> oh, this, is, this isn't a controller. This is two potatoes, and you can't convince me otherwise. The Xbox. That yeah, thing was a club. Agreed. That thing was a brick. I, I mean, like, <laughs> like you could build a house on that. Yeah. Um, especially when this table, by the way, especially is roughly the size of an original Xbox controller. Right. Uh, especially sixty four. If it had the expansion pack plugged in. <laughs> oh yeah. And then 
and rumble was, packs and all that and shit. And the rumble oh. pack. Oh my god. <laughs> Plus, there was a lot of games. You need to replace batteries like every thirty seconds because <laughs> it would burn through them so the, fast. I remember like Mario Party on that would have things you just fucking spin it and your control would just get burnt out. It was yeah. all rubbed oh, up. It wouldn't right. even freaking work anymore. Well, that's one of the reasons I didn't like the N64 yeah. controller is because the 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 D stick yeah. was yeah, you, so loose. Yeah. Oh, it was so Whereas, loose. like on the PlayStation and the Xbox, it's got that great. Yeah. Very tight. Yeah. yeah. Like they got the dead zones right. Um. But uh, anyways. All right. So we will be back. Um, you know, we'll be back Thursday. Uh, we, you know, we're gonna be probably talk about something. Yeah. Patron, well, patrons. you'll be talking about something. Probably yeah, some role playing games. Um, you know, we here at Knights of Last Call are still in the midst of playing our Forbidden Lands campaign, which is great. Um, <laughs> which is, I think, going really well. And, yeah. Every you know, session, I'm like, is this the one where the bears are gonna eat us? And uh, it's not. So. Well, to be fair, your character has 18 unspent experience. This is true. So I say we we're afraid of bears. Yet last session we. Uh, like made friends with the harbor master for the. Oh for man! The, Did you put the, the session long up? Yet? You didn't. No, I have not. We, we made friends are with making Griffin. friends with everyone, and it's amazing. <laughs> well, we didn't make friends I told, with the cult. I got back last session. No, you did not make friends with the cult. All my kids were up. I got back from the session. I'm like, hey kids, you guys are like, hey dad, how you? on spring break. How was the, how was how was your game? I'm like, let me tell you. There was a griffin, <laughs> and uh, it was going to eat us. And then we decided we were going to give it some fish. It didn't eat us. Then we went into a secret dungeon. The snake people were coming out. Oh, my gosh. They're ripping through their skin like, oh, gosh. And I'm like, then we were escaping from that, and the snake was chasing us. People were chasing us. The griffin came back and then ate them. And they're like, oh. <laughs> like, I was like, it was crazy. I love that the griffin's like a bro, but you know, oh. not, not a bitch. Oh, yeah. Correct. Oh, yeah. right? He's a bro. Right. 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 He's a bro. <laughs> he's, not, he's not your bitch. Right. But he's your bro. He's a bro. Uh, by the so way, cool. we're like, Buck. George in chat says it was too successful. I can't make a proper ship. Ah, <laughs> it's so good. That's a, that's a high frame. Yeah, yeah. George is like, I got uh, nothing. Jackal, peace out, peace out, peace yep. out. Um, yeah, what are you saving all the XP Joseph, for, Smith? What's jo that? Joseph, Joseph Ailey says, wants to know what you're saving the XP for. Joseph literally just hopped in by studio. <laughs> well, <laughs> it'll be back in some form someday, but yes. for right now, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and Alia wants to know what are you saving all that XP for, Smith? Um, mostly, I just don't care. Um, <laughs> And don't really think about Any it. Any day could be his last. And it also doesn't matter because it's forbidden lands. I mean, it matters, but it kind of doesn't matter. I mean, you could definitely take, like, you know, the feats that would help keep you alive. I mean, I'm doing okay. Everyone else is fucking circle. Whenever it. you do pathfinding, you're rolling like 15 dice. Yeah, well, that's the thing, too. Why do I need more dice? I still miss. Well, no, no. Don't take the ones you that did. give you dice. Oh. Take the ones that give you, like, bonuses sure. to dodge or exile, or take the ones that well, make it so that your critical chances. The larger die. reason is I like spells. Hmm. So you're saving it for your spells. Because basically, I don't know when I'm going to encounter a teacher. And when I do, you know, I don't know it. when the next time I'm going to encounter a teacher is. Right, that so makes no, that makes, some, that makes some sense. You know, I'll just show up, spend, you know, a quarter day talking to a teacher and then become like rank three in like multiple disciplines. Well, you can only get up to the rank that they are. Oh, well. So, but yes, that, that seems like a reasonable See, see I don't even care. <laughs> Well, no, because if you wanted to go to rank two an animal, no, be I understand. I'm just saying that's a lot of hoops. I'm just like, I'll, I'll just play. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, uh, Alias says saving it for spell ranks is a very good reason. Um, uh, also, you have to understand too. There's plenty of games, D20 especially, where like this I'll, is not unusual. I just stop leveling. <laughs> you know, which so. is funny because the the problem that and this mm -hmm. is this is a, the problem that we have with like playing basic D&D &D is yeah, it's boring. Oh, you don't get to do anything when you level up. <laughs> you get two hit points when you level. This is what I have to deal with, okay? Uh, this guy and this guy. I don't do it with all the time. way two different reasons. Like we And sometimes, you know, it's like like player pacing, right? I want a little hard mode, you know. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to add, add a CR to this. Um I think you player paste self paste it pretty well. Because here let me real quick. We're playing for Ben Lands and this is literally what happened. I'm not I'm not even exaggerating this. Smith's character had started the campaign off with a rumor that there was an old abandoned castle or keep or tower, something involving the serpents, um, uh, uh, the congregation of the serpents, and that were said to be a, a vast, a great treasure there of a ruby. And they had been kind of getting distracted by other things oh, for yeah. a while there. But finally, like, let's let's go check it out. So they finally they make their progress. They go through the thing. They avoid the griffin and they find this. Abandoned fortress. Uh, Aaron shifts his mind into a into a, a bird ah. to get a good look, and they find and they find this secret passage that into it, so they can avoid the outer courtyard, and they make their way in. And as they're coming in, they get into this temple, and they can see this ritual. And this is when 
Kyle says, call the lizard from Root. Yes, yes. basically. Yes. No, we, yeah. we brought that up. We, oh, did, yeah, all, yeah. we did everything. We were doing it so all. I go. I, I hate snake calls, by the way. <laughs> I, describe, I describe how when they enter into this cave, there's all these rocks, but there's all these bones as if like, you know, digested. And then he sees, then you see the snake skin. And I'm describing it to Bob, but Smith already knows what's coming. I've read Plan of Conan. Because as they look at it, they see that the snake skin, the shedded snake skin is in the shape of a humanoid. That's what threw me off. And then Smith goes, this is literally what he goes. He goes, oh, these are snake, snake people? Fuck it. We're out. Let's just go. Let's just go. Let's just go. We're, we don't even need to be here. This is stupid. I thought we, we were can, leaving we for sure. Back. And everybody was totally fine with that. We were going to leave. Cut to 20 minutes later. <laughs> Smith is it, it always happens this way. What, yeah. what happened in those 20 minutes? I don't remember. But somehow. <laughs> cut to cut to Bob and George are fighting snake men on the corner, the bottom of the cave. Oh, we, Aaron, I whipped them snake people's while asses, While Aaron, <laughs> in cat form, is <laughs> house, right. house cat. It, House oh, cat form. Is, I was describing is, that to my kids, and they were very confused. It's parkouring. <laughs> it was a confusing thing. It's parkouring over a giant 50-foot boa constrictor <laughs> onto the top of he, the statue. He knocked that ruby out. Using his cat paw to knock the ruby out, shifting into an old man, then imbuing himself with the speed of the deer to rush out of the cave. Like triple speed. Leap, <laughs> leap down the... That was like a... Frank Force Pre preparing I, I, because you can move so fast. I gave it to him, but he was preparing to run to the rope bridge, sever the uh, rope bridge, and then uh, ride it down like a swing. And by the way, when Derek says old man, he's not exaggerating. I'm oh, an old man, old man, and yeah. not like in the cool way. I mean, I am an old man. Yeah, like old, like like can't move. I literally right. have an agility of two, and, and no. And movement. by the way, so the two people, <laughs> the two people were not two people. The person who said "fuck it" to Snake Cult, let's get out of here. We shouldn't be here. This the is same great. person. Then the same person I just described with the parkouring as the house cat, and then cutting the bridge to swing it down, and that was also the same. But person. but you know, look at it like this. Look at the long term planning. We don't have to go back now. We don't. That that place is done. Like, we don't have to deal with that Snake Cult. Tech Technically, if you killed the snake, you would get an experience point. Mm. Uh, well, we have the experience point for because we still no, hunting us. No, I gave it to you because of the combination of the griffin yeah, and the snake. They, they are sort of still hunting us. And those congregation of the snake people are not going to be very happy that you stole their Well, the first party me. got eaten. A true. Yeah. So good luck to the second party. Well, the griffin may not be there next time. What are you going to do when the griffin doesn't have your back? Um, Eat more fish. That's true. He's done with the fish. He also, needs, he needs hopefully the, the, grif the griffin killed the uh, higher level spellcasters. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, guys, yeah, that's, that's the session great, was crazy. Great character arc progression in only twenty minutes. <laughs> oh, it, 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 yeah, that's how it usually goes. It, it, it quickly, it quickly escalated. I can't remember how, why you because we were really gonna leave, and then for some reason you're like, well, let me just climb up. No, no, and take a the, look. Here, here's, I don't remember. No, it's just like drugs. Okay. <laughs> it's escalation. Okay. I have a problem. Oh, did you, okay. did you no, tempt no, him no, some no. shit? I did not tempt him. I tempted him. Later, Actually, later you on, did, you, did tempt you him. used you the words, Smith, I'm going to tempt you. No, I, you did tempt I, him. You literally I, said that. I did tempt him. Here's why. No, no. Here's, why, here's all that happened because <laughs> they, they could see that in the back of the tunnel, there was, or the back of the temple, there was a tunnel. And Smith's like, okay, okay, okay. You guys chill here. Yep. I'm going to go into my cat, be really quiet. And I'm just going to check it out. So yep. we know what we're dealing with next time. Because yep. I have some suspicions or whatever mm -hmm. like that. So he gets to the top and I describe how there's like treasure kind of been heaped in front of this long tunnel. This kind of cave that goes back into darkness. And there's even, but then he sees the bones. Right. And then I go, but in the darkness, in the back far of the gloom, which is utterly back, you see the, the glimmering shimmer of a ruby. And he's like, ah. So naturally – you know there's a giant snake here by this description. Right. Well, and we so all then, knew there's a giant snake. So so, so he's like, oh, I'm just going to go scout it out. So then he sees that. He goes, all right, I'm just going to go scout that out just to make sure <laughs> that there's a giant a snake. More. So then he sees that there's a giant snake, but it doesn't seem to be moving. And he's still stealthed. You know, they still hasn't detected him. He's like, all right, well, let me let me get into a better position. And so it just keeps escalating and escalating and escalating. I mean, I was, I was just like, <laughs> just on, especially the, the I, you were just I, lucky I, that you killed those things so quickly. Oh, I, I annihilated those things. But if you hadn't killed them in that round, fast, yeah, I probably would have had, oh yeah, more things coming. Yeah, it, I, I annihilated. I mean, I killed each one. In one, well, like the second one took two shots, but, but I remember, I just, I thought that the cat paw, the ruby out of the mouth was great, and I was like, once he turns into an old man, I do love that, and he grabs this ju this ruby, he's dead. <laughs> And I was like, I don't know what my fair, character I, is going to do I next. No we, we did spend about five minutes trying to, like, gauge how big a cat's mouth was. <laughs> yeah, we were. <laughs> we at were, one point, I was almost tempted to go get a cat <laughs> and just be like, all right, That's let's take a look. That's not fair. Your cat is, like, a <laughs> <of a German laughs> shepherd. 
I think Derek's trying to down. throw my cat out for uh, evidence. It doesn't count. Wait, wait. That cat? That cat? <laughs> then you auto failed that cat. <laughs> you did not That's, auto. That is 100 percent fair. Hey, there's no stealth. My wife and I were sitting. You, there. you, you parkoured from yeah. the wall onto the statue? No, you, you <laughs> fell into the snake's mouth. We 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 ship our kids out to the grandparents. Like uh, uh like we try to do at least one weekend a month just to have some some alone time. And I forgot. Right, I was downstairs with my wife, and all of a sudden I hear this. <laughs> And I was just like, <laughs> like, Sebastian, why aren't you in bed? And my wife's like, honey, no one's here. That was the cat. And I was like, Jesus <laughs> just blew everything. <laughs> he was just jumping off the bed. Jeez. Yeah. No, he's, he's, he's large. Um, so yes. Yeah. Alia, uh, the pew pewing is awesome uh, for Rangers and Forbidden Lands. You're enjoying the pew pew. I, well, you've picked up some talents that makes it a oh, lot more compelling. Oh, yeah. Because you can. The you fast can, shooter you can, is you so can, good. You can draw your boat for free. I don't have to ready. You don't have to ready, mm-hmm. and you can spend a willpower to, to make negate two, the armor. To do no, to do two shots. Uh, now I do. Oh, yes, but I just that. and he can spend a willpower to the willpower armor. to negate the armor was yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah, but I was already doing like plus one. I mean, to be fair, it doesn't it's matter. Pretty good. Unless you're playing somebody who has like uh, going against somebody who's like six or eight armor dice. Well, yeah. we routinely fight monsters. Yeah, you know. Like when you're on your second death night of the session, oh, yeah. it's good to have talents. The, the like death that. death night would have been a nice choice if he had that ability then. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, no, I mean, well, he, he used the armor piercer on the death knight. Oh, did he? I oh, did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. He did. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> KC says that immediate one. He was. I didn't tempt you. With, oh, yeah, you're right. I totally. Did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's like. Yeah, archery. Believe uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, guess what? In real life, as in, yeah, archery is actually archery pretty is useful. really really powerful, and that's why having enough arrows is a challenge. Yeah, I've been you've rolling been, you've great. Been real lucky with those arrow rolls. I have rolls. yet to miss a single arrow. My things have been D10 this whole time. Yeah, you've been a D10. My, my water and food just keep going like this, but I keep rolling these arrows. Well, and your party is a lot easier time replenishing food and water. You guys you just, <laughs> you're fishing and hunting like well, crazy. George, well, it helps because we like stay near the river. George is a cook too. So. Yeah. And we we, we went to the uh, the ferryman and gave him a freaking Minotaur sword and or Minotaur an axe, axe. And he was like, Here's food. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot we made friends with them. Oh, yeah. We made friends with everyone. Yeah, well, you gave session. them like a 25 silver X. So, anyways. <laughs> All right. You guys, you guys, you guys had to. This is why, this is when the Friday session would be great for you guys to be watching is when Smith goes up to this, the, the harbor master, the, the ferryman, and goes, he starts feeling his arm up. It's like, how, how strong is he? And Derek's like, he's got five strength. He goes, like, what did you ask him? Like, does, how, what's his melee like? And he was like, he's got like a one. He's like, here's a really, really yeah. good great Well, well Derek was like thinking I was like sizing him up to take him out. I, I did. I did. And so Derek was like being boastful. And I was like, oh, excellent. Here, buddy, take this axe. Oh, like, he's, like, so I, good. I, he's, like, he's like, oh, you'll appreciate this then. And he was like, oh, my God. And even I was like, damn, that. You know, a steel weapon in Forbidden Lands is—it's yeah. not Dark Sun levels, but it's sure. a big deal and it's expensive. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, they were like, "Have fun." He almost gave us his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "You want to?" Oh, he gave you a timber axe. He gives a timber axe. They, we needed they, one they, of those. They, free ferry passage. Yep. You get to stay there yep. for as long, a couple of days. Um, food, water to fill up all your packs. Yeah, they, those guys are those are sweet. Um, and they gave you information. Yeah, that's right. About that. That was, that was now great. they're currently, uh, you know, dealing with my crazy insomnia. Yeah, <laughs> right. Ah, great so. session. All great right. Session. Well, that's going to do it for us. Uh, Night's the last call. We'll be back. Um, if you're a patron, you might get a fun chance to hang out with us while mm-hmm. we tear this thing down. But if you're not a patron, um, you should to be. say that this will be the end. Although, if I was successful, when I did get a new studio, it would look pretty much exactly the You'd same. You'd be like, what happened? And be like, oh, it looks the same. It looks the same. It should look the same. It but, should. Uh, but anyways. Um, we'll just, we just come back here like in three months. We're like, yeah, there wasn't any better options. Uh, Alia, I just started taking crafting. I'm getting there. I got the boy your feet and crafting. Boy so I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, but I really, I take crafting. I don't have any experience for once. Um, I really, 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 really want to thank um, everybody who's been with us through this incredible journey. Um, you know, not just the studio, but but everything that we've been able to build here is because of of support from our patrons and from people who come out here and support us with tips and super chats, which are nine times out of ten our patrons. Um, you know, crazy support from people who go, "I'm already paying you twenty five dollars a month." Derek, 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 make YouTube membership so I can give you seven dollars yeah. a month so I can have stupid emojis. Okay, you know, like I didn't do that; they did, they oh. did that. Um, I love which we need up there yeah. emojis. And uh, you know, and and the good the good news is that you know um, as you know, as we don't have to buy as many lights and the studio goes back, you know, hopefully that'll mean uh, a, a little bit more uh, money for your nights this year. Um, yes. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. They always bring us a, a really funny joke uh, about the, uh, they brought this up, I think it might have been on Sunday stream or maybe it was Thursday stream. And they're like, all right, 
All right, see you guys. We gotta go. Time to sign off. See you guys in one second on the Discord. It's like it's like when you guys leave yeah, and correct. you guys talk in the parking lot for the next half hour. It's like so, no, sometimes we're gonna say we'll bye. We really don't go. Go anywhere. over to the computer yeah. and just start talking on the yeah. Discord. Yeah. yeah. So everyone, everyone here, yeah. well, most yeah. people in this chat are signing off to just go to, just go talk in the Discord yeah. for the next couple hours. It's very true. <laughs> it's, it's pretty awesome is to say that. <laughs> so uh, again, I do I do want to um, I do want to uh, say thank you to yep. um, all the incredible people who have supported us. Um, tonight, in particular, we had uh, a lot of people come out and support mm -hmm. us. Let me bring up a couple the, of Stevens. <laughs> let me bring up the, a couple different Steven, Stevens. Let me bring up the list. Um, so shout out and thank you to Alia for the many super chats. Thank you to Lollipop Candy for the tip. Thank you to Vin, the self-confessed cynic, for many super chats. Thank you to Philomir for not only the tip, but also for joining the joining. Patreon. Mm -hmm. um, more tip, more super chats from Vin. Thank you to Tip. Thank you to London. Thank you to Donnie for the $50 tip. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Trevco. Thank you to Sorrell. Thank you to Anonymous. Um, thank you to Combat Medic Bush, our good friend CMB. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Steven, who may not be with us in the Patreon anymore, but is still watching us and supporting us when he can, which is amazing. And Anonymous was Kay Steinwald, right? Oh, it was Kyle. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Anonymous was Kyle. And then $100 tip from Roll for Combat, who have a, a new Kickstarter out this mm -hmm. week. So if you've enjoyed their stuff. It's and Secret Dragons. And we have Secret Dragons. Oh, he's there. Um, you know, definitely go <laughs> check them out um, because, uh, again, friends of the show, we respect what they do. And, uh, you know, we're looking for, I mean, heck, I mean, we're hanging out with them before Origins. We're going to baseball games. They're good people. And, I, and if and you I, like Pathfinder too, but want it to be fun, check out Roll for Combat. That's, that's actually almost, true. It's almost the quote I sent him. I was like, it was like, it was like, it was like, RFC, RFC does Pathfinder two better than Pathfinder two. Hundred percent, no he's, question. He's not wrong. Because <laughs> um, I will, I will say, I do think I like the av Elemental Avatar better than the Kineticist. Oh, really? Yeah. The it's, Kinesis is pretty good. Yeah, the Elemental Avatar is really, really sweet. Okay. It's actually better. It's okay. much more interactive. The fact that Mark gave everybody a reaction level one is just brilliant. Um, and then um, High Designs for a super chat as well. So thank you to all our, our new subs, and thank you to uh, all of our people. If you enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified when we go live. And uh, we'll see you next time on Nights of Last Call. Good night, everybody. Peace. Peace.